jackpot climb even higher before this weekend's drawing. Plus, she's here. We are in the hallways of 30 Rock. This is, this, we're officially here. Kelly Clarkson is in the building. Weeks after taking over our plaza, she's now taking over 30 Rock. I can't wait for you to see the set. Your first sneak peek at her new season coming up in Pop Stars. And Mama Knows Best. We're catching up with Donna Kelsey, America's favorite football mom. Mom did more endorsement deals in two weeks than I did my whole career. Live in Studio 1A for the first time, and there is much to discuss. Donna Kelsey's living the best life of all. Are you ready for it? Today, Friday, October 6, 2023. From Greenville, South Carolina, celebrating 30 years of friendship. From Fayetteville, North Carolina. Today, I turned 70. Good morning, Mom, watching in Lakeland, Florida. We love you, Nana. Celebrating our ninth anniversary. Happy Friday from Memphis, Tennessee. And Jackson, Mississippi. Happy Physician Assistant Week! I watch the Today Show every morning. And we finally made it to, to the, the plaza. plaza! On a girl's trip from St. Louis, Missouri. Today I turned 60. Welcome back. The entire world has been talking about the Kelseys. Travis and Jason are two of the very, very best in the NFL. And of course, their biggest fan is their mom. Donna Kelsey's unwavering support, sacrifice, and love for her sons and their teams have made her a star in her own right. We have a lot to catch up with her about. She's right here live. She already made us cookies. We were pretty excited about that. But first, a little more on what she's been up to and the unbreakable bond she shares with her sons. It's been a year to remember for our favorite football supermom. Donna Kelsey, the mother of NFL stars Jason and Travis Kelsey, is living her best life. Just ask her two proud sons. She's been on the move, man. It's cool seeing everyone follow Mama, Mama Kelsey around and, uh, and show her all the love. And that love is front and center. Donna is a fixture at her son's games, including the Super Bowl in February, when the Kelsey brothers became the first siblings ever to face off on football's biggest stage. Are you rooting for any particular team in the Super Bowl? Absolutely, the offense. <laughs> Telling us she'd be proud no matter what. Obviously, there's going to be somebody that's going to go home heartbroken, but uh, they won't have the you know bragging rights at the Thanksgiving table. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is going to be an awesome event. And while Travis and the Chiefs got the win, she was there in victory and defeat. Those emotional moments with mom, more important than any final score. It was just so cool, man, to see, uh, you know, her get to celebrate in that one. No stranger to the spotlight that comes with two sons shining in the NFL. Mom did more endorsement deals in two weeks than I did my whole career. Donna teaming up with Kind to release a signature line of purse snacks. And then there was that notable company at a recent game. With Travis's mom, Donna. Hmm. Amidst rumors of a budding romance between her son, Travis, and pop icon, Taylor Swift, a week later, Donna pulled double duty, cheering on Jason and the Eagles Sunday afternoon before she was, in her own words, on to the next one, making a swift trip to New Jersey to watch Travis and the Chiefs that night. Donna Kelty's living the best life of all. A beloved matriarch supporting, watching, and cheering as her boys live out their football dreams. Donna Kelsey, this hey, is your life. Yeah. How about that? It's really awesome. Um, you know, it's really morphed into something that I could have never, ever expected. I mean, you have your own purse snacks. The kind yes. kind yeah. bar, which you yeah. like to run around with kind bars. Now you have oh, yeah. your, your own purse yeah. snack. It's true. You know, what's really great is I've been bringing kind bars for years. I've always had them in my bags. Yeah. I hand them out to family and friends and stuff like that all the time. And they're just always in there. Well, so. now she's got an endorsement deal like Love. her son. Yeah, Congrats yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, these little snacks that are dipped in dark chocolate. They're vanilla and mm -hmm. cashew and almonds and stuff like that. And they're just a better alternative sometimes yeah. than talk, uh, can a candy bar. Yeah. Exactly. Can we talk about your ride, by the way? I mean, first of all, you've handled the whole thing so beautifully. All of a sudden, it's you sweet. are three thrust into the middle of every conversation. Mm, yeah. People know you on the street. Mm -hmm. They see you with your sons. How have you adjusted to this? Can I have a selfie, Mama Kelsey? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 
I th you just treat everybody with respect and kindness and they return it to me. So mm -hmm. it's really kind of neat. Well, you probably thought that having two sons facing each other in the Super Bowl for the first mm -hmm. time ever yeah. was big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Things have gotten even bigger lately. Yeah. yeah, it's like every week it's like something new, like really? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I feel like I'm in some kind of an alternate universe. <laughs> yeah. It's just really, really strange, but uh, it's fun, it's a great ride. Um, you know, at times it gets a little annoying, but most of the time people are just so, so sweet, so kind, so generous, and uh, uh, you know, I, I can't, but uh, who, what mother doesn't like to hear their kids are great? Well, it was you know. fun watching you on the box. We only could see you on the, at home on our TVs. Mm -hmm. um, was that the first time you'd met uh, Taylor? Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's fairly new, so yeah. I, I don't like to talk about it. Um, it's just one of those things where, you know, obviously everybody saw me. I was in the, I was in the boxes with, with her, and um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, another thing that's amped up my life. Yeah, what was she like? What was yeah. it? I mean, you, so you got to know her a little bit. You got to see her with a couple games. How was it? was okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we both we both met her and she's we've always sort of just been delighted yeah. by her way. Yeah. 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 Did you did did Travis say, "Mom, if you get on the Today show and, and start spilling the beans, uh, you get a little warning?" Uh, it's not so much a warning is it, it's his personal life yeah and you know I'll talk about my life yeah. and when the kids were little and I was with them but you know they're men now yeah, yeah. they're grown. and they've got their own lives and there isn't a man alive that's gonna talk to their mom about their personal life yeah. it's just not gonna happen Have you ever tried, my mom used to try to set us up when we were younger and we we're getting older she was yeah. like okay you're at this age I met someone really nice at Foot Locker you might like this person <laughs> did you ever try to set your, no. your kids up no, no. never no uh -uh. no they did their own. No, Thanks. I don't give them advice. Um, you know, they've got to sink or swim on their own, and they have to make their own mistakes and make their own wonderful, you know, accomplishments in life. And you know, it, and then they know it's theirs. Yeah. Was that your parenting style when you were raising them? Because we're we're Pretty raising much. kids now, and you'd like to have kids who. Yeah, the, the more they can be in the decision process, the better. Yeah. You know, it, I really think it's important that, you know, you follow them. What do they want to do? Yeah. What do they love? What you know, if you can support them, that's the best you can possibly do. Yeah. Sometimes you can't financially. Some families can't do it. But, you know, there's all kinds of um, ways that you can help them achieve their dreams. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, what more could you want as a parent? How, what's it like managing the spotlight, not just for yeah. you, but helping, you know, them manage the spotlight? Because there's a lot that's fun about it, and it's a lot that's yeah. intense, and not everyone can understand that. Yeah, it is it's kind of crazy at times, but I love a thrill. I love theme parks. I love all that kind of stuff. I love people. So it's just, it's up my alley. Mm -hmm. I, I don't feel intimidated by it. I just embrace it all. So it's kind of fun. And you've been a football mom since your kids were little. Were you always yeah. at the games? Uh, as much as I could be. I was working at the time as a banker, but I've tried to make as many games as I can. Obviously, they've been in different places. Uh, at UC, we went to every home game, mm -hmm. sometimes every away game. We were very fortunate to go to Hawaii once, so it's it's just been an amazing ride. Uh, you know, being able to follow them to um, playoff games and mm -hmm. everything like that, it's just so much fun. It well, really you, is. you know that all the Swifties will kill us if we don't ask. I mean, do you think it's a budding yeah. romance? <laughs> I honestly can't tell you. It's just too new. I, I can't too tell new. you. It's too yeah, new. Okay, yeah. well, guess what? Just in case, we, yeah. me and Hoda made you today show friendship bracelets. Oh, just so here you go. Oh, you have a little today you. show. When you made us cookies. We had to return the oh, favor. Oh, that's so and sweet. And by the thank way, you your so cookies much. were A+. Plus. Yes. Oh, I'm we glad. love I'm glad. those. We're going to put the I'm rest making them this stuff. weekend. That's awesome. All right, thank you. Donna's Donna, actually, thank you. we love yeah. you. She's going to stick around on the third hour. So, and if you want to try those delicious cookies, we are going to put a recipe right on our website today. Dot com. Oh, love it. Donna, thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, Donna. Thanks, ladies. Love it. All right, while we're talking football, don't forget, you can catch Sunday night's battle. This is a big one. The Cowboys and the Niners mm -hmm. on NBC and Peacock. Coverage starts at 7 o'clock Eastern.
truly the best time of the morning. Oh, Good to on. say this. Yes. It is. Go, Carson. Carson. Wow. Carson. Start. How about Mama Kelsey? What a oh, legend. Oh, my God. Just shutting the Taylor talk down. Yeah, tight lip. <laughs> loyal to the boys. That's yes. it. She's well, an absolute know, legend. We all know I can't answer, and we're like, of and course. You know, we have to ask. Of course. Yes. That's right. She's the best, man. They're very great cook. Yeah. I, know, I know the boys are watching that. Just going, way to go, Mom. Don't fall for that. That's it. You stopped them right at the line of scrimmage. That was a beautiful thing. Those cookies, by the way, legit. Yeah. We're going to start with Kevin Costner today in Pop Start. The Yellowstone actor certainly channeling John Dutton for his next movie, a two part Western called Horizon and American Saga. The first teaser not revealing too much. I'm already in. I'll watch yeah. that. Yeah. Sure. Okay. That could have been Yellowstone. I was going to say, is that Yellowstone? <laughs> I'm going to watch that. Like, Yellowstone 1888 or something? I know, right, all that. It's hot right now. The two-part movie is going to take place over the course of four years during the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And as seen in one of the teasers, part one and part two, this is good, they'll both hit theaters next summer, so you're not going to have to wait too long. Oh, that's If you nice. like part one, part like two that. will be on uh, its heels. Uh, next up is Chris Rock, the actor and comedian in the final talks to direct and produce a new biopic based on the life of civil rights icon Martin Luther King Jr and the Hollywood Project has even more star power behind the scenes with Steven Spielberg uh, set to be the executive producer there. Just yesterday, our sister company, Universal Pictures, announcing that the project's going to be an adaptation of Jonathan Iga's critically acclaimed biography, King, mm. A Life. No word yet on potential casting for that or when it's set to arrive, but we will keep our eyes peeled on that. Uh, next up, Kel have you seen Kelly Clarkson? Yes. Oh my gosh, it looks incredible. Mm -hmm. Last month, a Grammy and Emmy winner stopped by the plaza, put an incredible concert on, and as of yesterday, I wasn't there that day. Yeah. yeah. Kelly's here, not far, revealing on social media that she has moved into Studio 6A, that's across the street from us at 30 Rock, and right down the hall from Jimmy Fallon. All right, everybody, we are in the hallways of 30 Rock. This is, this, we're officially here. Kelly Clarkson's show is officially here. Jimmy's right over here, which I'm used to these hallways because it's a night show, so it's really weird to have my own show in this hallway. But anyway, um, I've got all the beverages. I'm totally ready, and we're about to go shoot, like, our first thing. Here we go. I can't wait for you to see this. Welcome, Kelly. We cannot wait to see you in the cafeteria. Yes. <laughs> yes. Season five of the, get in line, Kelly, get in line. Uh, season five of the Kelly Clarkson Show kicks off Monday, October 16th. And uh, next up is Andy Cohen. These days, the king of Bravo might be all calm, cool, and collected on his late night talk show, but he put up a little throwback clip going back to his early days of broadcasting. Uh, he was just getting started at Boston University. Let's see how it went. So it sounds like a politician, doesn't he? That's what I was thinking. Some other soft stuff, they would love to have free agent first baseman Kent Herbeck and make a three-for-one deal with the Braves. So the Sox met with Herbeck's agent last night and offered him a three-year deal with an option for a fourth year. But there's a big, big dollar sign rising over Fenway Park because Herbeck wants a four-year deal in the 10 to $11 million range, if you can believe that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Because he wrote he, he wrote when he posted it, Doing sports. there's me like fumbling through the sports cast at Boston no. a long time ago. That wasn't fumbling. Nope. Yeah. No. He, he definitely needs a teleprompter. Yeah. He did write that. And then he wrote, how about my hairline? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> but his mannerisms are still he's the same. Exactly same. Is it's exactly you know what I think he said to us before when he's been yeah. here, he's like, I always wanted to do something where I could just be myself yes. on TV, yeah. and he is doing that. Right. And that is, even he's in the He's been nominated for 18 him. Emmys, yeah. Yeah. one, like it's worked out since yeah. those days at Boston exactly. U. Quickly, uh, another favorite Plaza performer, Darius Rucker, the singer's new album, Carolyn's Boy, just dropped in the latest. Uh, he's the latest to sit down with Willie Geist for Sunday today, and during the conversation, Darius revealed how it was David Letterman who helped launch Hootie and the Blowfish. He heard us on Tuesday. Had us on on Friday. That Friday morning, there was maybe five stations in the country playing it, and all in the South, you know, Columbia yeah. and Charleston and Atlanta. And that Monday, we were the most added, and after that, it just went crazy. It changed our life. Overnight? Overnight. I wouldn't be talking to you mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the David Letterman show. It's really that simple. I mean, he changed our lives. Correct wow. review. Wow. What an album. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Darius is such a great guy. You catch more of that conversation. Sure, it's going to be wonderful. They usually are when you watch Sunday Today on the weekends with Willie. Cool. And his new album that just dropped started streaming on the way in this morning. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Wow. Fantastic. Cool. Still ahead. Looky, looky, who's in Studio 1A? Josh Gad, oh. Andrew Reynolds. 
They're going to tell us all about this hilarious reunion on Broadway. Oh, oh no. Oh, but oh, first, oh, no. too close. Your local news, close. weather, too some close. glasses, and these messages. Too close. <laughs> Back 840 with one of our absolute favorite segments here. Mr. Smith goes to, and this one is tied to tomorrow's college football clash between those Iowa Hawkeyes and Purdue that you can, by the way, catch over on Peacock. Uh -huh. So Harry's mm -hmm. shining a light on a really heartwarming tradition mm. during Iowa's home games. You know, Iowa, where they all wave at the yeah. kids up at the children's hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, there's a story within a story within a story. You got to see this. <laughs> It's time for the best tradition in college sports. For many a college football fan, this scene is quite familiar. Kinnick Stadium, University of Iowa. 75,000 fans stand at the end of the first quarter to wave to the patients at Stead Family Children's Hospital. An emotional moment never fails. Before every game, a kid captain, chosen from among those patients, takes the field with the Hawkeye football team. Kelby Tlender, now a student at Iowa, was seven years old. We're standing on the sideline for the national anthem, and I remember it was Binns and Claiborne. They went on to play in the NFL. That's Adrian Claiborne and Broderick Binns. They're standing about the 50-yard line right here, and you know they're waving me up. Talk about making a lasting impression. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was really something. As a toddler, T. Lander suffered untreatable hearing loss. At three, he had life-changing surgery to install a cochlear implant at the Stead Family Children's Hospital. When they stepped outside, his father said Kelby heard a bus go by. And he said, you know, there was this huge smile that lit up on my face just because I was finally able to, you know, hear the, um, the environment around me. That little kid, that kid captain, grew up to be quite a high school multi-sport athlete. Some big colleges came calling until a freak accident his senior year. I ended up getting six of my eight tendons repaired. And then on top of that, I hit one of my nerves, so I couldn't feel half my hand. Only Iowa left the door open a crack. That's T. Lander, number 25, a redshirt sophomore on the Iowa football team, a walk-on. You could have said no, I mm. think, on some level, like maybe this isn't a good idea, or maybe you can't compete here. What went through your mind? He was a really good athlete, tremendous young guy, good student. Iowa head coach, Kirk Ferentz. So our attitude was let's give it a chance and let's give it a try, see where it all goes. This fall, Kelby has seen some action on special teams, made the travel squad, and met one of this year's kid captains. Six-year-old Niall Cron has two 
cochlear implants. I was telling him and the parents, being different, it's nothing to be ashamed of. If anything, it makes you more cool or more exciting. Being normal is boring. T. Lander is Dean's List smart and wise, too. The battles on the Iowa football field, he says, don't begin to compare to what some of those kids above Kinnick Stadium face every day. You think you're going through a real challenge, you think you're going through a real fight down here, but it's nowhere near the fight that the kids are going through that are standing up in that hospital. So they inspire you then? Everybody thinks that, you know, we inspire them, but it's actually the exact opposite way. They're the ones that inspire us, and they're the ones that keep us going. Oh, that is unbelievable. Right. <laughs> Where did I find that story? I Come read on. it in an Iowa newspaper about a year or so, and I said, is this guy still on the, on, on the, on the roster? The guy's on the travel squad. Wow. Right? Amazing. One of the other great parts about this story is as a little kid, I said, did the kids in school give you business, the bad business? And he said, my audiologist said, I want you to go to school, do a PowerPoint presentation of what a cochlear implant is oh, wow. so the kids will understand. And all of a sudden, that opened so many doors. But the full him. circle, he, he met himself again yeah. Yeah. as yes. a kid captain. Yeah. He, I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it makes Rudy look. Yeah. 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 It's a cool story. Yeah. Yeah. That is a movie. That was wow. really cool. You bet. Make oh, that movie, wow. Harry. Make that movie. And again, you can, you can watch that Hawkeye wave for yourself when Iowa takes on Purdue tomorrow. That game only on Peacock following Rutgers in Wisconsin at noon Eastern. And in prime time, it's Michigan and Minnesota. Full day of football, 7 p.m. Eastern, oh, yeah. that last game on NBC and Peacock. Coming up next, guys, we got Josh Gad and Andrew Rannells. They're together again. It's a new Broadway musical. Getting raves, lots and lots of laughs. Can't wait to visit with them. But first, this is today on NBC. Yes. The City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. All right, welcome back. Our next guests first met back in 2011. They were the stars of the Tony-winning musical, The Book of Mormon. Well, guess what? Now Josh Gad and Andrew Rannells are back on Broadway. It's hysterical. It's called Gutenberg the Musical. They star as lifelong friends trying to find producers for their new show about the inventor of a printing press. Take a peek. Gutenberg, John He's the best chap around that lives in this town. Sure is Gutenberg. Call me Johan. Welcome, welcome, Josh and Andrew. Oh, Look at you two together it's again. It's very it. strange to see that because we Why? we've Why? never we, we've never seen it. Well, we just do I it can't. Every night, I can't but. watch myself when I'm on stage. <laughs> Right. It's but does, is it comfortable, though, to is see? That what no, it I hate like? watching myself. You do? You yeah. do? It's, oh, it's awful. Will oh. you talk about the premise of this show? Because I'm a little confused. Printing <laughs> press, and then it's funny. So yes. what is it? Well, how is a printing press not funny? It's a question <laughs> it's, I would ask. Well, it is, it is two guys named uh -huh. Bud and Doug who have written a musical uh -huh. about Johann Gutenberg, the inventor of the printing press, okay. but with very little actual information no about knowledge. Johann Nothing. Gutenberg. No. Uh -huh. They just sort of start making things 
guys up along the ways. And this is this is their big like backers audition to get producers for their uh -huh. musical. So we're presenting it to the audience for the first yeah. time. I like to call it the Hamilton of our generation. <laughs> it's um, like the Hamilton of <laughs> our block. Yeah, it's, it's not. Like, yeah, it's, it's definitely like, the Hamilton of 48th Street. Yes, it's the Hamilton of 48th and 7th. Do you love singing? Do you love that whole part? I love. I love singing, yeah. but I but, <laughs> but what's, I, what's... I also find it really difficult to sing. I don't have the vocal gifts that Mr. Rannells has. Andrew's got nice and pipes. He's on, got man. incredible pipes. Yes, you guys so stop. I, I, <laughs> no, this is a true story. So I, I like, w in his presence, I, yeah. I'm always like a little oh, you, scared to oh, sing. Oh, you tune it down a little bit. Well, I don't oh. tune it down, I oh, tune no. it up. But, uh -huh. I, but I tune it up knowing that I have incredible competition you I'll never surpass. Incredible. Now, this is, a, this, you guys are cracking each other up. What do you do if in the middle of one of your scenes, you forget a line, something funny happens, oh, it, how do you roll with it? It happens every it night. Happens it every does night. every, every night. night. Well, and then we break the show. You yeah. do? Uh, no. We, no. We, we try to keep going as best as possible. The audience actually genuinely loves it. We try not to do break. Do you call it out if something happens? Well, we try not to, yeah. but um, we're idiots. <laughs> Josh has a very specific style of improv which, which is, is he'll just say, like, well, I wasn't supposed to say that, or that's not your line, it's or not, he just yeah. will call it out. It's less clearly. improv and more of a confession that I've made a terrible mistake <laughs> yeah. on stage. Uh, and, and Andrew always helps me get out of this rut. Wow. You guys are so good together, though. Are you like uh, friends off you. of? No, no really. No. No. It's actually a very tumultuous no, relationship. We have a restraining order, but it's like Tension, broken for today. Anger, how, resentment. How, did, how did you all come together on this? How did it work? Who signed Our it? director, Alex Timbers. Yeah. Um, we, you know, Josh and I had talked since the Book of Mormon. We've been uh -huh. trying to find something, yeah, something that we could do together. Yeah. And it was just it just proved to be really difficult. Mm -hmm. And Alex Timbers brought us both this script and said, I think this is yeah. this is the show for you two to do. I wanted we... to do a Kelsey brother biopic, but it was a little ahead of its time. <laughs> Josh <laughs> loves sports. Yeah. It's from, okay, it's if you had 30 seconds to sell this show, oh, we God. would fail this Oh, no. <laughs> no one's coming. I guess we would say, sorry. <laughs> so no, sorry, it's, it, it really, no. here's the thing about the show. It, Gutenberg is a true love letter to musical yeah. theater. Okay. It happens to be one of the funniest things I've ever been yeah. a part of. But at the same time, it's got so much heart. It truly yes. has so much heart. And the audience at the beginning of the show is like, has this big sort of what the hell is going on expression yeah. on their face. And by the end of the show, they are wrapped up in this idea of just having a dream and running with that dream. And that's at the end of the day with the kind of secret sauce of the show. Look at this guy. Well done. Thank you. By the way, 30 seconds, guys. I did it. <laughs> All right. We're gonna come. We're gonna come watch gonna you. Come. I'm gonna go to a match. Did I sell I can't you? Stay yes, you did. Were well, you right. not gonna come prior to me doing that 20 no, second? I was gonna come okay, anyway. Good. All right, Josh and Andrew, thank you. You can catch Gutenberg the musical at the James Earl Jones Theater. Stick around, y'all. These guys are gonna be back in the third hour. But we first, are? yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We're, we work here now. Oh. Yeah, you do. You have a dressing right. room. This is today on NBC. This morning on the third hour of today, the mother of all guests, Donna Kelsey, opening up about her football family, her super year, and her famous new friend. Donna Kelsey's living the best life of all. We're tackling all of it when she joins us live in Studio One Ed. Then in Start Today, Allie Love is helping us get into boss mode. Find out if we're up for her October wellness challenge. Plus, their best buds on stage and off. Josh Gad and Andrew Reynolds live talking about wearing a lot of hats in their hilarious new Broadway musical. And we're feeling fall vibes in Super Food Friday. Joy Bauer using those pumpkins and apples to make some sweet treats. Today, Friday, October 6th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning. Welcome to the third hour of today on this Friday. Yay! This Friday Yay. morning. Yay. The gang's all here this morning. I'm Chanel here with Al can and I, Craig and Dylan. Can I throw in? Um, yes. Happy anniversary to Brian. It's our anniversary happy today. Happy anniversary. Oh. Which so, anniversary is this? 11 years. Okay, 11 but you're going to do more than this, right? What's wrong with that? 
<laughs> more than work? Well, no, more than a hi, how no, are you, happy? We're going to actually play golf together. We haven't oh, done that in like two months. You know, I that's what that. we like to do together. So nice. You're happy. Place. Happy anniversary, 11 years, 11 is special. Oh, it's yeah. lucky. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> yes, I, well, think, I think the gift is plastic. <laughs> are you playing the Powerball? Maybe that could help. Ooh, oh, you give them yeah, a ticket. Right here's yes. a billion dollars. There you go. The Powerball drawing, well by the way, is tomorrow night, and the jackpot is huge. Mm. He would love this gift. It's worth <laughs> $1.4 billion. Just to give you some perspective, that is the third largest in Powerball history. Our Jesse Curse is live in Cleveland today with more on Lotto Fever. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Chanel, good morning. Yeah, that's right. Take a look at the estimated jackpot right now, $1.4 billion up on the board. And that's just an estimate right now. So we're still keeping an eye on those numbers, which we know often can tick up as more and more people are paying attention. When we have a winner, it could be tomorrow night. We're looking at now, Powerball says, for the first time ever, back-to-back billion-dollar grand prizes. You remember July 19th. That was the last time we had a Powerball jackpot winner, and that one was also over a billion dollars, a 1.08 billion dollars. So this would be a big one, and as you mentioned, this would be the third largest in the history of the game if this current estimate holds. So, Jesse, I mean, we always like to imagine one day we'll win this big Powerball. Um, so if we were to win, <laughs> what are some things we could buy? <laughs> Yeah, Dylan, I think last time I told you I was planning a trip to Monaco, right, on a private jet. <laughs> I've done some serious thinking once again, some real financial planning. I've thought this through. Uh, it's spooky season, so how about around 100 million, more than 100 million of these guys? Thank oh. you. You're going to need some snacks while you're trick-or-treating. How about 400 million pieces of jerky? Can and then you? we Whoa. talk about Waste proverbially your money flushing jerky. your money down the toilet. <laughs> so we talk about proverbially flushing your money down the toilet on things like candy. Well, here's an actual candy okay, toilet. Well. Is that a Pez dispenser? <laughs> of these oh, guys. Exactly. Back to you. Wow. Okay. Jesse Kirsch, I will Jesse tell you, I, I'm really impressed that you caught all three of those yeah. items. Yeah. 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 Although yeah. that hat was thrown at you go. with quite a Put bit of velocity. <laughs> Wow, Jesse, go, you know, Travis I Kelsey could be in the game, better. ready to go. <laughs> We've done a lot of lottery stories. You might be the best one. You yeah, might, that, you might that, win for this. That one. was great. Way to go. When I was younger and I used to go to work with my dad, he Thanks, used to Jesse. buy me Slim Jims and chocolate milk. Oh, really? So wow. we could buy a lot that's of a, Slim Jims. That's a combo. It's a well, combo. You win a gazillion billion dollars and you're buying beef jerky with it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I won't judge. It's already our lucky morning now <laughs> because look who we have, a special Friday <laughs> guest. We all, when I see all, all of America fell in love with Donna Kelsey last February. That's when she became the first mom to have two sons face off in the Super Bowl. Travis, of course, perhaps you've heard, he plays for the Chiefs. Jason plays for the Eagles. Uh, this season, she's back in the stands. She's cheering on her boys. She's here with us in the Studio 1A again this morning. Welcome back. Good morning. Hi, Donna. Good morning. This is, what I, this is what I love about you. Last time I saw you, I had my, my son with me in tow at the Super right. Bowl. We're backstage. <laughs> Donna Kelsey's there to watch her son's. She carves out a good 15 minutes Aww. just to chat with, with me and, and Del and, and, and our family. And she did it all afternoon. Aww. Everyone just stopping and talking and being so Donna-like. <laughs> and since then, it's gone from here just <laughs> yeah. zoom. I mean, yeah, you've, like, got, you've got sponsorship <laughs> deals. You're hanging out with lots of famous people. <laughs> You're watching your boys. Yeah. What's it been like for you so far since the Super Bowl? Yeah, since the Super Bowl, it's just been one thing after another. You think the next week, you know, like with uh, uh, the premiere of the quarterbacks, um, uh, you know, documentary, and then you've got uh, uh, the ESPYs oh, yeah, and yeah. Saturday Night Live, and it's just one week after another <laughs> after another, and it's just never ending. Mm -hmm. I know it will end sometime. But I just don't know when that's going to happen. Well, don't think about that. You, yeah, you can ride the ride. Yeah. While it's going, eh, you yeah. ride the ride. Yeah. Ride the ride. Ride the yep. ride. And ride. speaking of sponsorships, you've got this, um, you're now a spokesperson for Kind Bar. Yes. Which I'm a mom who keeps, like, bananas and, like, gross things in my purse just in case. But this is a better, yeah. you have a better option for a purse snack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really, it's really kind of a good thing to have something nutritional in there besides uh, marshmallow treats. <laughs> but... Um, you know, you have to. Uh, people are busy. You're going from game to game. I always have kind bars mm -hmm. in my purse, especially when I travel, just because somebody is always saying, I'm absolutely starving. What do you have? <laughs> so um, it's really good. Um, they've come out with some purse snacks. Um, and they're really neat. They, they're like little clusters. They're dipped in dark chocolate, mm. and they're like almond, vanilla, and cashew. Ooh, lovely. And those are kind of... 
meat. So. Well, I'm a sucker for samples, so if you ever want to swing back by and give me a little toothpick with a little, <laughs> <laughs> with a little kind bar on it. Little bite-sized yeah. treats. You were, yeah. just, you were just talking about enjoying the ride. So I do this series, our viewers will know, where we interview the mothers of, of, of players that we admire, right? So we've done a lot of NFLers. Mm -hmm. And it's been fun to talk to NFL moms who have been watching, you know, their boys play since they were four or five years old. I'm sure mm -hmm. you know that. Yeah. You probably can't even log as many, you know, the many games that no, you've it's been to. a lot of hours. Here's my question. So now fast forward to all of these games now where as Craig just mentioned, you got even Hugh Jackman in the box. I mean, yeah. you know, celebs all over the place. When you're watching Travis now, or you're watching both of the boys, do you feel like they're enjoying this ride? Like, is there a spark now? Um, you know, I just think that um, they can't believe either the attention, almost embarrassment sometimes, mm. uh, that because there are so many other players on the team that mm. they want to support. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, there's some... Um, people that may get hurt, like, why aren't people focusing on me? That's fair. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's good and bad. There's and, pros and cons. And what about for you? So full disclosure, I'm watching you over the weekend, and everybody else is looking at Taylor, and they're looking at all the celebs. I'm looking at you as a mom. I'm like, does she know that we keep looking at her? I mean, do you just look forward and have a poker face? Do you, like, high five, you know, yeah, I don't know, Taylor? Yourself. Like, how do you, <laughs> seriously, because we're all just, like, looking at you like this. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at the game, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I want to watch my kids. Uh, I focused on them and what's happening and who's winning and all that good Quick stuff. Quick question. Yeah. As we look at this video, Donna, what, what were you guys talking about in the, in, the, <laughs> in the suite? Like, was she leaning over asking you about the plays that they were running? Or? I'll never tell. Oh. <laughs> you know what I was? I was talking about this. You know when the commercial people come out in the orange gloves and yeah. they're on the field? Yeah. I was mentioning when they go like this, the commercial's over and they can play again. Oh, oh interesting. I didn't know there were commercials. Who knew yeah, that? we didn't know. Who yeah, knew that? Get to go. Well, one, one of the you are a mom, uh, and I guess yesterday was Travis's birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, did he have a good birthday? You know, I'm not sure. He's practicing <laughs> uh -huh. most of the week. Did you get to talk to him? Um, I didn't. I texted him the day before. Uh -huh. And uh, asked him, you know, I told him, I said, happy birthday. I said, I know it's tomorrow, but you're going to get a 1,000 texts Aww. tomorrow. So I text him the day before. And uh, it's true to form. He always jokes around and says, love you, Mommy. Aww. So still Aww. at 33. Uh, well, there, and, and, and forever. Yes. And forever. Yes. Also, we know next Monday is your birthday. Yes, it is. And so yes. uh, we had Katie Stilo from our food team whip up one of your favorites. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We heard, it was we your, heard favorite. That's your favorite. Oh, yeah. I love anything with berries on it. Mm. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is Wyatt's birthday was uh, Monday. Really? So, yeah. We've got a lot of October babies, a lot oh, of Libras. Oh, that's great. I love that. Really quick. I, I have a September Libra. And I'm learning the how a Libra works. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. I have much younger boys, but yeah. okay, manipulative. So be, before we let you go, <laughs> yeah. before we let you go, Donna, uh, we want to, if, want to, if you would help us out with our Friday football fever trivia. Okay. Uh, this is where we put our football knowledge, uh, such as it is, uh, uh, to the test. No. Uh, so what what do you have? For All right, us? you're our game show host today. You ready? <laughs> All right. Here's a question. Uh, Jason and Travis Kelsey are the first you know, pair of siblings to face off against each other in the Super Bowl. But in the decade, they've been in the league together. Um, but how many other sets of siblings have played in the NFL? Actually, a lot more than people realize. Okay. Really? So a, there's, I'll give you four choices. Okay. A, 21, uh -huh. B, 35, C, 49, or D, 62. Hmm. I'm, all, all of all time? No, no, the, the, the decade. In the decade. Oh, in the decade. I'm going with B. I'm going with B. I'm actually going to go with D. I'm going to go with 62 sets of Really? Dylan? I went A, 21. Yeah, right. You're all wrong. It's 49. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, all right. All right. There you go. Four of us. Okay. Oh, like, you're so all bad. wrong. Wait, you're all wrong. Just like a mom. You're all wrong. You're all wrong. Yeah. wrong now Thank you, Donna. We Whatever appreciate you can still it. have your blueberry cobbler. We, yeah. Before we, we so let much. you go, did you want to make an official statement on Taylor Swift? Oh, my gosh. Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> Got nothing to say. <laughs> thank you. Nice try. Give you an opportunity, Donna. Yeah. So Donna, thank, so you, thank, you, so thank you so much. I'm sorry for all my right. friend Melvin. <laughs> anyway, be sure to tune in to Sunday Night Football. Cowboys versus 49ers. So Coverage beginning at 7 on NBC and Peacock. You should try. Katie, I know. We have to get to a spoon or a fork or something. Yeah, or just do it.
warm, too. Yeah. Uh, coming up, today's checklist on this okay. Friday. Uh, it's yours. <laughs> we're we're going to help prevent some common fall injuries. And she can't wait to get out of here. Uh, and then later in start today, we're going we're gonna to take on a new wellness challenge. And you can join in as well. Our good friend Allie Love is going to tell us how to tap into our inner boss this month. This is actually something Allie's been doing for years now. Third that. hour of today. Right back after this. I love that. morning on today's checklist we are marking national physical therapy month as the seasons change and starts to get a little colder outside we all need to be thinking about how we prepare for exercise or playing sports and here to help us do that board certified clinical specialist in orthopedic physical therapy karina Wu. welcome back good morning Thank you. Hi, karina. good morning so let's morning. let's i mean roker's been stretching for years he's always talking about stretching but let's start with the younger people no offense <laughs> no it's okay i'm I mean, taking okay. children young adults what sort of stretches should they be doing so before an activity, dynamic stretches is key. So when you're going to move, you want to be doing things that stretch and elongate the tissue, but also increase blood flow and circulation. Mm -hmm. So a younger person or anyone performing sports activities, yeah. dynamic stretches are great because they mimic the movement. They contract and lengthen and the tissues will get more blood flow and they will be prepped for movement. Mm. This helps avoid injuries. What about older folks? Older folks can do the same because, again, before any sort of activity, you want to mimic what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you did a static stretch, then you're going to elongate the tissues, but a dynamic stretch is going to like mimic what? the motions. Yeah. So something like a butt kick. Mm -hmm. So track and field oh, people, right? Okay. That's a so, dynamic stretch? Yeah. So that's a so technically what? you're that's stretching the quadriceps okay. here. So what's yep. a static stretch? Or a leg swing is a dynamic mm. stretch. So movement and things movement like that. Okay. Uh -huh. Anything sense. that sort of mimics so static, movement. So static stretch? Okay. Static stretches, especially for older people to help okay. avoid aches and pains and joints okay. and prevent injuries and falls. A static stretch is where you take the muscle towards its end range mm -hmm. and you hold it there for at least 30 seconds. Would that be kind of like a calf? Like you that can your be a calf like stretch, yep. Yeah. Like you can that? do that. Uh -huh. You oh, can do a runner cool. stretch position. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are things that are like straps. You oh. can use a belt or a bathrobe yeah. strap at home. Mm -hmm. But these, you would, if you want to put this around your ankle, you can pull your heel to your butt mm -hmm. and get oh, that. Some leverage. Yes, there. Okay. exactly. Yep. A right. little bit of leverage Sweetie. with that. Okay, let's talk about hot versus cold, cold especially yes. when you have an injury. I never know. So dealing with injuries, acute, sudden. Uh, painful, wet, hot, swollen types of injuries. Ice, like ice is key mm -hmm. immediately after an injury up to 72 hours. Okay. You want to vasoconstrict, get that swelling out of the area and calm the area down. Mm. Okay. If you're dealing with a long-term injury, especially one that has more stiffness, mm. then you like can use heat. Because okay. heat is going to vasodilate, bring blood flow, relax the tissues, make it feel better, reduce your perception. I'm okay. going to run out of time, but everybody is doing ice baths now. And so I just didn't know, like... But that's not immediately after, right? Or is that something completely different? You can do them immediately after, yeah. but it's totally different. Totally different. It's usually like full So two head. different yes. methods. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. All right. I see a lot of this tape. I actually have a roll of it and don't know what to do with it. What's the purpose <laughs> of this? Why'd you buy the so, roll? <laughs> it looked pretty. Because it's consumer <laughs> friendly. It looked nice. You can buy yes. a CVS. So kinesiology tape. This is the elastic therapeutic tape. It only stretches along the long axis, not across the width. Hmm. It is meant to reduce your perception of pain. It helps muscle activation. It helps fluid circulation in an area. And it helps with 
just feeling better. I'm assuming so, you can put it on wrong, right? Uh, does you that, can does that cause damage wrong. if you do My it wrong? My husband uses Correct. them all the time. Yep, so you're gonna actually just keep it bent okay. here. And then what you would do, just a simple at-home application. I have lotion is, on, is that okay? That's, uh, well, the skin needs to be prepped and cleaned oh. of any uh, lotion. creams, oils, lotions. <laughs> and what and is basically, that you don't wanna put too much tension, so you're just gonna wrap it down like that. Okay. And what does that do? How does that help? Yeah, what, how? So this is gonna provide support for her. There's multiple mm. ways you can put it on. You can put it on to facilitate or turn on a muscle okay. or inhibit and turn I've off a muscle. I've noticed people when I'm running, like behind people, I noticed a lot of guys have them like on their calves. What yeah. is that doing? That so, is probably trying to turn off the calf, so meaning relax it. are turning this muscle it. on or off? We are turning it on and just adding more support. Okay. How long do you have to wear this? So you wear this at least two to three days. Oh, it makes my knee look all old. Yes. <laughs> so this is when the wrinkles are okay on your skin. But you wear it two to three Ew, days. That's gross. Continuous <laughs> sensory <laughs> stimulation. Uh. Continuous sensory stimulation. So. I'm sorry, but they're telling us we have to wrap. <laughs> Do <laughs> you want to wrap? We can now wrap with the ice. Yeah, we can oh, find that kind of wrap. Karina, thank you. Look at my knee. I'm no, no, we got to show the knees. <laughs> wrap it up. Karina, thank okay, you. Okay, stay seated. Stay seated. Oh, no, no, okay. we're seated again. Chanel. <laughs> okay, thank right you. There. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, coming up, Allie Love is here to tell us about her new wellness challenge. It's called Boss October. Find out how you can do it with us. And then later, another boss who strikes a much different chord by night. Meet the CEO living out his musical dreams. Dylan, show him the knee again. Show him the knee. <laughs> we'll be Look right back. Nobody needs to see that. This morning and start today, we are learning what it means to be a boss. Today, contributor and Peloton star instructor Allie Love is here to tell us about a month-long challenge. She's been doing this for seven years. She calls it Boss October. If you want to learn more about it, you can scan that QR code um, to see our start today October plan. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Boss. Yes, I know. Boss. I love this whole idea. Talk about what is Boss October. So it's something I've been doing for seven years, and basically it's like your preset before the reset, right? We're going to go quickly into holiday season in November mm -hmm. and December. And most of us are going to try to finish every work project. We're going to get mm -hmm. shopping done. We're going to go and drink and be merry at every holiday party. So it's to position ourselves to actually be our best selves before we go give all of ourselves to everyone else. Oh, right. yeah, so we Take fill our control. own cups. Exactly. Okay. Three pillars as we understand it. Yes. And one is, the, the first one I should say is physical, discipline. Yes. Discipline. So at this table, discipline is where we're going to amplify our workout goals. You're going to take it to the next level for 31 days. Okay. That means maybe you're walking 31 30 miles, a mile a day, right? A little over a mile a day. Maybe you're running 100 miles or 70 miles. Maybe you're working out for 20 minutes a day. It's a commitment. You're running the marathon. You're already in there, Chanel. And so these are just commitment reminders, things to make sure you are fueling up. You're taking care of yourself because you want a foam roll. You want to recover. And then these are like also visual cues. Sometimes I'll tie something around my wrist to remind me to do my workout today. So once you've done the workout, you could take it off? Yes. That way you're like, oh, I did it. I'm going to take it off. So discipline is so important because oftentimes we forget to put our ourselves first Absolutely. physically. So yes. Why are you staring at me while you, you put that on your wrist? I didn't, I didn't. When two eyes make four, it's a love connection. Moving Aww. on. Aww. <laughs> right in this case. Who knew? <laughs> Um, moving on, this it. one is willpower. So the second pillar Ooh, is willpower. It's where good. you give up a luxury item. Oh. Okay. Now, a lot of people say, well, why can't I just add a good habit? We add so Your much favorite. to our lives. Mm -hmm. right. It's time to take something away. Okay. And keep in mind, when you are 
literally taking away something, it's positioning you to be the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're like, I need to cook more. I'm going to stop takeout, right? Okay. We're going to give up takeout and cook this month. Maybe you say bad words a lot of times. Craig. Craig. I wouldn't say I'm a penny, Craig. Money to I would say $5 time. every time you say, like, it's, make it really high it's stakes here. <laughs> um, if you, overflowing. <laughs> <laughs> you eat a lot of chocolate or you're like my husband, he loves bread and jam. You're like, oh, I you consume see. this so much. Maybe yeah. it's time for me to cut back That's a good and give one. up a luxury item to practice mm -hmm. that willpower. Okay. okay. And what about this one? Yeah, kindness. This is the hardest, I think the hardest mm -hmm. part, to be honest for me, is kindness. It's not practicing kindness to other people, which we are often told, and we kind of naturally do that, is practicing kindness to ourselves. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so these are physical reminders. We have little words projects just to remind you to be kind, a mug with great cool. quotes on them. But it's See like when someone, yeah, mm -hmm. when someone... Yeah, when someone pays Can I tell them a story, Allie? Sure. Yes. So Allie and I went to lunch, and I can't remember what I was yapping about, but I do a lot of, like, I think I'm hard on myself. And Allie stopped me, and she said, okay, I've got this thing. It's called Boss Act and blah, 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 blah. And she said, this was the category that I needed to work on. And I thought about it. And you're so right. We're so hard on ourselves. Yeah. Just in the self-talk and the things we say to ourselves. So how does this, what do we do? Do we put a bracelet on to remind ourselves? Or like, what yeah, how do you do our, Oh, look at that. Be kind. Is that a look message to me? <laughs> yeah. I, I take this person. But seriously, how do you put it into practice? But you put it, there's a physical reminder to say, you know what? When someone says, oh my gosh, you know, that skirt looks good on you. I should say, not this old thing, but thank yeah. you. Thank yes, you. it's thank just you. a reminder to say thank you. Accept the kind words that people Accept are saying to you. Words. And when you start to say bad things about yourself, this is a physical reminder to scale back and say, you know what? I look so good today. Good. I'm doing my best. I yeah. love that. I, I might have screamed at someone, but I'm not going to scream at another person. All right, so yeah. you're letting us pick your boss October. You're going to pick right? my challenge. So for those oh, of you that okay. follow me, you know I have not committed to anything publicly. I've been running because mm -hmm. um, I love that. I know that's going to be my commitment. But it's up to you four to pick my month's challenge. Okay. Am I running 25 miles? Mm -hmm. 50 miles, mm -hmm. 75 miles, mm -hmm. or 100 miles this month. Oh, like, what am I wow. writing down? So the first one is my discipline. How many miles do you think I should run? Make a run. Make a run. Just how, like you. how many miles a day? A day? No, no, for the month. For the yes. month. Right? And what was the total? So it's it, it would it's either 25 for the month, uh -huh. uh, 75 for the month, 50 for the month, or 100 for the month. I think she should do 50 because she teaches yeah, class. Yeah, you do so much. Yeah, you work stuff. a lot. Anyway. Yeah, That's I'm true. gonna go with 50. Okay. okay. All right. I think it should be more. Yeah. Less? yeah, yeah it's 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 be more. She's 75. At least 75. Okay, at least 75. Over 100. Told me my ear over 100. 100. Okay. I can do that. 100 plus. All right, what am I giving up? What is the luxury day, island day. that I'm... That's okay. I can do that. Good it's Lord. a challenge. What should give up meat? Give up meat. Yeah. Okay. I can do that. I can yeah. do that. It's okay. challenging. It's okay. a challenge. All right. And then I think in order to be kind for myself, I'm just going to focus on being present. I always say stay focused, be present, have fun. All right. I like that. This is my commitment. You I all mean. know it's public. Thank you all so much. That's well, fun. this is no, all October. Take this with you and put it up in your office. I don't have an office. <laughs> Okay. Yay, we like it. Allie, thank you so Allie, much. That was wonderful. Okay, so we're going to see you at the end of the month, and we'll talk about whether we reached our goals. Uh, what, you guys have to pick something, too. Yeah. All of you guys. Yeah, All right. You, too. And by the way, I'm being kind to myself. Oh, there you go. And by the way, if you want to get a downloadable to sheet, others. this is really cool. If you're at home right now, you can get a downloadable sheet to track your boss October goals. Just head to today.com, and don't forget, just scan that QR code for our Start Today Challenge for October. It's a 5K training plan. In, in my quest to be kind to people, mm -hmm. I'd like to point out how beautiful your penmanship is. Oh, look at this. Thank you. Lovely. Yes. Uh, in our, our, our series, The Upside, coming up next, a different kind of boss. Mm -hmm. A CEO by day who strikes a, a much different tune at night. And then later, later, later another, another pair of guys, guys who wear mini hats. Hey. Mini hats, quite literally, mini hats. Josh Gad. Andrew Rannells, live to tell us about their brand new Broadway show. They were supposed to have the hats, I think, for the, you're supposed to use the Oh, hat. really? We'll oh, get there. Okay. We'll, yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me. <laughs> Third hour. Stay tuned. We'll, we'll, we'll be right back. Don't direct We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
This morning in our series, The Upside, a CEO in Charlotte who spends his days running a major corporation and his nights pursuing a lifelong passion. NBC's Ann Thompson found out how he does it all. This is a really cool story. It is, and I just love this story, Dylan. This is a story about a corporate leader who encourages his employees to bring their whole selves to work, believing your whole self is your best self. But for most of his career, he didn't practice what he preached until he realized that his business and pleasure had the same impact, the ability to heal. It's not unusual for a musician to have a side hustle. Another job that pays the bills between gigs. Though each note he plays from his album and the words he wrote energizes him, Eugene Woods kept his worlds separate. That changed during the pandemic when um, sort of these worlds came together. His friends call him Gene, and his day job is in a hospital. Well, actually, 67 of them across six states as CEO of Advocate Health. Have you ever been stopped by a patient who said, I've heard your music? Well, I have, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's quite, you know, heartwarming for them to actually pay that much attention because we're trying to pay <laughs> attention to them. Advocate Health, based in Charlotte, North Carolina, is the nation's third largest nonprofit hospital system. Gene oversees 150,000 employees and 6 million patients. Does music help your day job? Leadership and music are connected in really amazing ways. Sometimes what I do is more like a conductor of a classical symphony, where everybody has these orchestrated parts. During the pandemic, it was more like leading a jazz band. You know, because you really, uh, it's about improvisation. We can work it out. Does it calm you down or, or does it energize you? What's it, what's the impact of music on you? It grounds me, uh, you know, it's sort of my meditation. And it, I think it allows me to be a better leader because I come to the job with a different sensibility. Gene's American born father loved jazz. His mom, a native of Spain, flamenco music and dancing. Just kind of seeped into to my DNA. And I think that's really in part responsible for me being a musician. I just heard it every single day. It was, a, it was the soundtrack of our lives. Growing up in Spain where his dad served in the US Navy, Gene's uncle introduced him to the guitar. His parents bought him one when they moved to Philadelphia. It wasn't until years later that I found out my father forwent three months of rent to buy me a guitar and an amp. And to this day, it's the best investment in my education because they couldn't afford college. His musical ambitions nurtured in garage bands. Paying gigs at Penn State helped finance his undergraduate and master's degrees. The public performing stopped as he climbed the corporate ladder in healthcare. But Gene kept playing and writing in his off hours. Music has never left my life. Now fronting Gene Woods and the Soul Alliance. He plays with musicians who back James Brown and John Mayer in a studio owned by Grammy winning producer Glenn Tabor. It doesn't matter where you come from and who you are and what your day job is. You either bring it or you don't. Yeah. And and Gene brings it or these guys wouldn't be. Your brother is in chains, we should. Singing into the microphone Prince used to record Purple Rain, Gene has found life's elusive equilibrium, an album, music videos, and the corner office. People talk about work-life balance. I talk about really work-life harmony um, because I think when these pieces come together you, and integrate, you can be, I think, your, your, your whole selves, your best selves. So I asked the band if they knew what Gene did for his day job, and one of the percussionists who played with James Brown still didn't know, and when oh. I explained it to him, it was now. he was so impressed <laughs> that someone could be so talented in both areas. It made him admire Gene 
all that much. Oh my more. God. I admire him, but we don't even know him. Know. <laughs> and but you, you know, met him, you'd really and like him. Like you, harmony is such a good way to yeah. describe how you should run your life. I just was going to say, we've got two of the, the best journalists here, Lester Holt and Kate Snow, and both accomplished yeah, musicians exactly. in their own right. Their secret yeah. side job. That's right. Yeah. And that was <laughs> great. Thanks, yeah. Thanks Thank Ann. You. Appreciate yeah. it. Download his music. Mm -hmm. Well, just ahead, speaking of multi-talented guys, we've got Josh Gad and Andrew Rannells here talking about their new Broadway musical where their friendship is on full display. <laughs> uh, that doesn't look like it. Third hour of today, we'll be right back. Oh, that's love. That's uh, love. City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. We are back with Josh Gad and Andrew Reynolds, starring in hit movies and shows for years. Well, now these buddies are back on Broadway, starring in the new show, Gutenberg, the musical. The play is two guys trying to get a show on Broadway about, yes, the inventor of the printing press. <laughs> Josh and Andrew, right. good to see you guys. Hi. So much. Couldn't have set it up better. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very natural uh, idea for me. Sure. Right? When the I think 1400s print and printing, yeah. it would be... Yeah. It lends itself to musical theater. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to make us commit to running, are you? <laughs> yeah. 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 We yeah. saw that and we were like, 100 oh, miles. No. I would do, by the way, I would commit to 100 miles over a decade over, span. Yeah, that's yeah. A lot of I would do that for you, you just guys. Work in. Yeah. You just, and I like And I did. could give up meat for dinner. You guys, yeah. you did the we'll throwback. Skip, that's we'll, very impressive. We'll yeah. skip meat tonight. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so you guys have started now. You've been in previews. Yes. Did it take much time to, I mean, eight shows a week. Did it, yeah. did, did it take a little getting used to that 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 grind again still are getting well, to that grind yes well josh this is your this is josh's first show oh, back yeah. on broadway since the book of Mormon. and my last oh, wow. show back on broadway <laughs> <laughs> he needs to Pace take a good decade yeah. break yeah. In between Pace yourself. yeah but uh but how are you feeling <laughs> better now that i'm in a chair in air conditioning <laughs> stool, I feel much better than I yeah. do every Sitting night in good. theater. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is a lot more conducive to what my body needs right now. <laughs> Just to so sit. If we, could, if we could do the show sitting, oh, yeah. great. This would be great. terrific. We have to dance and yeah. move. Dude, just have you guys in rolling oh, chairs. God, no. That actually There's would be that. really... We, we pitched, pitched it. Uh, we we haven't officially opened. Yeah, that's actually true. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that you guys have matched your, your, your... This was not intentional. Really? That's what's so funny. Don't lie. <laughs> we plan all of our outfits. We call okay. each other every morning. Yeah. That surprised me. What, all, what, this, what baby blue outfit are you wearing? Baby blue <laughs> the chemistry, the chemistry the two of you have, it's undeniable. Thank so now I'm like, oh, I got to see you guys on stage. And I was just reading. So it's really just two of you, yeah. right? Of on stage for two hours. Yep. And you literally wear all the hats in the show. We do. Like, so we, we there's like 120, uh, 120 truck, 120 hats. trucker hats. Yes. yes. So we, we differentiate the characters that we play by, by wearing hats, hats mm -hmm. 
like that, mm -hmm. and also like this. this. Oh. Oh. oh, that's funny. Now, fun. if you're not afraid of back sweat, uh -huh. I want you guys to have <laughs> oh, these. Oh, yeah. These are for Thank you. you for Thank well, you. Well, I'm not sweaty, sweat. so you can, yeah. have you, I'm good. Have you ever grabbed the wrong hat? Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, the other no. day, my hat fell in oh, the audience. Sweaty. Yesterday, his hat fell in the audience. You asked me about the white room. The white room, So yes. in Only Murders in the Building, season three, a show spoiler we're not alert. On. Right. A show we're not on. We're not promoting it. A show not on. Yeah, a show not associated with you guys, but we're doing a promotion. talk about the white room. Steve Martin goes to the white room. I went to the white room the other day. I grabbed a hat I've never grabbed in my entire life. <laughs> and I looked at Andrew and I said, I should not have this. On stage. Yeah. You just said it. I yeah, literally Josh, came out. Josh has a very, it's a very unique improv um, skill, which is just to say like, you, I'm not yeah. supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was supposed to say. And what are you, you saying? What's your reply yeah. to that? I was like, no, he you're rolls Yeah, he yeah. literally is always like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be Like, great. it talks to me like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's up? part of the, like, people go to, to uh, car races to maybe see a, a car wreck. Yes. Do you think people are coming to see what's going to happen? Yes. No, I think very much our show is one giant car crash every night. Oh, gosh, uh, that's, that's slow sweet. motion. No, We're going to put that on the poster. Yeah. Oh, my giant car crash. It's a slow yeah. motion You guys are like my new favorite people. I just, oh, thank you. We're coming. Oh, we We're can't wait to see over Our parents details, feel the so same way. We're going to come to the show wearing these hats. By the way, you should. Can so, we? Yes. All right. People know who we are. There you go. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. You can catch Gutenberg the musical at the James Earl Jones Theater. It's running until January. So good. Woo. Thank you for that. Oh, Congratulations. I can't wait to see. We'll know how to find you in the yes. audience. Yes, we'll exactly. Right. Thank you. Here we are. The back sweat hat. The back sweat. <laughs> Thank you. Mine, yours are fine. Yes. Yeah. Ours are dry as a bone. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Coming up next in Superfood Friday. <laughs> You're going to like these apples. Joy is taking the guilt out of our favorite desserts like the easiest apple pie you'll ever make. Sweat-free apples. We'll be right back. We hope. We hope. So cute. Can I have this? Yes. Yes, they're for you. Superfood Friday and this week. Today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is whipping up some healthy hacks for some of our favorite fall desserts. Mm. These look yummy. Mm -hmm. They, do. they, they are yummy, yummy. yeah. And so these are really easy hacks for treats that you guys are going to love. They're mm -hmm. lightened up and each one has a superfood. Uh -huh. okay. So this, you guys can dive Looks in. Like a donut hole. I'm okay. calling it, it my two ingredient pumpkin donut Ooh. holes. And they're not necessarily going wow. to be put in a health category, but oh, I, I will tell say, you. This is too good to be true. But when you compare them to the classic, these are baked, oh. they're not fried. If you look at this video, that is just canned pumpkin puree together with a vanilla box cake mix. Oh. Mix it together with a cup of water. I bake it in a donut tin. If you don't have a donut mm. tin, you could also use a mini muffin. Oh. And then I just sprinkled it with a little bit of cinnamon sugar. And guys, they're so oh. delicious. They're about 40 that calories a pop. absolutely the delicious right? thing ever. And it's a great activity to do with kids as Greg, well. And it makes Greg's a great big bunch. Really great. Right? Really, really and delicious. so simple. Wow. So simple. Okay. Apple pie. Okay. This is for apple pie fanatics. You are craving something. You have like a spontaneous urge for apple pie. This mm -hmm. is you make in the microwave in a matter of minutes. Okay. So all you do is you dice an apple, keep the skin mm. on for extra fiber, mm -hmm. a little bit of brown sugar, ground mm. cinnamon. Brown I sugar. made this slurry. What, yep. Greg? What's your joke? <laughs> Don't you know his nickname in high school? I cannot. But then you put it in the microwave. Wow. It gets ooey and gooey like pie filling. And then you just jazz Wait, it up a little this? bit. 
So it's a diced apple yeah. with a little bit of brown <laughs> sugar, <laughs> ground cinnamon. <laughs> I'm a hot mess right now. Now? Was that your nickname? <laughs> Sorry, Joy. Sorry. Sorry. As long you know, as you guys you know, like it. You know, it's a bad it. sign when I'm the serious one. <laughs> I'm sorry, right, Joy. Wait, what? Put the graham crackers. So you, you, after this, this comes out so of the good. microwave and it's ooey and gooey like pie filling, you crunch up a cinnamon oh. graham cracker inside. This is delicious. And it really satisfies that craving. And you've made it in a matter of minutes. Next. <laughs> Joy. Okay. This is what I'm calling a bite size wonder. So it is a banana <laughs> slice that has... <laughs> A little thread of nut Wine, butter. Please. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh, We're God. here till Thursday. Try the veal. Anyway. Oh my. Okay, so these are frozen banana chocolate bites. I, Craig, oh those have almond butter on them. For and you. these are absolutely delicious. It's layers of creamy Ooh. banana, so it's got potassium, it's got fiber. <laughs> then it has the nut butter, so it's velvety and smooth. And then a little bit velvety of melty. Velvety and smooth. <laughs> Craig's nickname is college. <laughs> melty. Anyway. A semi sweet chocolate chip mm. and a little bit oh, of wow. um, the crunchy nuts mm. on top. That's really good. Great. It makes a great big batch. Mm. You could keep them in the mm. freezer, and then whenever you have a craving for something sweet. You're walking in front of the camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Honestly, Joy, Joy, thank you so much. These I'm, have been one of my... I, I, I really apologize. These are absolutely delicious snacks. For these Perfect. recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. I'm sorry, Joy. Third hour to be <laughs> I'll, right I'll back. My colleagues. <laughs> I am sorry. I, I love you these no matter are what, Greg. Delicious. Right? I wanted to give a quick shout out to some incredible kids. Last night, uh, my wife Lindsay and I hosted the National Youth of the Year Gala for the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. And, and these are the finalists in this picture for this year's award. The winner was a young lady named Alejandra from McAllen, Texas. Oh. Remarkable, remarkable Yay. young lady. Yay. We love that. Her. Congrats oh, yeah. to all the finalists as well. Very nice. In fact, let's keep uh, clapping right now okay. for our Friday tradition where we shout out our Start Today community members. Woo. Let's start off with Nicole, one of our newest Start Today community members. Keep going, Nicole. Oh. All right. well, Mary Ann walks for better health and better sleep. Mary Ann! Oh. Next, Melody rocking that walking street. Melody! Melody! Melody. QR code to sign up for a newsletter or head to today.com slash start today. All right, next week on the third hour, country music legend Reba McIntyre is here live. Wild Child and Earth Odyssey. Tomorrow, we'll check your Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. <laughs> Today, we catch up with Chelsea Handler, who's hitting the road on a new comedy tour. Plus, a story of grit and perseverance, an Air Force doctor battling Parkinson's trains for the Iron Man. 
And from J-Lo to Gigi, we'll show you how to dress like your favorite celebs for less. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. So get up, it's Friday, it's October the 6th. We're so happy that you're here. Get ready to laugh. Oh my gosh, we have a hilarious <laughs> show because we have Chelsea Handler here. She, you gotta get out of the way. I'm always a little afraid when she's on the Me show. Because you don't know. You don't know what she's gonna do. Okay, when I first started here mm -hmm. as a correspondent, mm -hmm. I did a America the Beautiful. I mean, I didn't, I was a teacher. Yeah. I could command a class, yeah. you know, yeah. but I didn't really know what to do. And I was doing a show, yeah. um, the series around our national parks and I was traveling yeah. and it was amazing. And I guess at one point I didn't know I was on camera and I had these huge gloves on because it was cold yeah, yeah. and I was just reading. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. And then I was devastated because Chelsea Handler, who I loved, made fun of me on her show. Oh, because you had the gloves on. I had the big gloves big and I was like, you know, huge gloves, huge hands. And I was reading and I thought I wasn't on camera. And she made fun of you. And but she made fun of me. But now. Edit ahead. Now. You're friends. She's my sissy. Yeah, we call guys, each other sissy. Isn't that so funny? We met with our sisters. And, you know, that's what late night people do. She had that show, Chelsea, lately. lately. She makes fun of people. She made fun of people. Yeah, that's what she did. And I was always a little scared. But then, look at it. Oh, my Even God. Even the people well, that make fun of you on live television can be your bestie. See, you're absolutely and right. And she's going, she's having a moment. She's talked a lot about like, look at all, look at women and what we've done over the last years. Taylor, Beyonce. Right, crushing it, changing the national movie. economy. Yeah, What was Barbie. the number one movie? Barbie. Barbie. Of course. Directed by a? Woman, and here's the thing about, <laughs> is this a quiz? <laughs> women, girls, yay. Women, women, women. women. But here, here's the thing about Chelsea. There is a landscape of late night TV yeah. that has been looking for somebody to fill the slot on The Daily Show, and we have our we have our pick. We're gonna talk to Chelsea yeah. all about we'll it. we'll ask her. Yeah. And I think she'll be honest. Yes. Um, also, you have a huge interview coming up. Oh, yeah. Um, I got to sit down with Jada Pinkett Smith. Wow. And Jada Pinkett Smith, most people know her as part of a couple. Will and Jada, Jada and Will, Will Smith and Jada. She is her own person. She has written a book. She actually told me that she thought the title of her book, instead of worthy, should have been unlovable. Oh, gosh. So that's where it begins. We went back to her neighborhood in Baltimore. She revealed some things that were so surprising to me and jarring and shocking. And she decided it was time to put it in a book. So she talks about so many different things. We're actually gonna do a whole hour special Amazing. on her because she was next to Will Smith during the whole Oscars Yeah, thing. She has a perspective that I hadn't heard before. No. I didn't know what was going on. So it's a primetime special on NBC that you can see on October the 13th. And then she'll be here in studio on both October 16th and 17th. Oh my gosh, so it's fast. She's I got a lot to wait. say. Yeah, she's got a lot to say. I cannot wait to hear that. Oh um, gosh, you love this next topic. You know that I like two things a lot. Three oh, things. Queso. Yes. Your sister. Yes. And your family. No, cats. Cats. Okay, so <laughs> I like my family, but th things I'm, you know, my passions. Okay, so there's a hot new twin dating show. Identical twins dating? Identical twins. It's called, well, everybody's. Twin love. Yeah, twin love. Yeah. So what they do is they explore the loves and lives Ooh. of identical twins. Oh, look, the Bella sisters. Take Bella a, twins hosting. Maybe they're hosting it. Oh, yeah. take a look. Gonna make you look good. Identical twins look, sound. Oh, we're so excited. <laughs> and even dance the same. Shake it up, shake it up. But will they love the same? You dated a twin. And then you made out with his twin. I thought he was hot first. I'm here to fuck yeah. Twin love is the social dating experiment that explores the love lives of identical twins. Oh. That was awkward. That couple was not. <laughs> that kiss was extremely awkward. So they take the twins, identical, put them in separate houses. Yeah. This is nose. why I always wanted to be an identical twin, because you, you could play mis tricks. Mischievous. Yeah, I couldn't do any of that. No, we looked you very were, different. You didn't look at all alike. And we 
Oh, wow. That's cute. Y'all are cute. Okay. Okay. Um, Did you guys ever fall for the same guy? No. You said we you have did. very well in eighth grade. We both liked oh. somebody um, who will re remain nameless. But was that awkward? I don't think so. Because you had him and she didn't. <laughs> well, I don't. I had him for a brief period. I don't think she would. If we could discuss it with her when she's here soon, she'd laugh. I don't think she'd she. Laugh. She won't remember. No. And it may. I may even be wrong about it, but I'm pretty sure she was into him. I could have sworn maybe that she, she and another girl named Amanda both had a crush on him, but maybe I was wrong. Maybe she dated him. No, no, I, I definitely you did dated date him. him. That's, okay. That right. I remember. So TikTok's going crazy. So it's going viral, and they're asking a I'm, question that's very important to our generation. Here it is. Gen Z TikToker named Sarah Adelman posted a video asking, "What did people do before they could?" look things up, mm. you know, on Google. Take a look. Hey, this is a genuine question to like older people. What did you do before you could look something up? Like if you saw someone and you were like, oh, they remind me of that actor. What was that? What's his name? Like, and you couldn't, and none of your friends knew, would you go to a library? Like, gen and like, okay, without Google Maps, like I know that there was MapQuest, but before that, like genuinely, what would you do? Would you just accept not knowing? Yeah. Here, here, girl. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. We just, just said we don't it. know. And guess what? We kept living our lives. It was crazy. We guess just lived. We, you know what else we had to do? We had to use our brain to figure things out, Wait, like we, follow a map. We had to pull into the gas station and say, hey, I'm sorry, which way is Elm Street? Is it this way or is it left? You had, you know what you did? You had an interaction. Interact. We interacted. You talked to somebody. We didn't only depend on Wait. AI and machines. Wait, it was remember? amazing. How about when you couldn't think of the actor? You know what happened three days later? You were sleeping. You woke up in the middle of the night and go, oh, Tom Cruise. <laughs> That's how you, and then you called your friend in the middle of the night to tell them. Yeah. It, it was, was Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. And she'd laugh and you'd go back the to sleep. The other thing is, we didn't need everything so instantaneously. We, we were, were okay. satisfied. We were okay with letting Does things. Does that make sense? Be. B. We didn't need to post on social media our every here's and there's. Yeah. We actually had to ask our friends, how was your vacation? And guess what? We didn't already know. Yeah. Because they had to tell us. They had to say, guess what? I went to Florida. And I said, you well, how did? was it? How was it? Was it great? Oh, uh, see? And then you caught up. You know what else? There was a thing called dictionary. Oh, yeah. And, and then what happened? Books. We would look up a word and say, now, is that the right word to use in this research paper? Wait, remember? Thesaurus. Hey. A thesaurus. Oh, there Perfect it is. Word. Do, do, do. And then we learned how to write it, and there was no Hand spell check. Written. We just had to get corrected yeah. until we got it right. Yeah, because, and then we actually learned how to spell and write whole paragraphs. In cursive. Can you believe it? In cursive. It? We also got a thing called letters because there wasn't oh, tons of email or text. Right. Did you not get my text? No, you know what you did? Dear Grandma. Or. or Ring, ring, hello, hi. Hey, do you want to go have dinner? Yeah. Oh, you do? Excellent. You're not going to believe what we had to do when we wanted to go on dates. We would do this. Boom, boom, boom. Hello, Mr. Stevenson. Yeah. May I talk to Brian? Yeah. We learned how to speak to adults. Oh, my God. It was crazy. <laughs> it was anyway, crazy. we love you. That was our yeah. rant. Yeah. Anyway, thank By you way, for letting us and, be old and, and happy. And your cue is a button. All right. <laughs> coming up, the always entertaining Chelsea Handler is here. We're going to catch up with her on her tour. And what happened when she hung out with my sister Barbara? Oh, she's got stories. Oh, my gosh. We're talking about it. <laughs>
Okay, whatever Chelsea Handler does, book, show, stand-up comedy, one thing is for certain, she always makes us crack up. She sure does. Chelsea's been on the road on her multi-city comedy tour, and we're so happy she got to come and see us. I know. I've missed you girls. We can't even say the name of your tour. No, on don't worry. It's just me, Chelsea Handler. That's all you need to know. That's it. Google Chelsea Handler. Handler tour. You have a lot of good material in that, uh, yeah, I've heard. I have, I have actually some personal material. <laughs> for you? I, it's, well, it's a family. It's family material. <laughs> is it? Because I was in Maine for uh -huh. a while. Yeah during COVID, because uh -huh. my sister said we should get out of here, like the West yeah. Coast meaning. And she's like, Maine is spread out. Yeah. You're not on top of people. We can rent a house. Anyway, I ended up in Maine. And her sissy, yeah. who I also call sissy, sissy Barbara. Yes. You call me sissy, too. I call you sissy. Like, yeah. We all first. met as sisters. Yeah. Yeah. So my two sisters, we mm -hmm. all met. So we, it's just sissy's easier, so I yeah. don't forget anyone's name. So you know what I mean? <laughs> and um, yeah, so and then I was in Maine in this little yeah. enclave, renting a house with my friends and family. And then I got a call from her sister, and she came over, and we do Pilates every morning. She yeah. was newly married to yes. her adorable husband. And um, and then one day she was like, oh, come over to Kenny Bunkport, you know, for pickleball. This was when everyone was talking about pickleball. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. annoying. It, right? Very annoying. It's still yeah. I you find hate pickleball. quite annoying. Yes. I find, She's no. totally burning, over it. Burning yes. Man and pickleball. Yeah, I totally want to hear agree. another word about either one of those Have you things. ever been to okay. Burning Man? No. It's, no. it's just a bunch of dirty. rich people sharing for the first time. <laughs> So we go to Kenny Bunkport. I was like, hey, Barbara, I'm like, politically, you know, I have outbursts and I can't control myself sometimes. I'm like, I don't think I should be going to Kenny Bunkport to meet right. their dad. Who right. knows what I'll say? Yeah. And I the don't fact want... that Barbara was brave enough to bring you. She crazy. believed in me more than I believed in me. She was like, you can do this, sissy. You can do this. I trust you. So what happened? So we went and yeah. I had, you know, I had to take a couple of edibles because I was in a situation where I wanted to behave myself. Edibles and... don't always Always do that. Well, but I have a very special relationship okay. with drugs, and I know exactly what I need and when I need it. And that was an instance where I thought it would be better if my personality were muted, you know? And so we went and played pickleball. She goes, you won't see my dad. You won't see him. Yeah. He's getting a massage. Yeah. And sure enough, we're playing pickleball for five minutes, and guess who trots on the court? Oh, no. And he goes, oh, 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 the funny lady has arrived. So what and did you say? It was a, it's a long, it's in okay. my stand-up. It's a long story. Okay. By the way, it's so good to like this. It's we're, so good. It's, it's so hilarious. You had lipstick on your teeth when we got here. I know. I don't know. I what feel like doing? that story just brought lipstick to my teeth. <laughs> anyway, it was, I had to reveal to the former president that I was indeed stoned. So it was a very, <laughs> now you have lipstick on your teeth. Girls, girls, come on, let's get it together. Wait, okay. Well, you let's know what? Talk about you. <laughs> yes. Since since you've talked, you've been in Mallorca. Yeah. I was on vacation for a long time. your very, sissy. It sounds very fancy. How long were you on vacation for? A, a you long need time. A, you need a full time hosting gig. I uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, is there a show that needs a host that we can oh, think of? I know. Which one? I know. The, the Daily, the Daily show. show. Now, you filled in for them. Yeah, I did. Can I we did. just go ahead and make that happen? Well, I mean, they're going to have to hire a woman, you know, yeah, at some at this point. point. Even if it's not me, it has to be a woman. We yeah. need a woman. We, we need uh, women have been underserved. Totally. We need a right. woman behind a desk to give us the news. There's enough yes. men. So. Yes, we agree so a thousand percent. We're all for women here we. at the third hour of the today. This, this is, is the fourth, fourth hour. Oh, God. I you know what? God, I get so confused by which hour. This is the one that matters. This is the one. This is the most popular hour. The most popular. By the way, you had so many, you had so many glamorous pictures, but there was one Jen and I loved the most. We hung it up in our room. No, not that one. The one that we loved the most. Might have been in my It's a single shot of you. Is it topless? No, it's not. Oh God! Wow. What happened? That was. Is that a bee sting? What was it? Well, you know what. I, I don't know what it was, quite frankly, because I sleep with I slept with my windows open. I didn't do it yeah. again after that. But I thought it was a wasp. And then they were like, no, wasps don't sting at night. They're not even there. It must have been a spider because there's like <gasps> this idea that a spider's bites twice. Yeah. So, but it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And at first I was like, oh, I like a blemish. You know, that's yeah. fun. Like, yeah. ugh, I'm on vacation. Who cares? And then by the third day, I was like, uh, I'm going to need a cortisone shot because I started oh, to look sorry. like Rocky Dennis. Know it was do hilarious. you remember that show Pure Luck in that movie where the guy gets just totally swollen. It reminded no. me of that in the best possible well, way. Yeah, yeah. It was fine. I mean, it was cute, I thought. And then it was less and cute. It wasn't. And then it just kept going on and going on. And then so, yeah. By the way, and you he, also what? made 
some news because everybody thought you had a boyfriend. You yeah, every time a you post a picture with a guy, can you not like, just post a picture with the not, bartender? Well, look at well, this. By the way, that this was my very, bartender, and obviously, and you said bar this is my baby. baby. Anyone who's full of love and positivity, and his body, <laughs> his body is, is my wonderland. <laughs> I, love I love my, my baby, baby, and now, now I, I go, go back to work. work. Oh, now you're wondering why people. Yeah, my body is my wonderland. I mean, to quote John Mayer with that hunk. Is that a John Mayer quote? Yeah. My body no. is Wonderland. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I did not mean to quote John Mayer. But I, first of all, I, babies mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And they can mean to me, there are two things. It doesn't mean a boyfriend. It means a child that comes out of your Pikachu. Or it means a bartender. Those are the only two things that I look at and go, baby, you know? And he's served me a lot of drinks and Aperol spritzes over my time in my Orca. So he is my baby. I wonder how he did feels you make about out being with, so Did famous. you make out with him? Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't. I kissed him on the lips plenty of times. But you I do did? that with men a lot. Just you do? to throw him off. You love to yeah. flirt, right? Wait, I like to flirt. You kiss on the lips? Yeah, sometimes. Times, especially if you like someone, it's cute. It's cute. It's unexpected. Yeah, yeah. it is unexpected. You know, you know I mean, I, when you're single, you're single. Yeah. You like to flirt. We want to yes. set her up. Do you have somebody good for her? Oh, I have to think about it. I mean, I just set another couple up. Let you me see did? how that shakes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give before it some time. I, I want to see if I have a success rate for Well, we can't wait for you on the yeah daily the daily show. show. I'm it's glad they girls. probably love our show. They're probably yeah. watching all those. I'm exacts. sure they are. And well, I know they love me. I mean, what's not to love? Well, your ratings you know I mean? blew it out of the water. Yeah. So I don't know but what that's what happens doing. when you're on. All right. Anyway. Don't go anywhere. Chelsea's going to stick around. She's got to weigh in on some hot topics. Yeah. Get ready for all rise with Judge Chelsea. You get a gavel on everything. <laughs> right after this. Coming up. You gotta get that gig. I know. gotta get that gig. I know. That's what? it. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming to this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. We're back with Chelsea Handler, and she's about to lay down the law. It's our series, All, All Rise, Rise for Judge, Judge Chelsea. Chelsea. Okay, here's how it works. We're going to give Chelsea a buzzy topic, okay? Uh, and then you're going to give us your take. When you're done, you have to hit the, with the Yeah, gavel. an official ruling. When I'm done with my ruling? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, here we go. The first one's this. Taylor, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's relationship has taken the NFL by storm. What do you think of the Taylor-Travis phenomenon? Trailer. We call it trailer. Oh, oh, Chelsea. trailer. <laughs> Chelsea, Kelsey, yeah. trailer, Taylor. Yeah. I don't know. Too much. I can't yes. keep up. I feel like the NFL should probably have to pay Taylor Swift yeah. $5 million for every show, uh, for every game she shows up to. <laughs> okay. Because of the Fair impact enough. she's having on the NFL. She is. I mean, she's dominating the universe, Taylor Swift. She's like our uh, Earth Mother or President <laughs> or whoever. I don't know. She's in charge. Wait, yeah. I, did, have and you ever... better not screw it up. What do you think? Do you well, think he's going to? I, I probably, but I mean, most, you know, most relationships don't last, but I hope she just has some fun. She's been working her tail off so yeah. she yeah. can have some intermittent yes. fun, intermittent fasting, intermittent <laughs> other thing. I mean, fun. You know what I mean, Wait, guys. have you ever dated an athlete? I think so. <laughs> I'm sure I have. <laughs> 
sure right. I am. So oh, the wait. ruling is? Okay, that's the that ruling. Is. ruling. The ruling is go, Taylor, go. Yeah, okay, okay go, go, Taylor, go. Here's your next one. Okay. Irish exits. Yes. You know, leaving parties without saying goodbye. Are you for or against I am 100% for not saying goodbye. In fact, even if it's at your own house, <laughs> is there a camera I'm supposed to be looking into? Okay. Yeah. Even if it's at your own house, I would recommend sometimes not even saying goodbye to your own dinner party and just going upstairs to your room. That sends a strong signal. By the way, yes. do you know who does that often? I do. <laughs> Mer <laughs> Meredith Vieira was at my house looking at my kids or something. Visiting your baby. <laughs> I'm looking at my kids. Anyway, I was putting one down and Meredith goes from upstairs, am I supposed to be leaving? I go, yes. And that was it. She just left. By exactly. the way, she That's also once friend. left me at an event with her purse in, with my purse in her car. She go. just bailed. And I'm go. like, this is we should never be out Ever. together because I pull that kind of garbage all the yes. time. <laughs> all right. Next one. Pamela Anderson made a splash at Fashion Week. She went makeup free. Would you ever go to an event or Paris Fashion Week or anything like that makeup free? Well, I mean, I think we just showed a picture of me getting stung so. in the, I mean, <laughs> I don't have a problem with that, I, but I applaud and, uh, uh, Pamela Anderson for, yeah. <laughs> that was makeup free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I applaud her. I'm, I'm, I'm digging Pamela Anderson. Okay. I like everything she's about. Well, Me too. Yeah. Did you watch that documentary? Yes, of course I did. So good. Yeah. Okay. It was moving. It was really moving. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And by the way, that's how she is in real life. Yeah. She's yeah. not full of makeup exactly. and everything. Exactly. Okay, here's your next one. Skinny brows seem to be back. See? Look, here's wait, look at Kim K. Kim K likes No, I don't like skinny brows. <laughs> I don't like that. I'm still trying. I mean, no. That's a mistake. Everyone regrets that. So don't do that. Anyone, okay? Because then they don't come back. Yeah. Same. I mean, we're all bushy brows is where it's at. Where I it's agree. At. Bushy brows. Thousands. Bushy brows. All right, here's our last one. As a single woman, what are your thoughts on dating apps? Sure, use them. Yeah? Yeah, of course. Have you, Have you used ever? Her? Yeah, I've used Raya. Yeah, when I'm traveling in different cities, of course. <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> So if you're traveling like, on tour, you try to find a man. No, no, not on tour necessarily. But like when I'm in New York, London, you know, when I'm on vacation or I'm, I'm not at home because I don't really want anyone in my house. I just want to meet at a bar or hotel and potentially, you know, close that deal. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? Is it 10 o'clock a.m.? It yet? sure I mean, I've tried is. It like three times uh, already. Well, you know what? This is what you could be bringing to late night. I don't know what we're doing. Let's go. <laughs> what no, are we gonna, doing? It's going to be happening. Um, but before she's going to get yeah. the job on the Daily Show. Yeah. Chelsea's on tour, y'all. She's going to be performing oh, yes, in I'm Los Angeles. She's right. At the Hollywood Pantages Theater. Pa oh, that sounds cool. When are you going to be there? I'm going to be uh, there October 12th and 13th. Next Thursday, Thursday and, and Friday. Friday. Thursday but you're touring the whole country, right? Yeah, I'm going to Columbus. All the Cincinnati, oh, Fab, yeah. Pittsburgh, all the hot Are you going to go on a dating app in Ohio? Um, that's unlikely, but we, who knows? It depends what kind of mood I'm in. You know what okay. I mean? Okay, I like depends it. Depends what, what kind of, what, what, what. <laughs> I'm not going to finish okay. Don't finish right. it. Don't finish it. Okay, coming up, an amazing story of grit and perseverance that will leave you inspired. Thank you, Chelsea. Coming up next. <laughs> Take a turn. Okay, you're getting that game. That's it. Girl, yeah, let's yeah. go.
Sarah Whittingham has led a life filled with grit and perseverance as an Air Force veteran and anesthesiologist. She's traveled the world caring for her fellow service members and patients. Well, recently her life took an unexpected turn. And while she might be facing an uphill battle, she <laughs> is definitely not out of the race. Running is my escape, my time to myself and my time to think. Getting outside, breathing the fresh air. When I run, I'm, I'm free. I feel like I'm floating. But there was a moment three years ago when 49-year-old Sarah Whittingham thought this freedom that she loved throughout her life was over. I grew up running with my dad, ended up competing in both high school and uh, college and track. After high school, Sarah entered into the Air Force Academy. When I was at the Air Force Academy, it was only 12% women. We all felt that you had to do everything that much better than any of the guys to prove that we even still belong there. Next, she went to medical school and even found time to run her first Ironman in New Zealand. The United States Air Force, Sarah Whittingham. Soon followed by Hawaii in 2001. An Ironman triathlon is 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 mile bike, and then a 26.2 mile marathon, all back to back. She got married, did a residency in anesthesia, and had two daughters, all while remaining in the Air Force. I deployed to Afghanistan in right before Christmas of 2010. I was an anesthesiologist taking care of American and Afghani uh, nationals. And that was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life because I was leaving behind a three-year-old, sorry, and my six-month-old daughter. After retiring from the Air Force Reserves, her family eventually settled in Ohio, where she joined Cleveland Clinic Marymount Hospital as an anesthesiologist. But in 2019, after competing in her fifth Ironman, Sarah realized something was wrong. I was tired all the time, I was stiff. My Ironman time was two hours slower, despite training harder. Then her husband John noticed a problem. I was just hanging out with my family one evening on the couch. My husband kind of looked over me and, and he said, your arm's kind of shaky. I looked at down and I was like, why would I have a one-sided resting arm tremor? I Googled it and you know, it was one article about Parkinson's after the other. And the more I read about it, the more I realized that I had been having these symptoms for the last five years. Sarah's neurologist confirmed it was Parkinson's disease. There's definitely that period of denial too. Like, well, this can't be happening to me. I'm healthy, I'm active, I work out. When I look back on it, I say, I kind of went through the stages of grief, you know, grieving for the future that I had previously seen for myself. You could see the impact. You could see the depression. You could see the anxiety. And at some point, she said, I'm going to fight this. Soon, the chance to enter into a research study would become the lifeline Sarah was searching for. Study the effects of cycling on the progression and management of Parkinson's disease. I was one of the lucky ones that was randomized to receive a Peloton. I quickly realized that the more I rode the bike, the better I felt. Like my anxiety was better, I was sleeping better, I just felt better overall. So two years after her life-altering Parkinson's diagnosis, a new dream came into focus. I watched the, the Iron Man broadcast on NBC every year. I wrote Iron Man and told them my story and told them that my dream was to uh, make it to the finish line on a Leahy Drive in Kona <laughs> again. And, uh, and I waited. <laughs> in August, Sarah got word that she had been selected to compete in Ironman Kona on the big island of Hawaii on October 14th. This will be probably the most meaningful finish line that I cross in my life. <laughs> I want to be smiling when I cross the finish line, but I'm afraid that I'll be crying my eyes out. But it, it'll be incredibly meaningful to me um, to see my husband at the finish line waiting for me and giving him a big hug and for helping me get through all of this. Okay, that what you're looking at, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is inspiration on your screen. That is Dr. Sarah <laughs> Whittingham, who's with us. Yes. First of all, we are Jenna and I are in awe of you. Sitting next to you, we can feel what you've gone through and exactly where you are in this moment. Can we just start off with that? Like, how are you feeling? You're about to head off on this big adventure. You're going to Hawaii. We know what you've been through. Where are you right now? It just doesn't seem real. Yeah. Like to have this opportunity to inspire others is just yeah. such a privilege and 
I'm so lucky <laughs> to be able to compete in Hawaii and to hopefully bring hope to other people living with Parkinson's. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, I know, I'm crying too. Yeah. Because I feel like in some ways competing in an Ironman, something that very few people could do, yeah. Yes. we could never. Mm -hmm. And also going through this battle with Parkinson's, yeah. it's yes. like they're a metaphor for each other. Yes. They are. Way. And they are. I'm so grateful that the one thing, my biggest passion, my biggest hobby in running and triathlons is the thing that seems to help Parkinson's the most. Yes. And I hope to educate other physicians and Parkinson's patients the, the importance of exercise and the benefits of how much it can make a difference in every aspect of my life, not just my tremor, but also how I feel, how I sleep, my anxiety, wow. all of it. So There's a physical component to both of these things that you are battling, that Iron Man obviously is very physical and, and Parkinson's, but there's also something emotional going on in both both yeah. fights. Yes. I mean, yes. you, you to have competed that many, you have to have just a special mindset, and that same mindset is applying to you right now totally. as yes. you're fighting Parkinson's. Yes, and I, I feel like you know my years of doing triathlon and endurance racing has made me that much more mentally tough in being prepared to, to deal with this next race against Parkinson's and I just I'm just incredibly lucky you in so many would, ways. You said it would be your greatest accomplishment mm -hmm. if you could finish when, not if when, when you finish. when you finish this race yes. why why would that be? Because three years ago I didn't I pictured myself being in a wheelchair in 10 years or being you know un, being disabled and to to be able to accomplish something that I never in my wildest dreams would have thought possible is just, it, it still blows my mind. Mm -hmm. I'll be thinking of everybody else with Parkinson's yeah. as I'm out there and hoping yeah. that I, they're going to be right there with me. I mean, so. your service, your grit, your yeah. perseverance yeah. is so inspiring. And there's a group of your loved ones and colleagues that just wanted to send you a little love. So Sarah, take a, take a look. Good yeah. luck at Kona. We know you're going to crush it. We love you. Aww. Sarah, I'm so excited that you're participating this year in the Ironman and can't imagine the amount of work that it's taken to get to this point. We are cheering you all the way, and I know that you will be successful in everything that you try to accomplish. Congratulations and best of luck, and truly embody using exercise as medicine to treat Parkinson's disease. messages can just cheer, when you're awesome. sort of yeah. like a mile 22 <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. they can cheer you Thank on you. Wow. you are such an inspiration to us my we gosh. love you we're so happy you're Thank here you and so you know much. you said you wanted to do this to inspire people trust us you already have <laughs> you already have Thank yes. you so Thank much you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. all right don't forget Saturday the Ironman World Championship you're gonna hear Jenna and I <laughs> all the way in Kona because we're gonna be cheering you on we Thank sure you are. so much Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah. Thank you. Coming up next, from Gigi to J-Lo, we show you how to dress like your favorite celebrity for less after this.
look where we can show you how you can rock A-list styles for less. Influencer and fashion expert Janae Naylor calls herself the ultimate high-low mixer and uses her blog High Low Lux to help make fashion and style attainable for all. So get this, between Insta, TikTok, and YouTube, Janae has more than a combined 900,000 followers. Oh. They turn to you for style and insight. We can see why. It's good to see you. you. Look so chic. Thank Love you your for having suit. me. What is, going, yeah, what is happening with I, all this? The, uh, Frankie Shop suit. Oh. Uh, then I just added these two flowers of here. Of course I love you it. did. Well, the okay. ballet flat is back. back. It's back. It, who says so? Our Everybody. feet are happy. Everyone. Our feet are happy. Yes. yes. We eat them. Show I us mean, who's wearing. Yeah. Celebs like Gigi Hadid, yeah. J-Lo, Michelle Williams. Gives you comfort. This pair, you still get like that razzle dazzle. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But comfort is back. Okay. How do you, what do you, what do you wear this with? I never know what to wear Put ballet, ballet flat with. with. I love a good cropped pant. So if you're taking it to work, uh, you can cute. do a cropped pant, you can do a cropped jean. But also, if you want something a little more relaxed, oversized jeans with the uh -huh. ballet flat just sticking out. Yeah. That's kind of like the different twist on it. Okay. I love that. Okay, well, these are adorable and adorable. nice price. Yeah, great price. They're from Zara. Oh, yeah, anything bucks. Zara <laughs> awesome. is always okay, good. Okay, for jewelry, these gold chains are really in. Yes, like a vintage inspired necklace. We've seen this on Tracy Ellis Ross. Look at Tracy Ellis Bieber. Ross. I mean, gorgeous. And this is from Anthropology. Great price point. Uh -huh. It gives you that bold statement piece without it being too flashy. Okay. Yeah, it's vintage really kind of beautiful. Details. Yeah. Now, could Looks you like layer this? It down to you. Yeah, totally. Do <laughs> yeah. you layer this or do you go ahead and just wear it with? I, I think it depends on where you're going. Yeah. Right yeah. During the day, it dresses up a super basic, simple outfit. But then at night, it's a super elegant piece. You can wear this with a ball gown. Yeah. Who, who's somebody you look to and you say, I love that style. I love her style. Tracy Ellis Ross. Tracy yeah. Yeah. Ross, we feel it? the same is way. It's effort, confidence. Yes. It's effortlessness. Yes. And she loves fashion. She and loves. What about the color? And she, she yes. rocks Risks. every color. Yeah. Yeah. She makes it look easy. It's just like, oh, this whole thing. Everything it, looks like. Did you love fashion since you were a little girl? Yes. You I always to, did. Yes. Yes. I used to draw pictures. I read magazines. I would do this thing where I just like every time I read a magazine, I would pick a page and like, if I could have one thing, what would it be? Oh my God. We played that game. Barbara and I played that game. What's your favorite dress? Yeah. Yeah. Like you have to. You could pick something. You have anything on the page. Okay. Well, here's the other thing you I like pick, these belts. These chain belts. Yeah. Statement belts. So Look. this is doing double duty, right? You could put this over a coat. You could put this, you tailor in something. It cinches in your waist. Kim but K also has it like, on the midriff. It's like mm -hmm. jewelry too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you can do less accessorizing because you got this big bold statement belt. Okay. Some of those belts looked expensive that the stars and were wearing. And this is yeah. a great price point. From Express, around 35 bucks. Nice. You can't got, get that. Yeah, these are all a lot of bang right on for your buck. Yeah, yes. totally. All right. And so, what if you were going to wear this? What would you style this with? How would you style with? it? Immediately a blazer, uh -huh. especially if you have something a little oversized. You want it Wait, to be a little you more wear tailored. It with Absolutely. This? I would. Could, be, yeah. I would unbutton it, take the flower off, and then just cinch in the waist. Just Amazing. cinch it in. You could also put this on a slip dress. Oh. Kind of like do it a little low. Slung. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. there's a lot to do with that. All right. Yeah, which is nice because you don't want to buy one thing that you're only going to wear once. Cost per wear. Let's yeah. talk tweed. CPW. Tweed. I love this jacket. I have this jacket. Who's got it? Uh, Meghan Markle, Katie Holmes. This mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. for this transitional time, this is a great option if you don't want to wear a denim jacket. If you don't want to wear a blazer, this gives you that polished look. Yeah. So what would you, don't want to wear what would you wear that with right now? Jeans and my flats. That's it. Jeans flats. and your new flat. <laughs> Literally. And, your brand and, and maybe your flat. chain. Maybe your chain. And you're ready to go. You can go anywhere. This now, who makes this one? one? This is from Urban Revival, $69. Great price point, amazing quality. It looks beautiful. And this is my favorite color in it, too. By the way, Cream. this is your first time on our show. It sure yes. And you did it. You, a plus. Thanks. So congratulations. I mean, I'm doing my favorite thing. I know you did. By, by the way, you can tell. You <laughs> totally. can tell how much you love it. You did you. such a great thank job. So thank, thank you, thank you, Janae. Come back soon, here. please. Uh -huh. Coming up next, y'all, have a ball with our fall crawl. Our pal Gerard showing us how it's done. And one Plaza fam will get their <laughs> shot. It's a pumpkin up. spice latte. Yes, he is. Oh. He can do it all right after this. Come on, Gerard. You can get it. Get one it. More. There he goes. Get it. Get oh. it. No. No. Sorry. Sad. There he goes. Yeah.
it's time for some fun. It's a game we like to call the Fall Crawl. And here to play along with me is this lovely lady, ben, Brenda McRae. She's from Hunterville, North Carolina. She's here with her wife, Nakia. All right, hey. are we ready? All right, here's how it's going to work. Okay. okay. We got three classic games. You're going to bob for an apple. You just need to get one. Okay. okay. Then you're going to go bowling here, and you just need to knock all those pins down. Okay. You move to the football station. You get one through the tire. Okay. All right. And then what? Okay. Now, if you complete all three in 45 seconds, you're going to come over. You're going to spin our fall crawl wheel, and one of the prizes will be yours. Okay. Okay. And hold all up. good prizes. Are you all ready? Right, Brenda. I'm ready. Brenda, let's put 45 seconds on our clock, shall we? On your mark, get yeah. set, and go, Brenda, go! Oh, oh yes, let's done, go. done, girl! Let's go! Come on, blow those go. down. Oh, look at you. Here you go. Oh, yeah. You take your time. Oh, oh, yeah. It's not you got so it. Hard. Yes, let's go. You're so close. Yes, yes let's go. Football. Come on, Football. girl. Football. You got it. You got oh, it. You got so time. Close. You got it. You got it. You got it. Take your time. You got it, Brenda. Yes! yes! Okay, come on over. Hold on, you lost your mic. Let me just get you. Okay. Okay. You did all you are gonna, three of those. Now you're going to spin. Now you're going to spin to okay. find out what your prize is. Let's go. Brenda, spin that wheel. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, Brenda. Let's go. Big money. Big money, big money, big money. Big money. Let's go. Money. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. Okay, come on. By the way, you can't lose. No, everything. You're getting this! Big screen team! Oh my god, in our own pumpkin spice. This is yours! You're no going home with a Weston House 55 inch Roku TV. Oh, Watch and stream no. your favorite TV shows in Ultra HD picture quality. This TV also has screen mirroring technology and a customized home screen. Brenda! I love Brenda! It. Yeah. We're so happy you came oh, to see my us. God, I love it! Congratulations, nice Nikki, to you too. Yes, we love y'all. All you. right. Brenda, thank you for playing with us. We love you. We'll be back right after this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Up next week, we got a performance by the legendary Reba McIntyre. Oh, we love her. Plus, Mandy Moore, Sophia Carson, and Garcelle Bouvet. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back. Here we go. Boom. Sometimes we just do things to help. <laughs> That's our Hoda. Happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all.
this morning on Today Food, we are making sweet and savory pies with New York Times bestselling author Allison Roman. Her third cookbook, congratulations, is out today, and you are getting back to your roots. As a pastry chef, it's called Sweet Enough, and it's filled with simple recipes for, for everybody. And so, yeah, we were talking about how, for you, baking was like an entry point uh, into the culinary world. Yeah, it was sort of the job that they had available at the restaurant I wanted to work at. I had no training in either department, so it didn't really matter. I said, I'll do whatever. And then I was a pastry chef for six years. And as a person who's not that into desserts, I feel like that was an interesting choice, but I'm glad I made it. Well, I'm glad you put some savory desserts in the in the cookbook, too. We're going to start with that. Yes. This is your mushroom pot pie, which you say is better than a chicken pot pie. Yeah, I do okay. say that. And I, it's not even if you're a vegetarian. I just think that that's, like, the case. But I'm glad we're doing a savory pie, too, because if you're doing a pie, sweet or savory, pie crust is the most important part. Mm -hmm. And I believe firmly in doing your butter by hand, but that's also the beauty of this book is that most things are sort of done by hand or without equipment. Right. Oh. Um, so, are you Like the old with, school baking one. Yeah, yeah I get that. we're doing old school. Am yeah. I familiar are with what? With pie quiz dough. Me. With pie dough. Yeah, like the making uh, of Pillsbury pie dough, I am a little okay. bit, but Wrong this answer, is the real, this <laughs> the real okay. deal. Okay, well now that I've made it What was the, the deal with that butter that you had it cubed? Just, was that to help break yeah. it down? So it's cold butter and unsalted. And basically, you kind of just want to smash it in. And I think that this is also like is a good flour? reminder. Yeah, flour, sugar, salt, Got a little it. bit of sugar. Okay. Because it's for sweet and savory. Um, but just like have a good time, like play with it. It should feel like you're playing in the bowl of flour. So don't get too precious with it. You can add your vinegar, your ice cold water. The vinegar is in there because it adds a little bit of tenderness. The acidity, mm -hmm. oh. boring, 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 helps prevent like <laughs> gluten formation, which Got is it. like, you know, if you must know. Um, Al, do you make your own pie crust? You strike me as the gentleman that might mm. do that. I've mm. tried. Excellent. I'm not that good at it. Okay. I think we should get over here and try this. Right. I think you would mm -hmm. trust yourself to have a much better. So you make this time. dough. Obviously, it works for sweet or savory. This, yes. this pie so it's dough. It's like a great all-purpose pie crust. It works for galettes. It works. And can for you just freeze it and pie, hold on to it? Can there always be a roll of dough in your freezer? And sort you know, of thing, or no? in my house there is. Okay. There is always a roll. Um, but yeah, so this one is mushroom, and the reason I included savory recipes is because I sort of figure if you can make a sweet pie, you can also make a savory pie. Mm -hmm. And pot pies, obviously very popular. They don't have to be always meat-based, mm -hmm. and I feel like mushrooms are a really great way to sort of showcase like flaky pie crust, creamy filling, all that what stuff. What kind of shrooms are you working with today? Alice? We <laughs> are working with a multitude of shrooms, Carson. Mm. Um, <laughs> these are my talkie mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, Look and regular button mushrooms. Mm. Um, and but, but like, for people at home, they want to make this tonight. Like literally, can they describe any mushroom in the market? You can grab any mushroom in the market. Okay, and I think like the nice thing about just cooking with regular sort of button is that they are, they're more affordable, they're accessible, but shocked at the variety of mushrooms available these days. They really come a long way. Okay. Um, okay. So we are going to sort of cook half the mushrooms down. Are you guys eating then, this over there, Hoda? Are you enjoying this? They're, 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 they're going great. for it. They do not is wait for us. Is, is there great. cheese in this? No, a little bit of cream. Okay. Really I know we good. don't do a ton of dairy. So but good. All right, so you just cook all these mushrooms down. Yeah, we and start add by cooking to them half. Or? I'm gonna start eating. You cook, yeah, and then <laughs> they're like, "You have run out of time, you know what ma'am." To do. <laughs> um, there is mushrooms, onions, garlic, mm. and you sort of like cook it down, Delicious. do the whole thing, salt and pepper, season as you go, and then you end up with these gorgeous. Little mushrooms this is here. great. This is a little cold. Really I don't know if it's supposed good. to be, really good. but it's yeah. delicious, even chilly. You know, like the it's next TV day. Magic. Um, mm -hmm. We add more butter. We add herbs. We add flour, and oh that's gosh. basically the thing that thickens the pot pie filling. Uh -huh. The butter, delicious. Um, so good. There's a cream. Um, I like to make the roux sort of in the pot rather than like using 28 yeah. pots and pans for any pot pie. Um, it makes things a lot easier. And what is this oh. liquid right here? This brothy thing. It's broth and it's, cream. <laughs> it's broth and cream, which okay. is, this is not cheese, is. but not not cheese, you know. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's good. Um, <laughs> add that, add that, and it basically cooks down into wow. something really beautiful that looks mm. like this. Yeah. So if you want to add that to here, Creamy this is a double crust pie, and the reason I like to use a glass bottom pie plate, whether it's a savory pie or a sweet pie, because you can see the bottom bake as it goes, right? Ah. So if you're like, how is it done? How do I know? Mm -hmm. With a glass bottom pie now. plate, so smart. Uh, you can see the bottom. Right. Mm. Okay. And you got a crust on top. all around, yeah. <laughs> And you then, do a little crimping around the edges know, there. We got about a minute. Crimp however you want. Great. Yep. One minute. Sixty seconds is more than I thought we had. So okay. We're doing great. Um, what's, what's the crumbly thing? Let's try the. Oh. It's just the flaky pie crust. That's wow. just how flaky it is. Mm. How about oh, the lemon pie, pie guys? Yeah. Yeah. Do you use a whole lemon in this lemon pie? Some cream on that. The whole lemon is in there, so it's. <laughs> like, it looks like there's part of the. It is. It's a shaker pie, so it's like a classic sort of thing where they use the whole lemon and everything, which I'm a huge fan of. But like same pie crust and. 
One is sweet, one is savory, one is salt and pepper, one has sugar. It's super versatile. Is your cookbook 50 50 savory and sweet? Or is no, it it's like 95 sweet, 5 savory. Okay. okay. I sort of said the savory because I'm like, it's for me. Too, yeah. You know? If I'm you like, were going to bake one thing out of your own cookbook, what would you bake? Wow. Tonight. God, tonight? Wow. Yeah, like tonight, what would you make? Maybe this lemon shaker pie. Love it. Yeah. I love, it's really I love good. the whole lemon. It's wow. bitter, it's sweet, it's not too sweet. It's sweet enough, as it were. It's so good, Allison. Mm. Yeah. Well, Come get on. the cookbook, everybody. Mm. It is sweet enough, and you can get these recipes mm. also at our website, today.com slash food. One of the best parts of Thanksgiving, of course, are the leftovers. Melba Wilson is the chef and owner of Melba's in Harlem, and she's going to show us how to repurpose our turkey insides into like, we're not just making the turkey sandwich. We're oh, making something no. kind of yes. fresh. We Special. love it. Create, well, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. How was yesterday? It, it was, was good. delish was as good. usual. Good. All right, there's so well, much left over though. So, so what are we doing? So many things left over. So what we're doing today is we are doing my turkey Pot okay. pie, which I, pot pie. Pot pie. So smart. Who doesn't love know. a pot pie? Okay, so comforting, so warm, and so delicious. Okay. So Jenna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dice up those oh. uh, celery stalks okay. right there. Okay. I know this you is a got it. Dicey. No, that's good. good that's enough. good. Good girl. Okay. That's that's perfect. Right. perfect. Let's pretend I diced. There it. you go. And then we're gonna sweat that in and there. And is there onions already in there? Those are onions in there. And then mm. we're gonna add carrots. our carrots. Do you put butter yes. or do you put oh, girl, oils you know, in there? You know there. I put butter I in there. Everything is butter. better with butter. Really yes. true. You so see how wonderful better. that is? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take our flour, all-purpose flour. Okay. We're going to... Oopsie. <laughs> Go ahead, girl. Okay. Okay. This, is what, what I, this is what I do at home, you okay? I'm happy to know that even Melba's... Even I make yes. it yes. Every you now and then. All right? Okay. But the beautiful thing about this yeah. is this flour is really, really... Look at... Watch what it's yeah, going to do. Yeah, it's like making It's going to get some of that. Make some of that fat. And it's also mm. gonna toast it. Mm. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. Add something? Yeah. Would you please add the sweet potatoes? Oh, sweet potatoes. Yes. Sure. Pass the potatoes, you please. You got it. Yes. So these are raw. Raw sweet potatoes. Okay. Yeah. They use are. The ones you already cooked or no? Well, you know you can, but well, you we'll don't want that. it to get too mushy. Do that at the end. We'll right. For right. So now. take your turkey stock. Put May that I? Turkey, okay. stock. turkey stock. Yeah. Mm. Now, turkey do you stock. smell mm. that? Mm. Wow. Yeah. So you cook that. And we're going to cook this down for about 30 minutes or okay. so. All right. Come to the good part. So after that's cooked, we got it? No, we got to add a collard greens. Oh, collard, collard greens, greens going in. We got to put some collard greens. And collard greens going in. In oh, the left. Yes. And so my mom, she yeah. loves the white meat. But I'm a dark meat girl. Me too. And so what I, I do love a dark meat. is I just pull the dark meat. And I put it in there. So, so you're going to put all this yep, in there? all that pulled dark I, meat in there. We don't have that much leftover dark meat uh, in our house. Really? You no. only have... No, but, but I think if you put the, the, the white meat in here, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's in whatever. It really, really, it really, really doesn't. Okay. But one of the other things you can do with your with your dark meat it, mm -hmm. is with your collard greens, you can add it in and use it as a side dish. Yeah, and that's it gives a good it so idea. so much so more smart. flavor. Okay. Okay, we're going to take that perky pot. Do you want me to try it? Oh, yep. this is the filling. Yeah, this is the filling. We're going to put it in. Where'd you get this? Normally, I would make them, but I've been cooking for three Three days, girl. Yeah, I, yeah, so I just brought some little delicious crust. Do you uh, have too much? Crust that, no, that's that's. And you perfect. put it on top? That's perfect. I mean, that how cute are those? And we're going to take our egg, egg wash. wash. And, and what am I doing? Wash it right on the top. And then how, you put Beautiful. it in the oven? You're going to put it in the oven at 350 and just let it cook until it's golden brown. I've got to and try this. Voila. Tell oh me what you God. think. Look at the top on it. It's so beautiful. Cute. Isn't that beautiful? And this is crunchy and crispy. Mm. And it's a great way to use leftover turkey and leftover collard greens. Mm. Mm. Oh, my God. And I think kids would mm. love this. Kids mm. really would. And, you, and mm. you can use it as a starter oh, or you can use it as an entree. No, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. So Melba. delicious. Is Wait, there more? To, there's one more. Oh, 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 I know. This. Okay. Well, okay. Go. we also Take it with have you. our fall harvest turkey cob salad. <laughs> okay, this is brilliant. Okay. So, look at this. These are all Gorgeous. things that were pretty much left over. What do you right? have there? Tell us. Well, we have roasted sweet potatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, leftover turkey, bacon bits. Who doesn't love bacon bits? And you Nobody. always have dried fruit left over. Always dried fruit. All you that can stuff. use cranberry. Okay. Or you can use cherries. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start with our dressing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love a Dijon Me vinaigrette. Too. Dressing, all right? So we have our Dijon mustard mm -hmm. here. And did you have some cranberry juice left over? Yes, yes. of course. Well, girl, let's put that in cranberry there. Cranberry juice. Okay. Red wine vinegar. Of course. We red have a little vinegar. of that. Yep, let's put the red wine vinegar, and we're going to whisk that I'll together whisk first, right? And then you put the oil in? That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly add the olive oil. There you mm -hmm. go. Beautiful. To emulsify it, right? Emulsify. Just so that it doesn't separate, yeah? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Hoda Got always that? mulsifies things. No, she is good. You, you have a lot here. of experience. Hoda, you Use mulsify it. Keep Melba, it going, girl. Come on, Melba. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. Come on, yeah. Bam. Uh -huh. Fresh pepper. Yeah. There we go. Oh, look at that. 
Now, the beautiful thing about That's this. That's beautiful. This will last for about a week in the fridge. It will? Oh, really? It really, really will. Okay. Okay, so you're just using iceberg. Uh, romaine. Romaine. <laughs> romaine lettuce. That's okay. 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 That's all right. And you have and this beautiful. Take your toppings. We got the turkey. Just put them right on what top. You want. Whatever That's you so want. That's so good. Whatever you want. Sneak down here and try one of these. Okay, I'm going to add some, some over Our here. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Mm. You gotta put some turkey in here, some sun-dried tomatoes. Oh my gosh. Eggs, avocado. No, what a smart idea. And crumble. Lay this out for people to mm -hmm. pick what they mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. It's kind of healthy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's kinda I healthy. love the sweet potatoes. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you, Melba. Melba. For Happy these recipes. Happy Thanksgiving. You can head to today.com slash food. <laughs> We're just days away from Thanksgiving, and this morning in our Make Ahead Monday, we're getting some inspiration to add something new to your holiday meal. This morning, we are joined by Skylar Bouchard, also known as Dining, Dining with, with Skylar. Hello, and you guys. she's got a twist on a classic <laughs> comfort food. Skylar, welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. We are going to get cooking today. Uh -huh. okay. You guys are going to be working with me. So this this is something that we could make ahead for to be ready for Thanksgiving. Absolutely. So we are making vegetable pot pies. So you okay. can do this casserole style you can do it little side style like we're doing in ramekins um, or little mini cast iron. I love it. It's a lot of nice. fun. Um, and then we're going to make some pear and brie pastries. It smells Are you so ready? What's the, the, the start it's for so this? Good. All right. So this is onion and fennel we have going with some butter. Mm -hmm. okay. And we're going to add some salt because you want to season every single layer of your dish with some kosher salt, preferably. Mm. Even the concept of layering just yes, sounds yummy to me. That is the, the base of it is so important because we're building all of our flavor. Diced so garlic? I'm garlic. adding some garlic. We're adding thyme, mm -hmm. rosemary, and sage. Oh. All the things. Yeah. All the things, yeah. all the fall things. Yes. This almost starts to smell like the base for stuffing. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of the inspiration mm -hmm. here with the sage. We're making it kind of fall themed. We want to hang on to fall a little and bit it's longer. Veggie. You can add veggie broth. Yes. Or stock? Yes, that's okay. what we're doing. So we're gonna build a roux. And actually, okay. Chanel, I'm gonna have you help me. Okay. Al, I know you're a shell. No, no, so. no. I think Chanel. <laughs> Chanel, right. you gotta start. Actually, we're gonna start with some white, white wine, wine here. Okay. We're building casually a roux. or just go for uh, it. You know what? Casually pour it in. Okay. Uh, we're gonna cook it off as you're pouring it in. And okay. this flour is basically the thickener for mm, our sauce. Without the flour. So we have a soup, and we all don't right. want a soup, right? Well, for the sake of time, I'll yeah. Kind of hurry it up there. <laughs> all right, yeah. Let's add all that veggie stock. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're not like a true vegetarian, you can go chicken stock there here you for go. flavor. Okay. And but sometimes, at least you have this option because there are a lot of people exactly. these days who are trying not to eat meat, so mm -hmm. you have something for them that's and still comfort food ish. Absolutely. You know? and what's that? What was that? So this is my secret ingredient, you guys. This is some veggie stock concentrate paste. Ooh, so it yeah. has a lot of depth of flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it really boldens the flavor more. And just some milk? Some whole milk. Whole We're gonna milk. just yeah. mix that up. Right. So you're gonna, mm -hmm. if you're doing this at home, you do that slowly. Right. Let that thicken. Okay. Wait, and we're gonna Hold add on. all oh. of our vegetables. So in just the pour all of them right into the pot. Are these see, frozen veggies? These are frozen veggies. Oh, so it makes it that much easier. That Even much better. Easier. We could blanch okay. them all, and it would uh -huh. take different times for 
different vegetables. Right, we'll but just like for sake of time, you know, vegetables yeah. are actually frozen after they're blanched. Uh -huh. okay. So they're all part cooked and it'll cook evenly and perfectly. Mm -hmm. So okay. here's our filling, right? We're gonna let that thicken and be right. beautiful. Here we are now. We I have waited, so we let this come to room temp after it thickened okay. because that's just a safer way to do it. We'll okay. put it in the fridge yep. up to three days. Okay. And now oh. we so this part's already done and you're done. ready. Yep, it's already done. We're gonna scoop it in as our turkey is resting. We mm -hmm. have our oven preheated right. to whatever the pastry instructions will say. Okay. Al, why don't you help me out here? Okay. So we're gonna get a lovely square puff pastry. And right. just Plop it on. Oh, Feel free to stretch it out. This is thawed out. Mm -hmm. Thawed the night before. That's mm -hmm. a really important thing to do. And we then like you've got an egg wash? Cooked. Yup. And we're going to slit it. Oh, my God. You can slit it first or egg wash first. This might be my new favorite thing. Yes, I love that for Wait, you. Wait, I could be vegetarian if I can wow. do this. And then this goes in the oven for how long? So this goes in. Oh it God. depends on your puff pastry. This would probably be 25 minutes. Oh, see, you know. You pulled out all the stops. Listen. I'm just going to slit yours for ventilation. We don't want it to get soggy. It's That's a very right. important step. I need like the, the yes. steam Ow. escape. Are you the new salt bay? Pardon? You're salt bay. Get a little salt bay. Listen, whoever <laughs> at home, if you like... And that's the thing. You don't even have to be a vegetarian to love this. This no, is exactly. amazing. In fact, you Thank could put you. a little, little, little uh, rotisserie chicken in oh there. Rotisserie, so that's the other thing. What you can okay, use Thanksgiving on. leftovers. And then the vegetable, filling. I mean, of uh, a dessert time. Exactly. Ooh. All right, you, we're all building them today. So you say mm -hmm. you have leftover puff pastry. Mm -hmm. This is a fun little thing. We're gonna, Come on, Chanel. Oh, Al, let's oh, get so in here. Eating. We're going to layer some pear slices. Pear and cheese? Or yep. are you doing so two, two different things? Two different. No, we're doing pear and cheese. They actually oh, complement each other really well. Oh, sweet and savory. Well. Okay. Exactly. And it's like the idea of a little apple and cheese. Yeah. That's such a great idea. And I love a good pear, so we're using Bartlett pears I think I and mine. some creamy brie. You can use chemical. See how cute hers looks? So, oh. no, wait, question. <laughs> Before we run out of time, so then you just do this and then just bake it. It's that simple. Yeah, it is that simple. We're gonna add a little honey and a little sea salt. Ooh, yeah. Yep, honey bay and salt bay. Is, is Al Roker right here? Look and, at that. Oh, uh, this is nice. Oh yeah. So you get the sweet, the <laughs> salty. <laughs> salt. Ooh, wow, try it. Skylar, this is fantastic. Yeah, and Ready? if you want to jazz it up, you can add some prosciutto as well. Oh my god. Oh my god. You like god. it? Are you kidding me? No, this I'm gonna hear you. It's like having your meal and dessert <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, and this is a great starter or a great dessert, so you can do either which way. Excited. We're going to take a big bite out of our favorite fall fruits with the one, the only, the returning Martha Stewart. Hi. Hi. Oh, so great to be here. 99th. I can't Book, believe it. Martha Stewart's fruit desserts. And we are so and excited the, to have you here in person. The recipes are so good in this book, and I've been making every single one of them, and they're delicious. But I want to show you how to make apple pot pies. So the apples, you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples. Okay. And uh, we're using Granny Smith's and Rome's. Uh, peel them, cut them into like six pieces, mm -hmm. 
add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor. Oh, okay. A third of a cup of sugar and a little bit of salt. Just mm. three kosher quarter, salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon and allspice, which okay. has a very nice flavor. Half a teaspoon. You can stir that up All some right. And then you saute half of them in a pan. Add two tablespoons of flour. Mm. Oh yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, wow. Yeah, well, you, a little bit more won't hurt. And you cook <laughs> that up until it, it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. really and then add okay. this. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah, it's a little too. So you want it to knows. get it like a thickened up sauce well, kind it'll, of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up yeah. in the oven. Will it absorb too. that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can and I stop then, Okay. <laughs> off. Mm -hmm. And then these stir all together. Ooh, yum. Oh Spoon them into. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> he just added more. Spoon Boom. those into a <laughs> pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. You see this kid? And this okay, is one done. serving. So uh, You didn't put the pastry under, I know. Uh, no, no, no. Pot pies always have the pastry on <laughs> oh, top. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know? So here's a square of puff pastry, just like that. Can you pre-buy that or? It's store oh, yes. yeah, it's okay. a store bought. You can buy it. They, there's very good home uh, frozen, frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top or two, mm -hmm. and put easy. that like that, and then egg wash. Mm -hmm. Just a uh, wow, softly eggs. beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs. Really, really great. When do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. You not don't want to do okay. because you want this to to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. OK, yum. And so delicious, a really cute uh, single serving dessert. Oh, that's now, easier than it, Martha. Actually. Oh my gosh. I would never These would make are those. awesome. This is my happy place right here. No, that's very impressive. You can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what that is? Granny Smith apple? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A pop I'm afraid to, an apple? This is a quince. But oh. it's a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, okay. But oh, it's yeah. not edible it's uncooked. Yeah. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go, Half yeah. uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm and about a quart of water. Watch Carson's gonna try to put bourbon in a that. vanilla bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is, you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean, and scrape it. You wanna get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see the Never seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean seeds, oh, okay. see? And you leave the thing in But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look the color they Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you put no, them in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah, I need. Yeah. Oh okay. no, because that's the flavor. Oh, okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince, just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid. Mm -hmm. And is that the one the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices. So you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is going to love you. That's a good bourbon too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know. Yeah. My people. Okay. So now this goes right into your baking dish. Okay. Those dishes. And all that'll thicken up. And this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal. And you can just oh, I love that. Put this it's all just a crumble. Over the top. Yeah, it's oh. sort of a crumble. Mm -hmm. All over the top like this. Yeah. Had a quince this in your life. You know, taste oh, it. You're gonna love it. This is fantastic. Yeah, Have you tasted it? What do you think about this? So good. Yeah. Someday yeah. my quince Heaven. will come. This is a quince <laughs> crumble. I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, it is so good. We're having our first good. quince. Have you had a quince before? I I grew. No, you. I grew quinces. I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year too. No, really beautiful. Really. Put this all over the top. And sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds, on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go.
This morning on Today Food, there is nothing like a comforting meal to get us through the cold winter days like these. David Venable from QVC's In the Kitchen with David is here to show the ultimate winter comfort food shortcuts. David, at six foot six, nice to see you, brother. Yeah, look at you. I wish he eye to eye on this. <laughs> I was going to say, we were a big dude with some good food options for us today. So we've got a couple things. You're going to start with the pot sticker soup. Yeah, right? pot stickers are my go-to. I keep them in my freezer all the time, and I usually saute them and serve them over rice. So I thought, why not make a winter soup? With pot stickers, but do it from prep to table in 30 minutes. So you got so yes, yeah, a ton of ingredients. Not that many ingredients, Actually, but all easy to only do. Only 10 ingredients here. Yep. So you're talking about some some beef stock that you buy in a carton, a little uh, cooking oil, soy sauce, some fresh vegetables that you're going to prep ahead of time if you don't have a lot of time to do it right at the start, and then some frozen pot stickers. What we're going to do first is we've already heated some oil in this stock pot, and I've got all that same vegetable already cooked up. Now I'll give you a little tip. Yeah. When you're doing some Asian cooking, make sure that all of your vegetables are cut small and the same size so they cook more evenly. Okay. So we're going to get these into the pot. You'll hear them start to sizzle. And all this goes oh, in. Good, this huh? only have to season or soften about five minutes. Chanel didn't wait. She's already enjoying it. Well, <laughs> Chanel's a good eater, I understand. I yeah, Chanel and I know each other from way back. She's a good eater. But you know what? This is fantastic because what you're going to do is just let these saute for about five minutes because, again, you're going to spend more time cutting vegetables than you are making the soup. Yeah, no That's doubt. what makes it so so great and perfect for a weeknight, right? Your, your book is called Comfort Food Shortcuts, right? I mean, a lot of these are good kid options. Your kids, who, what kid would love a little Well, I understand you have two girls, right? we got two girls, yeah. That's why I'm playing a co Playing, paying close attention exactly, to what you do. Exactly, <laughs> because you know what? This becomes kid friendly. All the recipes in the book are 10 ingredients or less. They're all kid and family friendly. So they're really simple. I'm going to add in some beef broth, and to that, then some soy sauce, and then finally a little black pepper. But here's the magic go to your freezer, grab your frozen pot stickers. So that's the takeaway. A lot of people see the frozen food aisle and they're like, ah, I don't know about this. You sort of turn that into the delicacy here. Well, here's the thing. Um, Prepackaged food is a better quality now than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. 25 years ago, you couldn't find pesto in the supermarket worth eating, right? Yeah. If it was pre-jarred or pre-sauced, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So this is going to be something that is easy to find in the market, super, super great quality, and now it's really gourmet. Let this simmer for five to seven minutes and you've got soup finished up. Isn't that crazy? You don't it's even so have to good. Do frost. You don't even have to No, do because the, pot the frozen pot stickers actually frozen. will Cooking warm in the, in the broth. In the broth. Right, right, right. Fantastic. That's why we brought David Venable. And <laughs> yeah. because they are not pre-crisped, they're going to be really tender so you can get your spoon through them. Really good. Ah. Yeah. Let's talk chicken pot pies, can we? Can we oh, do that of course as well? we can. We'll start, garnish that. I'm going to eat. Do you oh, also, please. I'll you do that. While you do so this. this is a biscuit top chicken pot pies, yeah. classic comfort food. But the big problem with traditional pot pies, you have to make crust and you have to make the filling and do all that kind of thing. We're going to really shorthand this. First thing we're to do is buy rotisserie chicken, five dollars in the supermarket. Easy enough. Shred that bad boy up and get it right into the pot. Okay. Then from there, we're going to add in frozen mixed vegetables, mm -hmm. some chicken stock, and cream of chicken soup. Chicken so, chicken soup. Peter, mm -hmm. why don't you give me a hand there? Just pop that um, bowl of frozen vegetables. Right in. Just mixed natural. vegetables. This is Peter. really good. Look, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> but nicely the, done. The truth is, this is easy. It Just is. go down the freezer aisle. You buy. Literally, it's one supermarket run, and you're done. Yeah, these are full of supermarket shortcuts. The book is full of supermarket shortcuts, really helping you get things done in record time. Pop in that soup. Okay. Then we're going to add in some chicken stock. Okay. And then, Peter, if you want to just give me a couple twists of the pepper mill. Yeah. So Sorry, good. here's the pepper mill. And so simple. Now, here's a little tip I'm going to tell you. If you heat the filling first and then put it in the casserole dish, your biscuits won't burn in the oven. What we found when we tested the recipe is if we put in the filling cold and put raw biscuits on top, the biscuits would burn before the filling got warm. Okay. Ah. So you warm it first. Then you put on uh, the biscuits. Now, we've already warmed the filling here, and we're going to use what I call wampum biscuits. You peel off the paper top and you wamp it on the counter. <laughs> exactly. You wamp it here, and then and what we're going to do here, Peter, is just layer these right on top. So you Perfect. just grab those out. You Your girls can help oh, with this. Oh, we've got friends. We've got Oh, we do. Who is it? Who's at the door? Uh, Chef Garner. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yes. We have celebrities in the kitchen. Celebrity chefs from Sesame Street. I love it. I love it. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Come on in. Are you guys hungry? That's well, a I yes. know. So I think question. that's a yes. Right. Say, of All right. course. Well, I tell you what. This is 30 minutes in the oven. Can't beat it. And then you've got a kid-friendly, family-friendly, wonderful comfort. And, and the cost is, is is near nothing. Is it, Well, it's so easy. And these are all ingredients you have on hand or you buy in the market. Thank you for David, the thank you, you so much. Garner, thank you, Cookie Monster. Thank you thank for you. joining us. Have you some pot pie, guys. Right.
Joining us now, author, founder of Fit Cook Meals, <laughs> Kevin Curry is here. Always good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. What are we making this morning? We're cooking up something special for Mama. This is a budget. Oh, and just go ahead and tell the people. It's it's amazing. Tell the people. It's it delicious. Amazing. There's no meat in it, <laughs> and it's easy, and it takes you back to your childhood. Okay, go. Absolutely. So we're gonna start out with some portobello mushroom caps, and the most important thing here is you gotta gill it because if you don't gill it, it's gonna oh. end up being like. Being like really black. Right. And then after that, you're gonna dice it up, looks like this. Okay. You can also, as a swap, just buy some chopped up mushrooms as sure. well. In goes the mushrooms, a little bit of onion. Okay. I'm gonna add a sprinkle of salt just to, oh, to bring the sweetness, the sweetness of it, and then garlic. some garlic. Yes. Boom. Oh, okay. I taste the Saute garlic. this going up. I Boom. Have so many questions about cooking with All right. kale. So what, what, what no. are we doing here? We're now breaking. This is the kale, but don't do it like that. You're oh, doing this, this, the, you know, the long way. You do okay. Like this. You strip it. Oh. Look at that. And then you, Ooh. oh, there oh, you go, it comes oh, right out. I'm a pro. And then Ooh. just tear it into pieces right into this bowl. Look at you, you're like a kale yeah. champion. Keep going. Kale assassin. We should have had you. Go ahead, go ahead, get go that, ahead. get that. that kale. And Why do you like the dinosaur kale. kale for this, Kev? Dino kale has a really good flavor, and also it doesn't wilt down and get slimy, kind of like spinach maybe. Okay. Wait, All so right. do you eat these or no? You cook no, these no, down? No, no, you take no. this out. And you then take those out, and you can use them for fertilizer or something like that in your yard if you want to. All right, now. Let's make the sauce. Okay. Your stuffing. So this is I'll some skim over mm. And we're gonna have some store-bought pesto. Go ahead and put that in there. Okay. Some store-bought pesto. You're gonna add in your kale, which has been steaming here. It's gonna get down to this. Okay. Now, right here. How long do you cook that for? The kids can help with this part, this entire thing. You're gonna cook this down for about three or four minutes until okay. it gets really soft. Okay. That's, that's really there. good. Isn't it? Isn't There's it? There's no meat in this thing. It tastes like it almost has meat. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Put in the rest of it. Oh, the mushrooms, the kale, right? All of it? The mushroom, yes, the kale, the mushrooms. And this is some thyme and some oregano. Oh, yeah, this Mix this together up. very well. Okay. Now, if you have a piping bag, you can add this stuffing to a piping bag or just okay. use a... Oops. Ziploc bag? Do I just squirt yep. it in there? Ziploc or spoon. Oh, yeah. that's good. Oh, that's good. Thank I see you. Thank okay. you, Don't pull that one out. I'm not going I'm there. I'm a little excited. So, yeah, kids can help. I'm a little Mommy excited needs to help on that one. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's move on from that part. And then what? <laughs> and then you're gonna add some marinara Vicky, to the so bottom of this dish. You're gonna add some marinara to the bottom. Okay. And then oh just God. put our stuffed shells right on top. There and then go. a little bit more drizzle of some marinara. Boom, top it off with some mozzarella cheese. You're gonna bake this in the oven, y'all. And Ooh. look, it comes out to this. Let me tell you something. This one's How long do you bake it, oh it roughly? Um, it's about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, That's really good. But guess what? This entire meal is under 20 bucks for all the meat. And this and delicious. Yes. So good. Tastes like lasagna. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, this morning on Today Food, one of our favorites, Katie Lee Beagle. That's right. She is Hi. out with a new Hi. cookbook. It's not complicated. All of the recipes, simple, made with real ingredients that you probably already have in your house. Mm -hmm. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? You want to see the baby? It's all about the baby, right? Forget the book. Oh, wait. Okay, it's good. Oh, wait. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're talking yeah. about. Where's Here Iris? Is. Oh, Iris. Iris. Say hi, baby. Oh, that's hi, a bundle hi. of love. Oh, Katie, oh, Lee. <laughs> Katie Lee, do you just love being a mama? It looks like you were born oh, for it. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I love being this baby's mom more than anything in the world. Oh, I mean, she's, she's just so, so sweet and cuddly. She's very well fed, if you can't tell. <laughs> <She's not laughs> of course she is. <laughs> and we should point out, Katie Lee, that we're saying Katie, Katie Lee Beagle yes. is new to all yes. of us here at this show. Tell us. That's right. I, I am now a Beagle. Um, <laughs> I added my husband's name because I thought... Our family should all have the same last name. Oh, so, well, congratulations. I'm Irish's mom. Well, congratulations. <laughs> so there's the, there's the family you. photo. Katie, you're, you know, I'm you, gonna, you, you got your fourth go cookbook ahead. here. Uh, yeah, you which, can hand what, off, you want to hand off your baby? Yeah, no, but listen. <laughs> I'm going to give her to Grandma. Grandma's okay. sitting here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I wondered, right, like, ahead, how you kind of came, you know, what was the, you know, like the motivation behind cookbook number four? But as you're holding the baby, <laughs> I mean, you must want to do like a baby cookbook, too. <laughs> I know next has to be baby food. Mm -hmm. But really with this, I felt like life's complicated enough, your food shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I wanna make recipes that are easy and fast with everything that I have in my pantry. I'm not looking for a laundry list of ingredients. So these are easy, you can get them on your table and they taste great. And so that's you're gonna make two, you're gonna make two uh, uh, pasta dishes that are uh, vegetarian friendly. Oh, I love that. <laughs> baby. Vegetarian friendly, right? <laughs> you, you guys like eating a little meatless meals in there in your house? Yeah, we like doing our meatless Mondays, but we also love our burgers and steaks. So it's just about a balance. 
So I've got here for you just a big old bowl of mushroom bolognese. It's a super mm. simple. Um, with this, you just put a variety of mushrooms into a food processor, saute them up with onions and garlic and tomato and red wine and let it simmer. And it's super yummy. It's a good one to have in the fridge and just kind of pick on. Now I'm going to take you over here and we're going to make a spinach artichoke pasta. So yeah. this is a great creamy pasta. Think about spinach artichoke dip and add pasta to it and melted cheese. Oh, so wow. what could be bad about that? So I'm just gonna add some olive oil to my pan. And this is a recipe that was actually my husband Ryan's idea when we were doing quarantine because it was all stuff that we had. So mm -hmm. I've got my garlic going in the pan. I'm going to add to it a can of artichoke hearts. Mm, I love artichoke yeah, hearts. Yeah, and then I've got some frozen spinach that I thawed and squeezed all the water out of it. Mm -hmm. You could also use fresh. Just cook it down. It's really important to squeeze that water out. And I've got a little bit of oregano mm -hmm. or Italian seasoning. Mm. You can add a little pinch of crushed red pepper to it mm. to get a little bit of heat. And you just want to let this cook for a couple of minutes. Let the flavors bloom of that garlic and the seasoning. And then to this, I'm going to add some cream cheese. So this is oh, going to make it really rich and creamy. Mm. And you can also substitute a light cream cheese if you want to lighten this up, or you can nah. put a little Greek yogurt in it. <laughs> <laughs> or just go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Think about, you know, what you're eating at another meal. I'm going to add a little bit of the pasta water to it. Mm. And this helps thin out the sauce, but it also helps hold everything together because it's got that pasta starch in there. We've seasoned our water so that it has a nice flavor to it. And then you add your pasta to it. So I'm using a rigatoni. Penne would work great as well. When I'm doing these pasta bakes, I really like to use a short pasta. And just have it all. Oh, oh Iris, Iris loves it. it. Iris. Iris loves it. Iris. <laughs> Iris says, yeah, Mommy, I'll take that. It wasn't a binky <laughs> in her mouth. Pasta. It was a rigatoni. <laughs> <laughs> She's my kid, right? Yeah. She likes to eat. All right. So you let that cook till it gets nice mm -hmm. and creamy. Mm. Top it with cheese. I've yeah. got just shredded mozzarella oh here. Oh, my gosh. Like yeah. Parmesan so cheese. Oof. We're going to have to put the and rest then, on the website. All Katie. right, Katie Lee, oh, Beagle, we love you. Oh, well, let's Wait, look let's at it as you take it out of the oven. Take a look. Oh. I'll just do the sell here while you do it. Today.com slash food if you want to enjoy that. Yes. And yeah. congrats on the book, Katie. It's not complicated. It certainly piece. isn't. We appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Coming Thank up so on much. Hoda and Jenna. Jenna. <laughs> and Hoda. All right. Special today, food in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. New York City and Harlem in particular played a very significant role in Dr. King's life and legacy. And this morning we are cooking with an award-winning chef who opened his first restaurant right here in New York. Yeah, that's right. J.J. Johnson created Field Trip in 2019 to be a community-driven restaurant that celebrates culture through the shared experience of rice. And he's with us now from his kitchen in Harlem. J.J., good morning to you. Morning. So great to have you this morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you? We're doing great. Really quickly, before we get into what you're cooking, talk about how special Harlem is to you and the significance uh, between Harlem um, and Dr. King himself. 
Well, Har Harlem to me is truly special. I was open my first restaurant there. People walk through the door every day. But when you think about a community uh, that supports each other, it's Harlem. And that comes from the time of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all the great leaders, Adam Clay and Powell Jr. Everybody that came through Harlem really paved the way for the future. And that's what I'm trying to do with Field Trip is open those doors, welcome to everybody, and, and build you know community by community, but or rice grain by rice mm -hmm. grain, as mm -hmm. I call it. JJ, <laughs> I, I understand that what we're making this morning is sort of a, a nod uh, to what Dr. King might have on some of his journeys. Uh, back in the 50s and 60s. What are we doing? Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing some other steak. I, I just came out with a food publication called the, the Cookout. And what we did was we followed everywhere Martin Luther King went and we figured how, what's the best way to follow him? is through food. That's how you can learn about somebody in community. So Amen. smother steak and grits That's was something great. that he would love to eat. And this is my take on it. So you wanna find a beautiful sirloin, um, Put that in a, in, a, in a freezer bag and pound it. You can pound it with your cast iron pan or just your hands. And then you take it out of the freezer bag and you're gonna dredge it in some flour, onion powder, garlic powder, smoked chili. Mix that around. Okay. And you're gonna just throw your steak right in there. And the reason why you do this is you wanna get that nice crust on your steak. Yeah. It's basically like frying the steak. I mean, okay. this looks delicious already. We're gonna throw this right into our cast iron pan. Wow. Turn it up and let that go. Okay. And JJ, While you that need that, goes, that sirloin, right? Because you, you gotta pound it out. It's gotta be hard. You can't do that with every cut of, of steak. No, you can't do that with every cut of steak. You wanna, you're tenderizing it, you're pounding it. You're getting all that flavor in there. And, and you want to get a nice cut of meat. I, I got a little bit of grass-fed beef. Uh, I treated myself to that. So I cut some, slice some onions here. I have my shallots mm. and my garlic mix. I have some beautiful cremini mushrooms, right? Mm. So onions, cremini mushrooms, and everything there. Mm. And what you want to do is you want to get it nice and golden brown. That's going to take some time, about four to five minutes. But of course, you know, I'm at home. I'm in Harlem. I had to cheat a little bit. So I cooked my steak a little <laughs> oh, bit here. Smells delicious. Just, right? <laughs> Look at that. Nicely yes. golden brown. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so okay. now what? So listen, it's a one pot dish. You're going to flip this over oh. and get that going. You'll throw in all your ingredients. Don't do oh. it like this, but you'll throw it all in right here and you'll get this beautiful gravy going. So once going. it's finished, that's when you throw it in? It's gonna, it's gonna go. You're gonna saute it down, and okay. you're gonna get this beautiful gravy. I heard there's some red wine right in that here. gravy. Is that right? Yes. You're gonna throw in, you're gonna throw in your steak. Ooh. You're gonna let that simmer. Now, in this sauce, there's also red wine. Yep. There's some cream. There's some beef stock. Now, we all know Craig doesn't care for wine that much. He likes bourbon, <laughs> so you can substitute the wine and you throw in some well. bourbon to get that flavor, which would be really beautiful. You and know then for me, well. me Mm -hmm. If I was if I was able to uh, eat with Dr. King, I'm a big lover of grits. Yes. And look at these grits here. I did some beautiful cheesy grits. Yes. I've been yeah. cooking them all morning since five o'clock in the morning. We've been cooking these oh grits my gosh, here in my look house. At those. I see. My kids helped me set up the set and everything. They were so excited. <laughs> they came here this morning to set my setup. So JJ, we just. just we just popped up at the bottom of the screen a today time saver. Use instant grits. That, that oh, is. No, no, come on. Come on. Yeah. You could, you could I use instant grits, but. I want to correct come that. Come on now, Craig. Come I want to correct I mean, that. That was a crime. But if you, I guess it no could be instant grits. Time, Absolutely not. Okay, well, if you don't you have time to make nice, grits, beautiful you should eat grits. Right. You want to lay them, you want to let them cook low and slow. That's what it's about. That's what all the flavor is. Nobody cooking for Dr. King had instant grits. Right? No. <laughs> they were That's back true. there. They were excited. That's funny. All right, so we have look. about one minute left. How, let's, how do we finish it off Just here? lay this out right here. Look at all that cheese. Mm. I put some cheese oh in there. Oh, my gosh. You'll so lay good. that out. You'll grab the steak. Oh, my spoon dropped. You'll grab the steak, put it here. Oh, my gosh. And then you'll just throw so this. this oh, oh, my. <laughs> Look at that. I'm with you. Come on, everybody. Who does got one so mouse watering in here. Good. Come on. Let's hold that. Let's call Come Uber Eats. We got to get that over there here. Now we got to go to home. JJ, Let's go. thank you so, so much. His food is fantastic, by the way. Everything thank you, everybody. Uh -huh. Appreciate you. And for you. the recipes, if you want it for yourself, you can just head to today.com slash food. And again, a formal apology. <laughs> for the no instant grits. <laughs> You're a mess. Uh, we are back with the third and fourth hours of today.
All right, we're back this morning on Today Food. One of our favorite chefs in the world is back, the great Eric Repair. His New York City restaurant, Le Bernardine, has recently named the best restaurant in the world. Wow. By the wow, Culinary wow, Guide wow. LA List. Let me say that again. It is the best <laughs> restaurant in the world. And next week, you're heading back, thank God, to Grand Cayman Island. They're going to do that again. Yes. It's so much fun, the return of the Cayman Cookout. It's a great food festival featuring some of the best chefs in the world. Mm. And in honor of our friend, Miss Shania Twain, being here, Eric's going to show us a little bit about how to make a delicious and easy vegetarian mushroom bolognese. So here we go. Uh, bonsoir, monsieur, mademoiselle. Parlez-vous français, Shania? Oui, je parle français. Wow. Ah, très, très bien. Bienvenue. Merci. Oh, bienvenue. <laughs> okay. Well, let's French. go back to English and cook. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's do it. I, so, <laughs> do you know what you're going uh, to there? For yeah, that really. recipe, we need to um, to slice a shallot. Mm -hmm. So shallots are round and they're very difficult to slice if you don't split them. And then with a very sharp knife, you go like that. Mm -hmm. And then you go this way. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part. Yeah. See, yeah. like that. <laughs> And again this way, and then you slice like this. I'm so glad I do. Oh. It's just a, an easy way to dice. Do you cook oh. a lot, Shine? Oh, yes. Yeah. You see, like that. How are your knife skills? My knife skills are pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, oh yeah. You have pretty a knife. Good. Wait, wait, no. <laughs> there you go. Help yourself. Uh, right. we, we are going to. Vous avez déjà fait, donc c'est bien. Anyway, we have a lot of shallots. We are going to start to uh, cook the shallots. Oh, in you're going to do it? Go for I'm it. Okay, it. don't cut yourself. Oh. We're going to start the uh, sweat the shallots that you have on your yeah. uh, table. And we're on a medium we heat. Yes, medium heat. We're gonna a little bit lower than a medium. And the yeah. garlic. Mm -hmm. And we're going to let it cook slowly. Wow. I would use a larger knife. That's the only uh, thing. Carson, I think you need a bit of improvement. Yes. Très bien, merci. Wow. Yeah, but it's That's okay. okay. Throw it in. Now, uh, say everything I know in French. It's like five words. <laughs> Random sentences. Yeah. We have some uh, bottom mushroom, yep. champignon de Paris in French. Oh, you're going to use the processor. Yes. Mm -hmm. We so, chef, whole mushrooms, yes, stems, and sure. everything. Stems. <laughs> I always Whoa. chop everything by hand. I'm, I'm not a gadget but person. It, it, we oh. have four minutes on the segment, so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. This is very, uh, very good reason. You're much more practical. Mushroom, oh, the mataki. It? These are my favorite mushrooms. What is I love them too. Mataki. 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 They're very meaty. They're very nice. Very mm. good flavor. So I'm going to put them very here. Good. Of course, we uh, cover, and then we're going to blend. Those things are Chef, is this, this is this idea. mayaki? Is this uh, readily available, like regular market? Yes, very Let's easy to find. That. Okay. For a bolognese, that oh, makes my, sense. You're gonna so get a meatier one. It yes. smells very steaky. Oh, it does smell yeah. steaky. Doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm. I'm it very, is very steaky. So good. Pureeing or just chopping? Over I'm, here? So with, with the pearls, it's yeah. chopping. It's not pureeing oh. because we want a bit of texture, right? Yeah. And you, you can see, I have the. Yeah. I'll show it to you, but I'll show it to the camera to everybody. Très bien, très bien. Then we're gonna put the mushroom on top of the shallots and the garlic. Joseph, calorie The garlic's not in there yet. You okay. gotta do the garlic. You have to do the garlic, you know, like that. Oh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get my Spanglish, and I'll go yeah. trois yeah. mas minutos. Yeah. <laughs> That's three more minutes yeah. in French yeah. slash exactly. Spanish. Exactly, and we're stirring up. So, why are we doing that? Cut. And we must we have wine. Tell me you're putting white wine in here. So we're putting actually red wine. Oh. Really? That has been reduced already. Because you want already. a brown, uh, yeah, yeah. The More of a brown sauce. There. Okay. Uh, you want to put them here? Which they, ones? They, these ones, they, of they course. They're already chopped, I yes? I just put my and garlic in there. So, so far, and very like easy, that. chef. Yeah, I mean, it's very we've easy. Got garlic, we're using we've got salt. Salt. Generously. Two different types of mushrooms. Some processed. Processed. Well, that was a lot of salt. Okay. Wine. Yes. The salt helps to release the, the water from the mushroom as well. Then. The red wine mm -hmm. goes with it. Oh, yeah, hold on a second. You, yeah, I, I, I would do that too. <laughs> it has always, well, if you remove it from the heat. No, yeah. By the way, <laughs> giddy up, Shania, giddy up. I know. Gotta, uh, well, well I'm going to say, I have a question for you. Yes. Okay, so normally, when I'm doing a roux like this, yes. I like to get the mushrooms before I put the wine in. I like to get them almost brown, everything a bit browner. And you are absolutely right. Thank you. But you do that in 20 because minutes. Because there's more flavor. <laughs> you do it after? It's oh, course, I always yeah. do it before yes. I put the wine, because then all everything at the, the bottom uh -huh. just comes up. The, the wine is reduced on the side. The mushroom cook, then you add your wine. That's already reduced? OK. Yes. It's yeah. The wine has been reduced. This now we're going to put the tomatoes, order, the tomatoes. But I'm learning, because you are the best chef. <laughs> well. So now I have to remember this, because then we're putting I'm obviously doing it wrong. You want to take a little, mine is little off. try the sauce? We've gonna... we only got a little bit left. I don't know if you want to try oh. it. I won't share a fork. Is that your no, fork? No, no, no. This is all you. 
Oh, I know better. So I'm and Catholic. Then, it's okay. Oh, we, we, we're mm. going to let it cook. Chef. Did you, did you know that mm. um, my wedding song was... Was it know. still the one yes. I've run? Oh, yes, was it from that this was morning? my wedding song. Oh, oh. oh so many songs. Oh, look at that. I know. My oh. wife's going to start to cry. Oh, oh my God, I see the picture. This all, recipe, uh, by the way, is oh. today.com slash view. That so it's so cooking. Uh, yeah. Huge yeah. thanks oh, to Chef Eric Repair. Schneider. Merci beaucoup. Avec plaisir. I'm finishing the plate. Huge thanks to Schneider. We have another minute. We're good. Let's keep going with the mushroom bolognese. We have our tasting table over here. just have to wait for the mushroom. Look at that. Empty plate. Billy, Billy. Yes. You don't even Mr. miss. Melvin? You don't even miss the beef, by the way. No, 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 you don't. No, you don't. It's very beautiful. meaty mushroom. Yeah, it's, that yeah. Mush it's good, that right? The chop. Delicious. I'm going Eric. to put them here for now. Tonight, you really this know is what good. you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You need a cooking I, show. You're holding your own there with Chef yeah. Eric Repair, the no, most famous chef in I, America. I definitely love to cook, and I'm experimenting all the time. Oh. Yeah. That's you nice, know, though. I just love it. It's one of my escapisms it's, again. You're going to go on a 49-city tour starting in Spokane, ending in the U.K. Will you cook at all on the tour? I will not. <laughs> on the tour. I'm on a very strict diet on the tour. Yeah. When yeah. I'm touring, I don't have... You know, yeah. uh, time okay. to really do all that. But well, chef, you know, cooking is for when I'm come at see home. You. Yeah, I cook you a meal. Home, so looking we love at you. Again, stay Great job, Shania. 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 Giddy up. Beautiful. Go get the song Giddy Up. The album drops on the third. We're back with the third hours after this. Shania, thank you. special edition of Today Food because our good friend Sama Dada is here. Do you remember when do you remember when Sama worked here yes. and then she made it big? Anyway, she's the author of Dada Dada Eats. I uh, love to cook it. Also, you guys know her from her streaming channel today all day. She's got a show it's called How to Eat Plants. It premieres today. Today's the day. Wait, should we show a sneak peek? Yeah, let's show, let's show it. Let's show it. I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. Ready? Ready? Cheers. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. It's the future of food. Good job. Did I do? Am I it's hired? Really hired. hired. This then, is crazy. Yeah. It's like the best floral arrangement I've ever seen in my life. Okay, here's the funny thing about Sama. Sama was putting chickpeas and brownies before everyone else was. Now everybody's doing it. Your season three of your show, when you actually kind of went outside the kitchen, you were exploring. Yeah, Hoda, this was literally my dream. You yeah. guys have followed me for so many years, and I just, I love you guys so much. And this season, I get to go outside of the kitchen. We explore really cool, innovative chefs, restaurants, companies that are changing the plant-based world. And it's just so cool to be able to see Were you surprised things. by some of the stuff you learned, like what they're using in instead of meat I products. was shocked yeah. Yeah. I was literally shocked actually speaking of being surprised I went to this factory in yeah. Boulder Colorado they are making meat out of mushroom roots and I actually That's brought some I is. got an exclusive first look inside their factory wow. so wow. Not, Wait, you guys should get an exclusive first taste oh. this is so, these are they're mushroom they're Wait, making, so you have the crispy chicken cutlet and oh. I want you to taste it wait the cutlet what's it made your... of it's made from mushrooms okay, it's made from okay mushroom try your chicken no. I, want to see. I just said to Dylan this tastes like chicken this is good 
Is it really? Crazy? Yeah, I have to taste it. Wow. I don't have it. But tell, <laughs> but is it really yummy? It's a crunchy. Yeah, Wait, this chicken is. is made out of mushrooms? Mushroom root. So these kinds of things, it's called meaty. It's amazing. Shocking. And I was so shocked by so many of the things in this show. And you guys know I love yeah. to make really healthy recipes, yeah. easy, minimal ingredients. Oh, minimal. So yeah. these kinds of things really shocked me. Well, let's, me. let's get to the tacos wow. because is the, what is the, okay, for now for the tacos, yeah. what is the main ingredient you're going to use since you're not going to use ground beef? Mushrooms. Mushrooms too. So, okay, let's yes, get started. This first episode of the show is all about mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I love mushrooms because they're really nice, hearty, meaty, okay. delicious meat replacement. So we've uh -huh. got our olive oil in here. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is really easy to make. I love making this for lunch, dinner. Stir? Yeah, you can actually, okay. yeah, I'm going to put you to work. Okay, so this Perfect. is just diced. So, um, yep, just diced uh, onions. onions. We've got some olive oil. Then we're going to go in with some garlic once that gets mm -hmm. nice and golden brown. Mm -hmm. You guys follow me on Instagram. You know I'm a spice girl. Yep. I love mm -hmm. my spice. How cute are you? So I've got okay. a little, you know, Dada taco seasoning vibe over here. Which we'll is add what? these in there. What are we've those? got some cayenne. We've got some garlic powder, cumin, coriander. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. what are, you're great at this. Mm -hmm. Once this cooks down, we're going to add some salt and pepper. We want those spices That's to be nice. a lot of nice. spice, huh? I love spice, Hoda. Okay. I'm not afraid of some spice. And okay. look, mushrooms are really nice and absorbent of a lot of flavor Got so it. that's why it's nice to add some spice it really gets all that flavor in there okay so you cooked it way they're down they're brown they're gorgeous now mm -hmm. here's how we achieve that meaty vibe right okay. we're just gonna cut our mushrooms we're gonna dice them really really finely kind of to achieve this ground meat texture now is this cooked okay. or not is this cooked yeah. yet no these yeah. are not cooked they're not just diced yet. really finely okay. so we're gonna add those in there what and then mushrooms are those? I missed that. portobello mushrooms oh really so those are really nice they and taste meaty. like steak anyway yeah, yeah so they've too. got that meaty texture what do you guys think do you like it i like it has a nice Spice yeah, it's a bit spicy. Yeah. So maybe too early for no, spice. No, no, I like it. Gives so it a little you, how, zing. how long do you cook this entire mixture you together? You want this to be really nice and golden brown. So 20 to 30 minutes. You can just leave minutes. it. Yeah, you want to keep it nice and golden. And then you can add your favorite accoutrements. You can okay. add some avocado, some lime, some lettuce, jalapeno. Um, all these. Here, let's yeah, see. yeah, yeah. Let me just take give a taste. This a go. And, and also try that chicken thing. Does she have? I don't. One? I don't have the oh, chicken. Here, you want to buy it? Try the chicken thing. Do you want to try it? I'm going to bring it over. What else are they making out of the mushrooms there besides them? Steak, just take steak, a steak, a chicken, they've got some new shots like like development. Uh -huh. All mushrooms. Yeah, all from mushroom roots. That Isn't cannot that be. Crazy? Isn't that crazy? Why? It's crazy? It's like a chicken nugget. No, there's no. This is what you can expect on the show. Wow. Oh my Wild God. stuff. Isn't that amazing? Mm, what kind of mushroom is yeah, that? Right? It's yeah. mushroom root. Oh. <laughs> it's like the root, it's called mycelium. It's like the root of the mushroom. Okay. Oh, really? I love Wild? it. And, okay, let me try the taco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a full taste. I love this segment. This is so fun. Come on. Samba, really are you good. excited to be like out on the road? And I'm do so all excited. This? It was such a dream to be able to actually see what other people are doing in this space. I've been doing this for so long. So it's just cool to explore and highlight really awesome innovators in the place. And people really are trying to go plant-based at least a couple times a week. Yeah, yeah exactly. Every day. Well, it's just an easy swap, you know? Sama, you're off and running. Thanks Congratulations so on season three. Thank you uh, so to much. find Sama's recipe, you can go to today.com slash food. Catch the premiere of How to Eat Plants <laughs> on our streaming channel today all day. Coming up, that's at 11 a.m. Thank you, Yay, Sama. Thank you, Sama. Thanks, guys. <laughs>
potatoes Midwestern gal. So that's what we're also serving it. with it. We are going to put these potatoes into a pot with cold water. And we want it to be oh. cold water so that it can come up slowly and come to a that's boil. That's a and tidbit I never heard. Evenly. Yeah. Cold good. water and bring it up. Yeah. Yes, okay. and we're adding a ton of salt here. Wow, that's a lot of it's salt. It's a lot of salt, but we want to flavor these from the outside. And similar to how when you're making pasta, you want to okay. salt that water yep. so you get that really good flavor. All right. Once they're nice and cooked, we're going to drain them. Take a mason jar, smash that down. For me, when I'm eating a potato, I want as crispy of a crust mm -hmm. and crunch yeah. on the you outside. You got to create more surface this area by smashing it down. That surface area, yes. We got about so, a minute and a half. I'm going to start oh, eating, Elena. Keep going. So <laughs> then we're going to hit it with some olive oil. We're going to pop these into the oven until they get nice and crispy. We're oh, also going to hit it with delicious. some pepper because yeah. these are cacio e pepe smashed oh. potatoes. Mm -hmm. so Will you we flip these at any pepper. time? Yes, you're going to flip them and you're going to hit them with some more. Parmesan. Oh. So we want to get that Parmesan over the top. We want it to get nice and crispy. Even more pepper on top, and that's mm. going to bloom as it heats up. It'll so be you, even more you, delicious. You baked that steak and you got it to an internal temp of what before you do this? We about want it 110 to be or about 125 ish because right. medium rare is going to be about 130. Okay. So 120 to 125. So this searing process is going to continue to cook it a little bit, but not too Absolutely. Much. So we're adding it into a super oh. hot Hello, pan baby. She's with talking a pad to me. of butter. Hello there. And then you're going to, what I like Ooh. to do is I like to tilt the pan, take that spoon, right and on. we are oh, butter yeah. basting. Oh, who this doesn't thing. like a good butter bath? Absolutely, <laughs> it's the best. So it's going to give it even more flavor. It's going to give it a really nice mm. sheen. You're it's only going to want to do it about a minute on each side. And guess what? You don't have to let this rest, which is even better. You can cut it no. right away because it's oh. already nice and tender. Mm. We're going to slice it, serve it with flaky sea salt. This is already better than everything we made last and week. We're gonna <laughs> and the week before. Elena, you're amazing. All right, Melba Wilson is an icon here in New York City, an icon. Her namesake restaurant in Harlem is there, and today she's making us one of her signature dishes. I mean, we are so excited because we're talking about BBQ, turkey meatloaf, and roasted garlic mashed potatoes. I can't. Potatoes. Nothing mm. says more comfort food than that. Turkey is so, so healthy, and I like using dark meat. And when you use dark meat, what you're going to do is you are going to get... A lot of flavor. Yeah. So wait, okay. when you say when you don't when you buy it in the store, do you choose or do you yeah. just oh, take yeah. what they have? No, you can choose. It's like the lighter meat. Oh, I didn't ever look. Definitely, okay. definitely. Good to know. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to dice up some what peppers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which so we love because you're kind of hiding all these veggies in you yeah. are, which is great, which is great. Dice them up. Okay. And dicing, what you do is you make little strips and then you yeah. put them on chop, the other chop. side, right? Okay. You guys know what to do, right? right? You guys Beautiful. know what to do. It. Yeah, we got it right here. And then we're going to take our dice. Um, Red peppers mm -hmm. and green peppers, and let's add them into our okay. ground turkey. Okay, want you to dump? You? Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to help. use this thing? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta got to that. Okay, we're mixing. Okay. And what are and we adding? We are adding some chicken base. Put that in there for me. What's chicken, chicken base? base? Oh, my God. So I like my turkey to have a robust, robust yeah. flavor. Yeah, So I put yeah. a little, a little base in there. What is chicken there. base, though? So it's, it's chicken stock. It's oh. concentrated. Oh, okay, concentrated. It. Right. Bouillon. Pepper. Bouillon, right. Bouillon. Bouillon, right. Some black pepper. Some salt. Salt. Okay. And guess what? what? Mint leaves. Come on, help me out here, girl. What yes. are you doing with mint? Girl, I want to put it in here. Just oh, so bad. But it's gonna That's give my... it. It's gonna give it a freshness. You know, okay. very, very herbal. Okay. And we have some onions. Okay. I'll wait till you dump them in. White, white, white onions. White, white onions. onions. Sometimes I use yellow. What's that? Panko? And Panko. these? No, these are Italian breadcrumbs. Oh, oh. Italian breadcrumbs. Put that in there. Okay. And eggs that have already been beaten. Okay. Okay. Let's mix if it up. Want, if you're trying, you know, if you're trying to stay away from the breadcrumbs, is there anything that can make it sticky without? It or not really. I mean, the eggs are gonna make it a little bit sticky as well, uh -huh. so so you should be I guess fine. You could use some almond flour, maybe. You mm. can use almond flour. Okay. How, you you know you can you can also use a little tapioca. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. And let's put Bar now sauce. Bring barbecue it, bring sauce. It. I made this. It? My well, you know. can buy it, but I made it myself. Of course you did. Buns. Of course I made it. But we're gonna leave a quarter of a cup on the side, and we're gonna use that okay, for glazing. Okay. So let's pretend that this it's is all beautiful. Good job, Hoda. Beautiful. Okay. So pretend great, that that's great job. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on a loaf, okay? And put it in the oven. Wait, for, can, how do we make the loaf? Here, just, like oh, this. So I'm, I'm a freeform girl. Okay, fine. Just I'm all about thing. the freeform. You don't put it in the pan or anything. Some people do. I like a yeah. freeform because I, I like to be a little more creative. Okay. 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 And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that in the oven. Yeah. For about 30, 45 minutes on 350. That's it. Good to Got go. Got it. Okay. Now, garlic mash. Oh Come my on, girl. God, roasted garlic. So I want you to take your head mm -hmm. of your garlic, cut about a quarter. 
about a quarter of an inch, right, mm -hmm. from the top. You mm -hmm. see that? Look what's there. You see that? We're going to oh, peel this. All the little babies. All the little babies. They stay like that and you stay. cook it. Just like this. Drizzle some. Yes. Come on. Yes, Put some olive oil uh -huh. on top of that. Mm hmm Oh, oh beautiful, beautiful. We're going to wrap this up into the foil. How many do you need? A couple? Well, you know what? I like to make enough for the month. I also sometimes put them in the oven pans, like in the muffin pans, and put them in the oven that way. Because the thing about it, you can put it in an airtight container, put a little olive oil on it, and keep it in the fridge for like a month. You so whenever you need it roasted every... garlic, okay. it's there. So these okay. are, do you use Yukon Gold? Oh, Yukon Gold. Yukon Gold, you have to. Buttery. Buttery. Lots so what of are we flavor. putting in here? So now we're going to put some butter, because everything is butter. With the, what? And you, butter. Butter. And you leave the skin on? I do. You know, my grandmother said all the nutrients are in the Look, skin. Look, skin on. Okay, skin on. If Hold you, on, let her make these, babies. Okay. Come here. Come here. Come and, here. Wait. Come here. Come here. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to put our roasted garlic in there. Look at that. And we're going to put a Come little on. white pepper. Pour it. And you know what? If you had a rough day, Hunter, yeah. you can also Jeez. take a lot of that stress out, Jeez. okay? So can By I mashing them. What's the liquid that and you're going to put in? Oh. Here we oh. go. Heavy Voila. cream. Oh, heavy cream. Oh, girl. Oh, beautiful. Yes. yes. Look at that. Okay, so you more shit. Gorgeous, gorgeous, I'm gorgeous. Sorry, it's gorgeous. So rude that I just no, no you have that's to. quite all right. Okay, and we're gonna take that. Equation. So we're gonna take that extra oh little bit, and we're just yummy? gonna drizzle it so, right on the top. This is my perfect meal. Just Let's drizzle see. it right see. on the top. And this is comfort food at its oh best. <laughs> Chef Gabby Dalkin is making one spectacular side. First, we're gonna make potato gratin, which everybody obviously loves, and then the famous Dalkin Christmas mix, which is so good. Okay, let's talk gratins. Everybody loves them. We order them every time we go out for dinner. They're incredible and very easy to make at home. First things first, let's talk potatoes. So I'm using Yukon Gold potatoes. You can use russet if you want. Either way, it's great, just peel the russet if you're gonna do it. You wanna slice them. So whether that's on a mandolin, a little food processor, just like that. You wanna get them to an eighth of an inch thick. You could also do them by hand, whatever floats your boat. Once they are sliced, we're just going to layer them into a baking dish. And we just want them, I mean, it can be kind of willy-nilly, organic. It doesn't have to be perfectly layered in there. Just like make sure there's tons of potatoes. And then we're gonna get some heavy cream. So I have some heavy cream that's just been simmering on my stove and this is where the flavor is gonna come in. So we're gonna add some shredded Parmesan, we're gonna add some shredded Gruyere, the more the merrier, and then a little bit of marscapone cheese or creme fraiche, whoops! <laughs> and then just take a spoon, stir that all together, and you can season this up however you want. So if you wanna make it kind of cacio y pepe-y, you can add some salt and a little bit of fresh pepper that I already have in there. You could add a little thyme, you could add a little basil. If you have, like oddly, just are someone who caramelizes onions on the regular, Stir in some caramelized onions to this. It is delicious. Once that cheese is melted, you're just gonna stir it all through. Get it nice and infused and smooth. We are just going to pour this right over the potatoes and it's probably gonna come up right to the top. That's exactly what we want because when it bakes, this liquid is gonna help cook all the potatoes. I mean, this looks insane. 
doing this. Okay. So once that's on there, we're gonna top it with a little bit more Gruyere cheese and just pop it into the oven 400 degrees for about 45 to 55 minutes. Once it's done, you should be able to take a knife and pierce it. It's gonna look just like this and it's gonna be really like easy to pierce with a knife, kind of like a baking test. Take your spoon, I mean, you gotta try it. There's nothing like a potato gratin early in the morning, right? Mm. Oh my God. Yep. I did caramelized onions on that one. Next level. Okay, let's talk sweet really quickly. So the Dalkin Christmas mix has been a tradition in our family for truly since I was born 30 some odd years ago. I, I actually don't know how old I am right now. 35. It is any of your favorite unflavored cereals. And then you're just gonna melt some white chocolate. You can do it in a double boiler. If you do it in a microwave, do it in like 15 second increments. And that way it doesn't like seize up or anything. Stir it in between. You're gonna take that and put it all over your cereal, toss it together. And then last thing you do is just add some Christmas colored M&Ms or whatever else you want. Let it chill on the counter on like a piece of wax paper or parchment until it solidifies. Once it solidifies, you can bag it up, you can gift it to your neighbors, you can serve it for dinner, you can serve it for dessert. I'm partial to eating it for breakfast, it is cereal. And it is so freaking good. Our buddy, our pal, Chef Ryan Scott. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Here's the beef short ribs, you guys, that I got from wow. my butcher. There is nothing more important that we can support a local butcher during these times. Mm -hmm. This is called a three or four rib. This is a delicious cut of meat that can go long and slow. And the great thing about this, Hoda and Jenna, the longer this sits, you can brace it the day before, the better it gets. Okay. So what I did was took these sh short ribs. I already seared them off and got them super duper 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 golden like I have here. I did that in the same pan. It's all about building flavor. You can roast the rib, roast the vegetables. So what we have here now is you're just gonna go ahead and saute these guys off. And inside here, Hoda and Jenna, I have carrots, Yum. celery, mm. onions, you name it. And this is where we're gonna develop flavor. Once this is roasted in the pan for three, four minutes, mm -hmm. you're gonna take some tomato paste, ladies. Okay, straight out of the can. And you're gonna add that tomato paste and it goes mm -hmm. right in. And this is where we really start to build the fawn. Mm -hmm. Are you guys all there? We're yes, there, we're, we're there listening. and we're in. We're, we're totally with you. All right, I just wanna make sure. Yeah, I've been doing demos for years and years, so when people are quiet, that's a really good thing. Yeah, sometimes. we're just we're <laughs> just thinking about that. Soaking bowl. it all in. Mm -hmm. All right. So what you do is now that the tomato paste has been caramelized in here, we're gonna take a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of dry yeah. thyme, anything. I know it's sweater sweater weather on the <laughs> East Coast right now with all yes, the uh, snow. So anything, dry parsley, dry thyme, rosemary, bay leaf. And Hoda and Jenna, mm. after all these years, girls, I know one thing mm -hmm. that's a staple in the house that we all have. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> wow, Lots that's a hefty pour. Mm. Girl, I'm eating this, not my kids. <laughs> it is all good. This has got to get me through the next couple of days. <laughs> so you add just a little bit of beef stock. This can be vegetable stock. Mm -hmm. This can be chicken stock. Don't go shopping. Use what you have at home. And what we do, ladies, is these ribs go back inside. You put a lid on it. This can go in an oven. Great thing about it, set it inside an oven for two and a half, three hours. Two and a half when for they three come out, hours? How does it come out? Let's yes, see. That, ooh, ooh, so low, ooh. low, oh, come on Wait, side look camera. Up look at that, that beef. Mm, uh -huh. Now what? All right. Now you have to do the perfect mashed potatoes. And it's just not Thanksgiving and mm. Christmas that's mashed potato no. time. Yum. I've got the perfect trick. So here we go. Russet potatoes, the one that we all know, you peel, you dice it, you put it with cold water. Hold on, Jenna. Cold Start water. with cold water always. You never want to do oh. hot water because what the hot water does is it cooks the outside of the potato too fast. And then you have, how many people have lumpy mashed potatoes during the holiday Us. season? Yeah. We, we admit. Us. So if you start with cold water, bring that cold water up, it cooks the potato all the way through. Then what I do, mm. and your producer is telling me that she loves this trick. Mm. Here's what, it, here's the deal. The potatoes come out. And once they're done cooking, I let them sit in this pan and steam. This is drained from the water, ladies. And what you do What's that? is you add Clean melted butter and butter. hot milk over the top. Oof. This is super milk. diet friendly, great Ooh. for everybody working out See, in butter, February, right? Butter, then so, mash it up yes. in there. Butter. Then all you do is you just mash this up. Right in and the great thing so about satisfying. this is- Look at that. So, oh, right? God. 
Who needs a workout when you I just, just look at the biceps, mash. girls? Yeah, we see your guns. Yes. Say it again, Jen. I need a t-shirt that like says that. I just like watching you mash. Wow. <laughs> that went to a whole other level. So here we go. Mashed potatoes come out, ladies. Look at these. Now what? Silky, gorgeous, beautiful, nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spoon here. Yes. And nothing better on oh. the East Coast and the West Coast. God. We oh. just want to right, sleep in that fluffy cushion. Here, here, Jenna, use this as a pillow. Here's I'm, your pillow I'd of like love. To. Oh, I'd yum. like to. Okay, Ooh. now put that rib on there. Okay, Mama. <laughs> Sarah, I'm going to put the rib on here. All right, Hoda, say that so I can make a shirt that saying that. Hoda loves, <laughs> oh. Hoda loves a rib. Oh. Is there any sauce for those potatoes? Yeah, just like, what do you oh, do? Yeah, okay. Do you put the sauce? Where do you get All the right. sauce from? You know what? Just just for Hoda, oh. I'm going to oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We don't need Perfect. the vegetables. Oh, Leave the vegetables for perfect. the kids. Perfect. <laughs> Okay. Oh look, my God, girls. I want it. I I love love. This is uh, not, oh, why, yeah. why are you doing Can that? you send us some it's next time? Fair. We need some comfort food, please. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Ryan. <laughs>Last minute dishes that you can add to that Thanksgiving table that will absolutely steal the show, folks. Yeah. Here to help us, Skylar Bouchard, food blogger, creator of Dining with Skylar. Good to have you back. Hi. Good morning. So happy. Good morning. Are you ready to eat? Yes. 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 And it takes a lot to dress up a potato, but you've done it well. You have. Uh, you know, it's simple. So we have two last minute sides, really simple but restaurant quality. We're going to start with Cacio e Pepe roasted potatoes. That's and you, why it's so good. Yes. Cacio e Pepe Cheese, oh, pepper. Potato. We're adding green. Oh, not traditional, but right. we're going to get right into it. Okay. You are my seasoning squad, so when okay. I say olive oil, salt, pepper, you're going to throw that on there. Done. First step here, we're going to just slice our baby potatoes. Okay. Any potato works here. You're just going to like pinch them like this mm. and slice right down the middle. I just and like then because seasoning. they're tiny. Yes. Seasoning. I know, tiny, and you, you just cut them in half. Yep. So olive oil, salt, and pepper. Squad, Go. let's get it together. Mm. Craig, Sorry, Jill. we're eating already. <laughs> okay, tell me. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. Olive oil, salt, pepper. How much salt? Like, I never know. You know, you just, I would say yeah, like, like that. count to one. Okay. And that's good. Yeah. One. one. And a nice moment. Okay. And then I'm going to add some pecorino. Oh. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Pepper? Pepper. Stop. This is legit. Yeah, I told you. Yeah. So I'm Wait so a minute, excited she for has you to explain it. it to people at home. So we're going to flip them over, uh, oh. side down like that, and then okay. roast them. They're going to get crispy. Down. How long? Um, about 30 minutes at 475. Oh, I mean 425. 425. 425. 425. All right, so on a burner, um, Chanel, why don't you add okay. some Pecorino Romano here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got one and a half cups. You just dump the whole thing. Oh, dump, dump the whole thing? Dump the whole thing. We are oh, getting yeah. cheesy this and is, breezy over here. And happy Thanksgiving. We have some heavy cream as well. Jill, if you want to actually, Whisk this okay. until it melts. Okay, Craig's almost Perfect. finished. So <laughs> I 
So I'm going to add some pepper here. So cacio e pepe literally okay. means cheese and pepper. Oh and I'm just God. adding that to taste. It should get nice and aromatic. Oh my God. We're going to mix that until it's silky. I love when you say, oh my God, it makes I me mean, so happy. I feel like you could dip a shoe in this and it would I, be delicious. I know. Right? I, dr I did drink it a few times. It's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. And then. And look at the presentation. I like so this. It's so easy. So yeah. a rule of thumb here, if you're making something crispy, you want to put it on your sauce. I literally, I, t I kid you not, I just dump it right on okay. and want to add some pepper. Because you say you don't cook. I'm going to get you cooking. Let's okay. add some pepper right oh on top God. here. Scott, just yeah. it right on there. Yay! I'm well, so glad you like it. There. What are you doing? I just, I just, are you eating I just raw need... potato? Oh. No, no. I was just <laughs> need to be by myself. Right <laughs> it's, uh, it's okay. I understand. Right. This, this is a meal enjoyed phenomenal. in solitude and with friends. And really and truly, the, the sauce, you could use it for so many other things, too. I know. And you can make it ahead. Oh, my God. And I just, I do like the potatoes, you know, cooked okay. in the moment. but. Either way, that, that's, so that's our like potatoes. Decadence. Now, this is a side or a dish? A side. It's, it's like, and you really, Two it's so rich, you only need a little bit. It's really good. So we're going to move right. on to our uh, harvest salad with a crispy mm. quinoa, you guys. So this is mm. lighter. Seasoning squad, get in here. Okay. I've got some olive oil eating. that I'm putting turn, on, Craig. delicata we'll squash, butternut squash, carrots, and uh, what did I miss? Sweet potato. So just a, whatever so you can find yummy, at the okay. store. Okay. Yep. And I'm going to switch spots with you, Craig, okay. here. Um, we actually have some quinoa, which I oh, This cook. is very interesting. I've never seen this before. Yeah, it's so much fun. Actually, I'm going to switch with you again. And okay. you say you can do this with any grain? <laughs> any grain. So you fully cook the grain, and you just put it on a sheet pan. You can do this with farro, with rice. So make it's fully crispy cooked. rice. Yes, fully cooked. Okay. And then because our delicata squash had seeds, okay. we're using them, right? We no don't way. want it to go to waste. Yes, okay. it's going to add some nice crunch. Toss it up on your sheet pan okay. like that. You know, we, we want it to be like evenly coated. Okay. Seasoning squad, get on in here. Jill, okay. you now, everyone. Okay. <laughs> you got okay, it. Okay, tell me. Olive oil, salt, and pepper, easy like that. How much or just that one? Does, all, yeah, you don't want it to be. That's great. Like Scott, this. I like the competing textures. Bit. Yeah, right. Wait, you I need a little. Oh, I like if that. we're going veggie, we want to add some pizzazz. Okay. Okay, so we're going to we have you add here? some apple cider vinegar. We're making our um, Dijon vinaigrette and maple syrup. And then we're just gonna whisk it together. This is gonna be our maple Dijon vinaigrette. Oh my god! And you can just shake this in a jar. You don't have to get all fancy with the emulsifying. And how long can you keep that? Because that looks yummy. You can like, keep can this for up to two weeks. You can make it two weeks ahead. So okay. you can do all of this ahead of time. But on game day, right before serving, yeah. okay. we're gonna combine it. We're gonna add some crispy quinoa, oh, our yeah. pumpkin right. seeds, our shallots, yes. some feta, yes. and. Parsley with our vinaigrette. I'm so happy you love Honestly, it. Honestly, this would be vegetables. a hit nice at any Thanksgiving because so it's different. Do you know what I mean? It's different, right? And you, you get okay? that like root vegetable yeah, I was side. Yeah, I ate Did too the much. Did the quinoa? The quinoa <laughs> hits. <laughs> this is, and it's got a little crunch in there too. Oh, this yeah. is amazing. This is it amazing? has like a crouton in every bite. <laughs> Welcome back. It is Make Ahead Monday. We're talking taters. Mm. Here with her mashup on the classic mashed potato is Chef Kristen Kish from True TV's Fast Foodies. Hey, Kristen. Hi, good morning. How are you? We good. are doing great. Hope you are, too. So, so on Fast Foodies, you recreate iconic fast food meals. And, of course, potatoes usually a key player. And you're going to help us mash them. What, what potato do you like 
for this recipe? That is a perfect question. So for me, I do like a mix of like 50-50 russet to Yukon. So you have the starch, you have the waxiness. I love the texture. Um, and so you kind of can work it and it will never really overwork into kind of turning into glue. So it's a nice little cheat. That sounds good. And then you add a special ingredient, if you will, cream cheese. What does that add I, to the dish? I love cream cheese on anything. You could put cream cheese on my breakfast waffle and I'll be very happy. So I love cream cheese. Uh -huh. uh, if you don't like cream cheese, leave it out. Otherwise, you know, uh, sour cream, buttermilk, anything with a tang, I feel like it's really interesting and, and mashed potatoes that are quite rich. Yeah. So how do we make this? So we're going to take our basic mashed potatoes. If you want to use box mashed potatoes, if you want to use fresh and then you turn it into something else, that's totally fine. But um, my classic mashed potatoes, I add a little bit of corn, a little, a lot of bit of cheese, actually. Um, <laughs> we add some fresh thyme, some fresh rosemary, caramelized onions, hmm. garlic powder, onion powder, and flour. So I kind of took the idea of what I love most about fried chicken and those flavors, oh. onion, garlic, thyme and threw it all into mashed potatoes. And then I added the corn because for this particular challenge that we were doing on Fast Foodies, it was all about a bucket of fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and corn. So you kind of mix that all up together. Um, and the best thing about it being Make Ahead Monday is the fact that you can make these ahead. So I take these little pucks, I form them, throw them in the freezer, and it's basically you know no different than pulling out a frozen bag of tater tots. So when you're ready to eat them, you just kind of can throw them in the fryer. Um, and the three-step breading process we like to do is, so you take your mix and we use flour, egg, and panko. So mm. you can really form them into whatever shape you want. So the idea is you kind of drop it in the flour and the flour allows is the egg to stick. Is there seasoning in the flour? Exactly. So all seasoning, salt and pepper in all three okay. areas. So you're okay. seasoning as you go. So, you're, so you're once you bread this. it, uh, it's kind of the flour is there to help the egg stick and then the egg is there to help the panko stick. So you could keep double dredging back and forth if you wanted to like a really thick crust. And then from there you end up with basically like these beautiful little oh, breaded croquettes. Yeah. So not only Yum. can you freeze them this way, you can freeze them with the breading already on them. And then I know a lot of people are scared to fry at home. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't have to be that scary. So long as your oil never reaches like the smoking point, 350 right. is that sweet spot. It's perfect. And if, you know, you don't want to deep fry here, the air fryer is quite popular. These what days. kind of oil do that. you use? Uh, I use grapeseed oil. So grapeseed oil oh. has a higher smoking point. Mm. So you don't want to use something like olive oil. It'll burn. And when oil burns, they, it, you know, it kind of becomes a little bit bitter and rancid. Mm -hmm. So grapeseed oil or vegetable oil, corn oil, whatever you prefer. Kristen, you said something earlier that I thought was kind of interesting. You said you can overwork the potato so that it gets tough. Mm -hmm. So when you over, just similar to how you overwork anything with a flour, like cakes and beautiful, delicate pastries, a potato can overwork itself into basically wallpaper paste, mm. for lack of a better term. And so if you, you know, if you want to throw your potatoes into a blender and try to make potato puree that way, I would recommend not doing that. You're going to end up with um, a glue stick. If tacos can totally fall apart and still be amazing, so can you, Bestie. <laughs> All right. I love it. All right. Words to live by. <laughs> this morning in Today Food, we are getting a delicious meal with a side of inspiration and humor. Plant-based cook and content creator Roddy Devlukia Shetty is here, and we are making tacos. Roddy, good morning. Good morning. Yay. Yay. Thanks for having me. I did my love fest during the commercial break so that I could I be normal yeah. during the segment. Yeah, so, so we're going to be normal now. Time, so she... I really admire you. Thank Whenever you. I'm having a crappy day, you talk about health and wellness. You've really been you're using so... that yeah. I know, I use it twice today, and I'm using the word crappy. A lot. But you're just, you're such a light, Thank and you. it just jumps off of your social media. I really appreciate that. And that I didn't so realize, much. I knew you were cooking, but I didn't realize that was how you started. Yeah, that's how I started everything. So let's get started on, yeah. so, but we're so, using cauliflower in tacos. And we are. Cauliflower can be difficult to cut. How would you? It can. So we're going to start off, honestly, I usually just... Throw it, throw it back and cut off all the green part. Okay. I'm going to chop that boom, off. Boom, it's gone. It gets a bit messy, but it does. You drop cooking it all over is the never floor. clean, okay? 
if, it, if it's clean, you're not doing it right. Um, <laughs> I usually just chop it off off the stalk, uh -huh. and that's it. Chop it okay. up into small florets. You can also buy them as florets as but well, it, like this. this is cheaper. Yes, yes, this is much cheaper. Much cheaper. Uh, okay, and you have a lot of seasonings We are, here. so we're going to actually marinate it with different spices um, and also chickpea flour. It's a good egg substitute. So really? I, yeah, it's a great egg substitute. It okay. keeps it really That's thick. chickpea flour. This is chickpea flour. Okay. So I've got vegan yogurt in here, but you can use any kind of yogurt that you have at home. Throw in your chickpea flour. Mm -hmm. We've also got some tomato paste. And what's your goal? Because there are a lot of us, I'm not a vegan, but I'm trying to eat healthier, and I'll see that you're doing it. So I'm like, okay, let me try it. <laughs> are you trying to help us kind of step into something a little healthier? Healthier, or what's I, your thought? My honest, my honest like desire is to help people figure out how to use spices to make plant-based food taste great. Because mm. a lot of the time, the issue is we don't use enough flavor in right, food. Right. And so when you use spices, everything can be so delicious. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we've got garam masala, we've got smoked paprika, and we've got turmeric. So we're I think the other thing that's important that is to let people know what it is. Like they always say, oh, it's such and such that it tastes like. No, it's right. cauliflower. Yeah, yeah. It and it's great. good. Exactly. And yeah. in this recipe with this marinade, you can also use tofu, you can use jackfruit. I mm -hmm. use this marinade for so much. Uh, we've also got some oil that's going in here. What kind of oil? Um, well, I use avocado oil when I'm cooking, but you can use olive oil or okay. sunflower oil okay. too. So we're going to mix that up, throw in some milk. I'm so curious to taste this. I yeah. Can't wait. I'm excited for you guys What kind of milk do you it? use um, to keep it vegan? I use almond milk. Okay. Um, I find, I, I prefer that, but you can use oat milk as well. It's a little bit thicker. Okay. So you're going to mix that up. Right. And then we're going to take these colors. Just like marinate bread. that up. We're going to marinate up. So I how long are you going to keep that in there? In I honestly don't keep it in for long. The spices are quite um, vibrant. And so mm -hmm. I usually just mix it up in that. You take it. I usually use my hands. Love <laughs> hand cooking, but I'm not going to do it right what now. What is that? And just breadcrumbs. Um, breadcrumb it up. And then you're going to put it onto oh. your oiled tray. Mm -hmm. OK. And that. then while this goes in the oven, we're making a slaw. Now, fennel is a great spring vegetable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't seen one before, it looks like this. Right. Do you do anything with the top? I do. You okay. can cut them off, and you can use them in your soups. You can use them in your stock. You can freeze them and keep them for later. Mm -hmm. But this is also great for garnish, and it tastes amazing. OK. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to just slice this up. So I usually just chop off the bottom. Do you, how often are you cooking now? People should know you're married to Jay Shetty. You guys are I am. a power <laughs> couple, rock star couple. Are you guys we cooking? We should say Jay Shetty's married to you. Yeah, oh, there yeah, you go. Know, there right? you go. You guys are together, beautiful couple. Do you have time to cook together? I do. And well, do I, you guys, you know what I mean? Because you guys are both so busy. He's not a cook, and I prefer he stays <laughs> out of the kitchen, if I'm completely honest. Um, I usually try and do a lot of meal prep in the morning, so I'll usually mm. do a lot of my chopping and everything in the morning. Okay. Oh. So then I can have it all ready for, for the plus. evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to chop up, shred it up if you've got a shredder or a mandolin okay. and then we've got our slaw I've got cabbage mm -hmm. carrots and uh, the delicious fennel in here and is there a dressing for there that? is a dressing so mm. what we've got here is it's an apple cider vinegar mm. mustard agave go and you can pour it all in you've got your olive oil mustard agave and apple cider vinegar it's zesty okay. it's really refreshing salt pepper perfect mix it all up and then we're going to throw that into this. So yummy dressing. Like, I could put that on. You can put that so on. That goes on that. That goes on this, yes. And then what's in this one? Oh, this, I feel like the sauces bring this all honestly, to life. Honestly, everything is about sauces and spices yes. for me. I love that. So Good. this is a yogurt and mint sauce. So we've got yogurt and then there's a zesty mint. We're going to drizzle that on top. OK. I, you know what? Yummy. You, you are a pro in the kitchen. Well. Al is definitely <laughs> oh a pro. Oh, my goodness. I love and this. Dylan. They both I should, are. I should just leave, really. And then you're putting this on, this? on some naan? Yes. Yeah, so we're putting it. You can use a wrap. You can use lettuce wraps as well. Mm -hmm. But I traditionally use it on a naan. Go on. So good. Mm. This is fantastic. Take a you know what? It tastes fresh and yummy. Right. Oh my god. Isn't that good? Yay. Um, so Yum. yeah, then you're just mm. going to throw it on here and drizzle this on top and that's your oh, tikka taco. That's fantastic. Mission Yay. accomplished. Well, Wadi, thank There's you so, so much. There's just so many flavors and they all come together so nicely. Yes. For really these recipes really. and mm. more, you can check out today.com slash food. We are dusting off the air fryer. We're whipping up a super simple restaurant style bowl that you can make in a pinch. And here to show us how it's done is Chef Kevin Curry, author and founder of Fit Cook Meals. Kevin. What's going on? So I love this because it's delicious, but it's low carb yes. and it's yummy. And we're starting Absolutely. with a cauliflower rice. Cauliflower rice. Okay. It's super easy to make. So you can right. actually buy rice in the store, but if you want to save yourself about five or six bucks, just do this at home. Yum. All you chop can do it. is chop it up mm -hmm. and break off the leaves and also the cauliflower. The cauliflower. Yeah. Florets, and then we're going to add these to a food processor. That's it. Now this is part is super easy. This is also a kid friendly thing to do together mm -hmm. with the family. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to pulse blend it. Okay. Yep. There we go. And just just like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
boom. Okay, so when it's done, it this looks is the just texture. like this. Now, okay. it's really hard right now. You taste it? Yeah. It's yeah. like really crunchy. Uh -huh. Kids aren't going to like that. So we're going to steam it. You're going to add a steamer basket to a oh. pot of water Smart. and then put it on here. Steam this for 10 to 15 minutes. Boom, it comes out literally That's soft. That's it? Just like rice. That's Th easy. Doesn't it, it taste kind of like? Texture is exactly like rice. See, yep. It's good. My kids will not eat vegetables. Yeah. This is good. That's and there's no brilliant. bite on cauliflower that, you know, either. Okay. All right, next is the bang bang sauce. So this is an bang bang. Bang bang. Y'all ready? Hey, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll wait for someone to do that. So this is some olive oil mayo. Okay. We're going to add in some Greek yogurt. Yogurt. This and is non fat or what is it? Regular this fat? Is full 2%. fat? 2%. 2%. Okay. 2% tastes much better than the non fat. Yeah. And as much sugar in What's there. What's that? This is Tabasco? No. Sriracha. 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 Sriracha sauce. If you don't like too much heat, it's okay. And then some garlic. Garlic. And, and then honey. honey. I love honey. And then mix that together. Look at that. Look at that. Super nice. And Dump a it good in. combo of okay. sweet and spicy. And then now, hot peppers. And hot peppers. If you want some heat, yeah. stir it all Okay, up. so this is just what you're going to dunk the shrimp in. Yes, absolutely. Okay. This is the dipping sauce for it. Okay. And now for the personality of this dish, this is going to be the shrimp. Look at you. I just want to make sure I get it right. Get it, it, get looks, it right. This is this, camera. The dipping part is very important. Right. Right. Absolutely. Okay, so here's my thing about shrimp that's breaded, because I wanted a low carb shrimp. But right. when you buy the the shrimp in the store, that's like coconut shrimp or whatever, it's it like it's got a lot. So how it's do got you, a lot. Yeah. So this is so first off, this is going to be an eggless recipe. This is oh. garlic, onion, smoked paprika, and arrowroot. Arrowroot is going to be our key here. Arrowroot Plain. makes it really sticky. Also in medicine, also arrowroot is good for gastro problems. Okay. So if you've got a little bit of you know what you know kind of digestion uh -huh, issues, uh -huh. it's perfect for that. And arrowroot just makes this super <laughs> sticky. Once you do this, so, so I'm gonna get my hands dirty for <laughs> you. This I know. This is. <laughs> You're solving all kinds of problems, yeah. Kevin. I'm learning a lot. Yes. Yeah. So, Maybe so too wait. Much. Can I ask? You oh, left yes. the tails on, but you took out that vein yes. in the back. De please peel you and get the vein. Yeah, I know, get that tails and shrimp. vein. I know. What's important? <laughs> I wasn't about sometimes you don't know. Okay. All right. So now, now so once we do this, this, this is corn flakes. No, yeah. Plain old corn flakes. Plain old corn flakes, and they can be gluten free too. So crunch these up. Oh yeah. And the cool thing about corn flakes is that cornflakes stand up to liquid, right? Mm -hmm. Because you put them in milk. So yeah. whatever you're coating it, it won't get soggy. Mm. Okay. So then you're going to mash these into the shrimp just like this. Just mash them up. Okay. This is why kids love this type of recipe. Yeah, it's yeah, really easy fun. for them to do. So you get a lot mash on there. It, boom. Look at that. Look at add that. it. This air fryer is the most brilliant invention it isn't it? of all How time. How do it know? Put it into the basket of the air fryer. You don't even put anything on the bottom. Yeah. You just yes. plop it out. He's got strong thoughts about the air fryer. I know. Oh, yeah. 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 Strong views. Oh. But how does it work? Uncle it, Al, you don't like it? Here's the thing. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> who wants to use it, go with God. I'm yeah. happy But for why are you just using it? I one more thing on my counter. It's super easy. But yeah. the end product, I mean, you liked it. The it's end product well. is great. Well, it's so you know, it you know what's really good about crispy. it, though? Yeah. Because when you preheat your oven to 425, it takes forever. Yep. This thing, you go, boom, boom. 425. See? And then it's half the cooking and, and time. Everybody knows I don't have much time left. <laughs> oh, stop oh, it. Absolutely now. that. Oh, yours is Look so at much mine. better. Look, Look at that. that. Look at okay, that. Okay, now you place them in. And then how long do you cook them this in the air fryer? Five to seven minutes. That's wow. Five to seven minutes. minutes. Two. I'm telling you. And then all of a sudden, what do you, you got? Get your beautiful bowl <gasps> with your cauliflower rice with with some slaw. That's gorgeous. The and the slaw is terrific. How is I love the slaw. What do you put on the slaw? Mm. Um, it's just a store bought slaw that you can just buy. Wow. All right. Can you dunk it in the aioli? And how is that? Yummy. The spicy. Bang bang. Bang, bang, bang. bang. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Great job.
Christina. Good morning. Good morning, my friends. Uh -huh. It's so great we to love see you. When you're here, because you always make something so delicious. good. Thank you. It's spooky season, so we got to keep it spooky. Um, we are making really <laughs> delicious forbidden rice bowls. Um, so we start off with this gorgeous purple forbidden rice. Um, this has tons of antioxidants in it. You're going to bring your water up to a boil. You will pour that rice in, cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes, mm -hmm. and then we're bringing in some sweet potatoes. So this recipe mm -hmm. is great because it's vegetarian. If you want, you could also make it vegan by substituting the crema, which we'll get to, mm -hmm. with some coconut yogurt okay. instead. Ooh. We are seasoning this with some salt, and then I made a little spice blend, some Ooh. cumin, paprika, chili powder, um, a little garlic powder as well. We give this a nice toss. Jacob, would you like to toss this? Oh, this is, this is vegetarian. Thing. Thing. Let's do it. Yes. Yes. Oh, You've been, that's revealed for the first time on the show. I'm oh, always faking it, guys. Faking it with the meat. I love it. And then <laughs> next up, we are creating a little dressing to go with our rice because we want to add as much flavor as we can. So we've got lime juice, olive oil. So We're going to add in some lime zest. You're going to want the zest of the entire lime. I, I, I would, I would like you. if you did. You so and make sure you stop when it turns really light green because that part is bitter, the pith. Oh, okay. okay. So the we are pith. adding in, wow. yes, the pith. We are new. adding in the. Um, white parts of scallions. What's wow. going to happen is to make them a little more mellowed out. That lime juice is allowing that to happen. We have some cilantro that we're adding in here. Mm. Some very finely so, diced so seeded jalapenos. Okay. So it's just mm. a little bit of heat, not too much. And then we've got garlic powder and of course a little salt. Mm -hmm. yeah. stir it up. And stir it on up. You got it. So that's Yum. the dressing. This is the dressing. So oh once this is all goodness. done, you're going to take that rice, you're going to add it in there, toss it together, you it. and you have this delicious flavored rice. Mm. We are going to decorate our flavored Ooh. rice with a little bit of black beans mm -hmm. that have been warmed up on that sheet tray after yeah. we've roasted the sweet potatoes, okay. and some, some of our sweet potatoes, some avocado, and a nice healthy drizzle of, this is the crema, it's salsa verde and sour cream, equal parts oh. mixed together. Okay. Yum. And you will Drizzle Delicious. that on top. I'll that is our sweet that, yeah. potato bowl. I love that. Next up, if you want to All have a fun little, yeah, yeah, where, has, where are you? <laughs> yeah, it's it's over here. And yeah. next up, if you want to have a fun little appetizer for okay. Halloween, I am a huge fan of buffalo wings. Yes. yes. My husband and I actually have a framed photograph of buffalo wings <laughs> above our bedroom, <laughs> giant one. Wow. Um, that's, that's, yeah, we went. You know Chanel? Lot. Did you yes. ever go to Buff Joe's in Are you kidding? That's where we used to date. So that's that's where we dated. Oh, that's right. Her husband also. Okay. Yes. Exactly. You have a picture above your bed. So we are. Making our homemade buffalo sauce. So okay. we've got, I'm sorry, you guys. It's, all it's just keeping today. it real. We're oh, really yeah. giving you all the info. We've got um, the butter that is melted. Buffalo sauce is just mm. butter and hot sauce mixed together okay. with a little bit of garlic powder. So okay. we mix all that together, whisk it up so it's nice and emulsified, and That's then this. we take our finished sauce and toss it in roasted cauliflower. Oh. And Did then. You do the same thing, olive oil, salt, pepper. Yes, okay. olive oil, salt, pepper. We add this sauce, we toss is it, it really together. Is it really that simple? It's that simple. We crank it up to high heat to get a nice crisp, and okay. then we're getting spooky again, you guys. Yes, what so is all this like? is black tahini. So we all know tahini paste, it's sesame paste, mm -hmm. but it also comes in black sesame. Oh, so this is a little more roasty, toasty flavor. Okay. We're creating our own tahini ranch. Ooh. We've got maple oh. syrup, we've got tahini, we got olive oil, lemon juice, oh lemon God. zest, okay. garlic powder, fresh garlic, medley of herbs, dill to give us that ranch okay. flavor. And you do actually right. want a little bit of water in here to thicken oh. it up. Okay. Okay. So 30 seconds. Oh, it all up. oh no, here we go. This is panko breadcrumbs and more sesame seeds oh my to God. give it the crunch we want. We're going to give mm. some celery on the side. We have our dressing, oh a little more buffalo this is sauce. Ridiculous. You this like might it? be one of the yeah. best things we've had. Oh, oh my, oh my goodness. goodness. That celery is delicious. Celery leaves, which and are, are a fun garnish. And then I had, couldn't help myself. I wanted you all to have a little bit of sweet. We have some homemade Twix bars then. What? Oh, are you kidding yeah. me? Oh my gosh. I I'm have to coming go to your house. We did it. We did all Elena. the recipes. This is amazing. Time. Oh, Yay. thank you, Elena. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Elena. Elena, thank you.
And we're back with today's food. This morning, we're joined by two very special guests on a mission to make your meals extra good. Take a look at this first. Yotam Odalenghi is one of the most celebrated chefs in the world. Smoking. The Israeli-born food writer and best-selling cookbook author has quietly amassed an international food empire. From his debut cookbook in 2008, he quickly gained a cult following, bringing to life eight cookbooks and seven delis and restaurants in London. And inside this humble warehouse, he developed this creative hub. This is our modest test kitchen. A vibrant test kitchen, the home of mouthwatering magic, where recipes are tried and tested by his team of chefs. It was the breeding ground for Oda Lange and co-writer Noor Murad's new book full of delicious fresh ideas called Extra Good Things. Cheese on toast with extra good things. Quick chili sauce. Pickled onion and green chilies. Jammy peppers. Oda Lange and Murad cooking on tour for their audiences. We're going on tour. And we're going to bring it to you. A mission to bring that little extra in every meal. Oh, let's get right to that little extra. Our gang is <laughs> over there. We're going to cook here in a second. It's great to have you both. Um, so, I mean, from America to the Middle East to Europe, what is it about your cooking and your style that just transcends borders? Well, I think we just, there's just this attention to flavor. So it's all about big flavors with spices, with herbs, with vegetables, with contrast. And people love when you can inject their vegetables with lots of flavor. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of what we're doing here now. You talk a lot about flavor and these flavor bombs that are created in That's the right. test kitchen. What are some, of, uh, some other examples of flavor bombs? So flavor bombs are like sauces and condiments that have so much packed into them. We're doing one today, which is za'atar toma tomatoes. You'll see them being yeah. prepared in a yep. minute. So it's olive oil and tomatoes that have been cooked slowly, and then you add za'atar spices, mm -hmm. uh, fresh herbs, a bit of a balsamic vinegar, so you've got like earthy and sweet. And that Beautiful. can go in a jar, in the fridge, and there's your holiday condiment. Well, let's get to it. we got about three minutes, so let's Alrighty. fire through. Norm, so, where do you want to start? Okay, I'm making a vegan take on shawarma, so it's shawarma cauliflower. So I'm going to start with the spices. You've got cumin, coriander, allspice, paprika, turmeric, and cloves. Beautiful. These are very typical shawarma spices. I'm going to add the cauliflower florets in the olive oil with a bit of vinegar mm -hmm. and a pinch of salt and some pepper and just kind of mix that up. You want it to marinate so the flavors really, really permeate. How long this. at a minimum? So I would say at least half an hour, but okay. you know, you can do it the night before, throw it in the fridge, get ahead. The cauliflower really needs the flavor bomb, it that's for sure. It. It really Have you guys does. had the cauliflower yet? We're, we're <laughs> prepping it over here. Are you eating? No. Oh. Are we eating? Oh, oh wow. <laughs> what it okay. is, right? Okay, oh, <laughs> that's good. Okay. We're, we're also adding some onion in there too and give it a good mix. All right. And then you... You're gonna blend that? Yeah, and then while, while, you're, while that's marinating, you can get on with your extra good thing, which is this green tahini. So you have lemon juice, oh, garlic, oh, and oh, all this. Oh, there's a moan oh. for, for the tahini. <laughs> yeah. That's top tier tahini. And some parsley. If you don't have parsley, you can use any other soft herb. And then you just give that a good blitz cilantro. until it's nice. Oh, yeah, cilantro if you like, or coriander, depending where okay. you are in the world. And uh, then you make your red cabbage. So you have thinly sliced red cabbage with some thinly sliced red onion and, you know, a pinch of salt and this lemon juice because usually shawarma has some kind of pickle there mm -hmm. so this kind of emulates that and you get it and it has this really nice sharpness that cuts through the rich tahini mm. and that spiced cauliflower it's such yep. a wonderful thing you know, Tom, um, people might be watching at home just thinking well here's like one of the best chefs in the world <laughs> you and Nora you guys do this here in the test lab it looks it looks like I can't do this at right. home. Oh my yep. goodness, you can so do Absolutely this at home. Can do this at home. Every one of these steps are yeah. so easy to make. And, but the thing is, when you make it, you can make more than you need. And these keep extra it. good things, they keep in a jar. So oh. next time mm -hmm. you just roast a potato, make mm -hmm. a bowl of rice, make some eggs, and the extra good things give it yeah. all the flavor. All right, so the cauliflower. Okay, so the cauliflower would go into a very, about very, a minute. very hot oven. Put it in yep. with some chilies, and then you have a nice sauce. You plate the whole thing. You got your cauliflower, cabbage, tahini. What do you got going over here with the tomatoes? So we are gonna. I'm gonna it's do gonna a, a, a what we call a polenta pizza. It's not oh, really a pizza, uh -huh. but it's got um, you guys have the pizza? that are oh, cooked. Okay. Yeah. Finish it. It's insane. Okay. Mm. Tomatoes are cooked with balsamic oh vinegar. It's then we cold. add zatar spice mm -hmm. mix. Those are your magic ingredients, mm -hmm. and then we make a bechamel. So we've got butter and flour here going nutty and kind of like popcorn. Mm -hmm. You add your liquid, I'm kind of, kind of fast, fast forwarding yeah. it. <laughs> then you add your polenta and you oh, do that oh, that's like that. Polenta. Like that's that. the creamy oh. goodness. We used to call it grits. Yeah. 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 It is like a grit. It's, it's a like cousin to a grit. Italian right? grits. And then we spread it out and we put the bechamel on top. Oh my gosh, and With Nora, feta and oregano, we put it under Look the grill. Look what you've done. It is. Why the parchment paper, uh, chef? 
the parchment paper is just to protect the bottom of oh. the pie. Yep. Mm. And then we take these other tomatoes. Those tomatoes are, are the so tomatoes. Okay, We're just going to watch you do this Would in the final 30 seconds. And and we, those oh, in the fridge? This is easy to do you at home. Can. It is. It's so oh, easy to do at home. The, and for the home chefs, get the cookbook. This particular one, extra good stuff. I mean, wow. get it, and um, it's called Extra Good Things is the name of the book. Nor Buy it, that way you can help Nor guide you. Will you marry you. me? Oh, <laughs> Thank house. you. All these recipes, of course, are today.com. You're married to me. Oh, no. <laughs> Slash food. You're already oh, looking awful. for it. Sorry. <laughs> Jeff, thank you very much. If you reconsider opening up in New York, let, please let us know. launching a new food series called Today Table. So the idea is simple. Order the ingredients for the recipes we're about to make by using the QR oh. code on your screen. You can That's even find idea. the kitchen tools to help you make it. I like it. All right, and it works like any grocery service. After you check out, just schedule a store pickup or maybe even a deliver delivery for we're your order. We're taking care of everything. This everything. is a yeah. great idea. You're never need, just finding out. Yeah. never need to leave this show. Uh, so we're going to start with the January resolution reboot. Healthy, easy recipes from Gabby Dawkin, creator of What's Gabby Cooking? Gabby, good morning. Thanks for uh, helping us launch this thing. Thanks. You are so welcome. Do you like the darkness outside in L.A.? Right? <laughs> it's very early. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's an early one. Who doesn't want to wake up and, and, and make chili? What do, you, what, what do you got for us today? So we've been making all sorts of healthy recipes in January, and this is one of the most popular recipes on my website. It's a black bean sweet potato chili that even like a true meat lover would love. As you saw earlier, I just sauteed some onion and some mm. sweet potatoes mm. in like a large heavy bottom skillet. And I'm gonna season it with garlic, salt, paprika, cayenne, and a little cumin, and just kind of toast that up. And then every Everything just goes into here. So we have black beans, we have quinoa, we have fire roasted tomatoes, and it's just gonna sit on the stove and kind of simmer for mm. with a little bit of stock. Um, you could use quinoa, you could use farro, you could use barley, you could use rice, and literally it's just kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing, and I'm obsessed with it. Could you swap out the black really beans, Gabby, if you don't like black beans, could you use a different kind of bean? Mm -hmm. You could use chickpeas, you could use kidney beans, any uh, red beans, like whatever kind of beans you have, it's meat? amazing. Could you, you have to use yeah. meat? Ask use meat. Carson. Yeah, ground beef. One. So, <laughs> yes, if you wanted to saute some, like, chicken or ground oh. turkey or put mm -hmm. shredded mm -hmm. chicken in mm -hmm. before, it is no, like perfect and then extra way to add some protein. And Gabby, with, with most chilies, they're better even later. Is this mm -hmm. a good make ahead? Mm -hmm. This is one of the, so yes, this this I actually made yesterday, yeah. and it's better today than it was last night when I made it. The flavors yeah. have time to develop, and I'm just gonna season it with, or garnish it with a little cheese, a little cilantro, some lime juice, and then if you wanna get a little fancy, like you see on that photo, I like to add a little crema, which is just kinda like a watered down sour cream to give it a little extra creaminess. Mm. And it's perfection. Looks oh. yummy. What's, what's our second, Thank you got another dish for us? Yeah, so let's talk about vegetables because I feel like so many people don't know how to make vegetables properly. Mm. And the key to vegetables, in my opinion, is roasting them. So yes. as you can see, mm. we've got a bunch of cauliflower. I haven't overcrowded the pan and it's super caramelized. So I just popped it into an oven, 425 degrees, let everything roast up until it's nice and golden. 
And then to make matters like even better, mm. I make a homemade tahini sauce. Oh, so this oh, is yeah. a little tahini. Oh. I'm just gonna put a little bit of garlic in there, mm -hmm. a little bit of le Meyer lemon. I mean, dip I'm in LA, in why it. not? Mm. Yeah, you could dip your french fries in it. Some Jeez. salt and pepper, stir it all up. And this you could put it on cauliflower, you could put it on broccoli, you could, I mean, I'm blanking on other vegetables right now because we're live, but <laughs> truly, oh, you, look at that, carrots, you could put it on every vegetable Ooh. known to man and it's a perfect way to make vegetables, you know, a little bit more delicious, especially for kids. Yeah, Gabi, speaking of vegetables and kids, you're self, admittedly, you ate like a seven-year-old until you were 17, right? <laughs> I have a nine-year-old, yeah. and, and ask, I'm asking this for every parent watching right now, because it's really concerning for Siri and I now that Etta literally only eats grilled cheeses and pasta, <laughs> and I wonder, like literally almost, and I'm wondering, like, when, is there anything we can do to help that along, or are we supposed to just let that happen? My parents let it happen, to be totally honest, and then I went to culinary school after college and I seem to be okay. But I will say, when you make vegetables like this and you get that caramelized flavor and you tell your kids it tastes like candy, like when I was a private chef, I used to tell the kids that, and they would clear the table. Mm. So I feel like, and getting them involved in the kitchen is really nice. My daughter's one, she can't cook yet, but I can't wait till I can make her chop things. <laughs> well, you're living proof that there's hope for us yeah. all, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. I've I actually so. wondered that, you know, when your kids eat no vegetables, like what happens? They but turn into world-renowned chefs exactly. like Gabby. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. It makes me there's, feel a lot better. There's, yes. there's hope out there. There is hope. Thank Lost you. Last time. I also never had seafood before I was 24, so wow. my culinary school teacher See? thought I was. There is hope. You're right. Fine. That's right. It's going to be just Eating fine. Eating Nutella every morning for 20 years is fine. Yeah. Okay. That's right. <laughs> All right. Gabby, thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate it. Remember, you can get these recipes. Thank and you. And anything you need, just shop the ingredients, the tools, whatever it is, with help of our sponsor Walmart by scanning that QR code that you see uh, or you can text food to 34318 and just so you know today earns a commission from purchases through links on today.com. Food. We are making sweet and savory pies with New York Times bestselling author Allison Roman. Her third cookbook, congratulations, is out today, and you are getting back to your roots as a pastry chef. It's called Sweet Enough, and it's filled with simple recipes for for everybody. And so, yeah, we were talking about how for you, baking was like an entry point uh, into the culinary world. Yeah, it was sort of the job that they had available at the restaurant I wanted to work at. I had no training in either department, so it didn't really matter. I said I'll do whatever, and then I was a pastry chef for six years. And as a person who's not that into desserts, I feel like that was an interesting choice, but I'm glad I made it. But I'm glad you put some savory desserts in the in the cookbook, too. We're going to start with that. Yes. This is your mushroom pot pie, which you say is better than a chicken pot pie. Yeah, I do okay. say that. And I, it's not even if you're a vegetarian. I just think that that's, like, the case. But I'm glad we're doing a savory pie, too, because if you're doing a pie, sweet or savory, pie crust is the most important part. Mm -hmm. And I believe firmly in doing your butter by hand, but that's also the beauty of this book is that most things are sort of done by hand or without equipment. Right. Oh, um, yeah. So, are you Like the old school baking way. Yeah, yeah I get that. we're doing old school. Am yeah, I familiar you, with what? Te with quiz me. With pie dough. Yeah, like the making of uh, Pillsbury pie dough, I am a little bit, okay, but, this, answer, is real, but this is the real okay. deal. Okay, well now that I've made it. What was the deal with that dough. butter that you had it cubed? Just, was that to help break yeah. it down? So it's cold butter and unsalted. And basically you kind of just want to smash it in. And I think that this is also like is a good flour? reminder. Yeah, flour, sugar, salt, Got a little it. bit of sugar. Okay. Because it's for sweet and savory. Um, but just like have a good time, like play with it. It should feel like you're playing in the bowl of flour. So don't get too precious with it. You can add your vinegar, your ice cold water. The vinegar's in there because it adds a little bit of tenderness. The acidity, mm -hmm. oh. boring, 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 helps prevent like <laughs> gluten formation, which is Got like, it. you know, if boring, you must boring. know. Um, Al, do you make your own pie crust? You strike me as the gentleman that might mm. do that. I've tried. Excellent. I'm not that good at it. Okay. I think you should get over here and try this. Right. I think Ooh. you would mm -hmm. trust yourself to have a much better. So you make this time. dough. Obviously, it works for sweet or savory. This, yes. this pie so it's dough. It's like a great all-purpose pie crust. It works for galettes. It works. And for can you just freeze it and hold on to it? Can there always be a roll of dough in your freezer? And you know, thing, or no? in my house there is. Okay. There is always a roll. 
Um, but yeah, so this one is mushroom, and the reason I included savory recipes is because I sort of figure if you can make a sweet pie, you can also make a savory pie. Mm -hmm. And pot pies, obviously very popular. They don't have to be always meat-based. Mm -hmm. And I feel like mushrooms are a really great way to sort of showcase like flaky pie crust, creamy filling, all that what stuff. What kind of shrooms are you working with today? Alex? We <laughs> are working with a multitude of shrooms, Carson. Um, <laughs> these are my taki mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, Look and regular button mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but, but for like, people at home, they want to make this tonight. Like, literally, can they just grab any mushroom in the market? You can grab any mushroom in the market. Okay, and I think, like, the nice thing about just cooking with regular sort of button is that they are, they're more affordable, they're accessible, but shocked at the variety of mushrooms available these days. They really come a long way. Okay. Um, okay, so we are going to sort of cook half the mushrooms down. Are you eating this over there, Hoda? This or are you enjoying this? They're, 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 they're going great. for it. They did not is wait for us. Is, is there great. cheese in this? No, a little bit of cream. Okay. It's really I know we good. don't do a ton of dairy. So but good. All right, so you just cook all these mushrooms down. Yeah, we and start add by cooking half. I'm gonna start eating. You cook. Yeah, and yeah. then <laughs> they're like, "You have run out of time, you know what ma'am." What to do? <laughs> um, there is mushrooms, onions, garlic, mm -hmm. and you sort of like cook it Delicious. down, do the whole thing, salt and pepper, season as you go, and then you end up with these gorgeous. Little mushrooms this is here. great. This is a little cold. Really I don't know good. if it's supposed oh, to be, really but it's yeah. delicious, even Could chilly. You know, the it's next day. Magic. Um, mm -hmm. We add more butter. We add herbs. We add flour, and oh that's gosh. basically the thing that thickens the pot pie filling. Uh -huh. The butter. Delicious. Um, so good. There's a cream. Um, I like to make the roux sort of in the pot rather than like using 28 yeah. pots and pans for any pot pie. Um, it makes things a lot easier. And what is this oh. liquid right here, this brothy thing? It's broth and it's cream. <laughs> it's broth and cream, which okay. is, this is not cheese, is. but not not cheese, you know? <laughs> no. But it's good. Um, <laughs> add that, add that, and it basically cooks down into wow. something really beautiful that looks mm. like this. Yeah. So if you want to add that to here, Creamy this is a double crust pie. And the reason I like to use a glass bottom pie plate, whether it's a savory pie or a sweet pie, because you can see the bottom bake as it goes, wow. right? So if you're like, how is it done? How do I know? Mm -hmm. With a glass bottom pie plate, so smart. Uh, you can see the bottom. Right. Mm. Okay, and you got a little crust on top. all around, yeah. And you then, do a little crimping around the you edges know, there. You we got about a minute. Crimp however, you want. Great. Yep. One minute. Sixty seconds is more <laughs> than I thought we had. So okay. We're doing great. Um, what's, the, what's the crumbly thing? Let's try the. Oh. It, it's just the flaky pie crust. That's wow. just how flaky it is. Mm. How about oh, the lemon pie, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Do you use a whole lemon in this lemon pie some recipe? Cream on that. The whole lemon <laughs> is in there. So it's like, it looks like there's part of the It is. It's a shaker pie, so rind, right. it's like a classic sort of thing mm, where they nice. use the whole lemon and everything, which I'm a huge fan of. But like, same mm. pie crust. And one is sweet, one is savory, one is salt and pepper, one has sugar. It's super versatile. Is your cookbook 50-50 savory and sweet? or is No, it? it's like 95 sweet, 5 savory. Okay. Mm -hmm. I sort of said the savory because I'm like, it's for me. Too, yeah. You know? If I'm you like, were going to oh, bake course. one thing out of your own cookbook, what would you bake? Wow. Tonight. God, tonight? Wow. Yeah, like tonight, what would you make? Maybe this lemon shaker pie. Love it. Yeah. I love, it's really I love good. the whole lemon. It's wow. bitter. It's sweet. It's not too sweet. It's sweet enough, as it were. It's so good, Allison. Mm. Yeah, well, get on. the cookbook, everybody. Mm. It is sweet enough, and you can get these recipes mm. also at our website, today.com slash food. One of the best parts of Thanksgiving, of course, are the leftovers. Melba Wilson is the chef and owner of Melba's in Harlem, and she's going to show us how to repurpose our turkey insides into like, we're not just making the turkey sandwich. We're oh, making something no. kind of yes. fresh. We love it. Create. Well, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. How was yesterday? It, it was, was good. delish was as good. usual. Good. All right, there's so well, much left over though. So, so what are we doing? So many things left over. So what we're doing today is we are doing my turkey Pot okay. pie, which I, pot pie, pot pie, so smart. Who doesn't love a pot pie? Okay, so comforting, so warm, and so delicious. Okay. So Jenna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dice up those oh. uh, celery stalks okay. right there. Mm -hmm. okay. I know this is you got it. Dicey. No, that's good. good that's enough. good. Good girl. Okay. That's, that's perfect. Right. perfect. Let's pretend I diced There this. you go. And then we're going to sweat that in and there. And is there onions already in there? Those are onions in there. And then mm. we're going to add carrots. our carrots. Do you put butter yes. or do you put oh, olive oil you know, in you know there? I put butter in there. Everything is better with butter. Really yes. You so see how wonderful better. that is? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take our flour, all purpose flour. Okay. We're going to. Oopsie. <laughs> Go ahead, girl. Okay. Okay. This is what, what I, I this is what I do at home. You okay. I'm happy to know that even Melba's even I make yes, yes, yes. every now and then. All right. Okay. But the beautiful thing about this yeah. is this flour is really, really look at watch what it's yeah, gonna do. It's, like it's gonna it. get some of that make some of that room. fat and it's mm. also gonna toast it. Mm. Okay. Much there we beautiful. go. There we go. Something? Yeah, would you please add the sweet potatoes? Sweet potatoes, yes. sure. Pass the potatoes, you please. Got it. Yes. So these are raw. Raw sweet potatoes. Yep, they are. Already cooked or no? Well, you know you can, but well, you we don't want that. it to get too mushy. Do that at the end, we'll right? So take your turkey stock. Put May that I, turkey, okay, stock. turkey stock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now do you smell stock. that? Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Yeah. So you cook that. And we're going to cook this down for about 30 minutes or okay. so. All right. Come to the good part. So after that's cooked, we got it? No, we got to add a collard greens. Oh, collard, collard greens, greens going in? Put some collard greens. And collard greens going in. Turkey. In oh, the left. Yes. And so my mom, she yeah. loves the white meat, but I'm a dark meat Me girl. Me too. And so what I, I do love a dark meat. is I just pull the dark meat. And I put it in there. So, so you're going to put all this yep, in there? Yep, all that pulled dark I, meat in there. We don't have that much leftover dark meat uh, in our really? house. Really? You no. only have... No, but, but I think if you put the, the, the white meat in here, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's in whatever. A, it, really, it, really, it really, really doesn't. Okay. But one of the other things you can do with your with your dark meat it, mm -hmm. is with your collard greens, you can add it in and use it as a side dish. Yeah, and that's it gives a good it so idea. so much so more smart. flavor. Okay. Okay, we're going to take that perky pot. Do you want me to try it? Oh, this is the filling. Yeah, this is the filling. We're going to put it in. Where'd you get these? Normally, I would make them, but I've been cooking for Three days, girl. Yeah. Tired. I, yeah. So I just brought some little delicious. Do you uh, have too much crust? That, no, that's that's. And you perfect. put it on top. That's perfect. I mean, how cute are those? Cute. And we're gonna take our egg, egg wash. wash. And, and what am I doing? Wash it right on the top. And then how, you put Beautiful. it in the oven. You're gonna put it in the oven at 350 and just let it cook until it's golden brown. I've got to try this. Voila! Tell oh me what you God. think. Look at the top on it. It's so beautiful. Cute. Isn't that beautiful? And this is crunchy and crispy. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to use leftover turkey and leftover collard greens. Mm. Mm. Oh, my God. I, mean, I think kids would mm. love this. Kids mm. really would. And, you, and mm. you can use it as a starter oh, or you can use it as an entree. Mm -hmm. No, it's just so good. So Melba. delicious. Is Wait, there more? To, there's one more. Oh, oh, I know. This. Okay. Well, okay. Go. we also Take it with have our fall harvest turkey cob salad. Mm. Okay, this is brilliant. Okay. So, look at this. These are all Gorgeous. things that were pretty much left over. What do you right? have there? Tell us. Well, we have roasted sweet potatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, leftover turkey, bacon bits. Who doesn't love bacon bits? And you Nobody. have dried fruit left over. Always dried fruit. All you that can stuff. use cranberry. Okay. Or you can use cherries. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start with our dressing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love a Dijon Me vinaigrette too. dressing, all right? So we have our Dijon mustard mm -hmm. here. And did you have some cranberry juice left over? Yes, yes. of course. Well, girl, let's put that in cranberry there. Cranberry juice. Okay. Red wine vinegar. Of course. We red have a little vinegar. of that. Yep, let's put the red wine vinegar, and we're going to whisk that oh, together first, right? Oil. And then you put the oil in? That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly add the olive oil. There you mm -hmm. go. Beautiful. To emulsify it, right? Emulsify. Just so that it doesn't separate, yeah? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Hoda got always that? emulsifies things. No, she is good. You, you have a lot here? of experience. Hoda, you you keep it going. Keep Melba, it going, girl. Come on, Melba. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. Come on, yeah. Bam. Uh -huh. Fresh pepper. Yes. There we go. Oh, look at that. Now, the beautiful thing about That's this. That's beautiful. This will last for about a week in the fridge. It will? Oh, really? It really, really will. Okay. Okay, so you're just using iceberg. Uh, romaine. Romaine. <laughs> romaine lettuce. That's okay. 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 That's all right. And you have and this beautiful. Take your toppings. We got the turkey. Just put them right on top. Whatever you want. Whatever you so want. Good. Whatever you want. I'll sneak down here and try one of these. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to add some, some over Our here. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Mm. You gotta put some turkey in here, some sun-dried tomatoes. Oh my gosh! Eggs, avocado. What a smart idea! And crumble. Lay this out for people to pick mm -hmm. what they like. Mm -hmm. It's kind of healthy. And I healthy. love the sweet potatoes. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you, Melba. Melba. For Happy these recipes. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You can head to today.com/food. <laughs>
are just days away from Thanksgiving, and this morning in our Make Ahead Monday, we're getting some inspiration to add something new to your holiday meal. This morning, we are joined by Skylar Bouchard, also known as Dining, Dining with, with Skylar. Hello, and you guys. she's got a twist on a classic <laughs> comfort food. Skylar, welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. We are going to get cooking today. Uh -huh. okay. You guys are going to be working with me. So this this is something that we could make ahead for, th th be ready for Thanksgiving. Absolutely. So we are making vegetable pot pies. You okay. can do this casserole style. You can do it little side style like we're doing in ramekins um, or in little mini cast iron. I love it's it. a lot of nice. fun. Um, and then we're going to make some pear and brie pastries. It smells are you ready? The, the, the start it for this. Good. All right. So this is onion and fennel we have going with some butter. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add some salt because you want to season every single layer of your dish with some kosher salt, preferably. Mm. Even the concept of layering just yes, sounds yummy to me. Yes, that is the the base of it is so important because we're building all of our flavor. Nice so garlic, I'm garlic. adding some garlic. We're adding thyme, mm -hmm. rosemary, and sage. Oh. All the things. Yeah. All the things. Yeah. All the fall things. Yes. This almost starts to smell like the base for stuffing. Exactly. It does. That's kind of the inspiration mm -hmm. here with the sage. We're making it kind of fall themed. We want to hang on to fall a little and bit it longer. You can add veggie broth. Yes, stock? yes, that's okay. what we're doing. So we're going to build a roux, and actually, okay. Chanel, I'm going to have you help me. Okay. Al, I know you're a chef. No, no, so. no, I think Chanel. <laughs> Chanel, right. you got to start. Actually, we're going to start with some white, white wine, wine here. Okay. We're building casually a roux. Casually or just go for uh, it? You know what? Casually pour it in. Okay. Uh, we're going to cook it off as you're pouring it in, and okay. this flour is basically the thickener for mm, our sauce. God, Without the flour... So we have a soup, and we all don't right. want a soup, right? Well, for the sake of time, I'll yeah. Kind of <laughs> all right, yeah. Let's add all that veggie stock. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're not like a true vegetarian, you can go chicken stock there here you for go. flavor. Okay. And but sometimes at least you have this option because there are a lot of people exactly. these days who are trying not to eat meat, so mm -hmm. you have something for them that's and still comfort food ish. Absolutely. You know? what's that? What was that? So this is my secret ingredient, you guys. This is some veggie stock concentrate paste. Ooh, so it yeah. adds a lot of depth of flavor, mm -hmm. okay. and it really boldens the flavor more. And just some milk. Some whole milk. Whole We're gonna milk. just yeah. mix. That up right. so you're gonna, mm -hmm. if you're doing this at home, you do that slowly, right. let that thicken, okay. wait, and we're gonna Hold add on. all oh. of our vegetables. So, in just the pour all of them right into the pot. Are okay. these frozen veggies? These are frozen oh. veggies. Oh, so it makes it that much easier. Even that much better. Easier. Already we prepped. could okay. blanch them all, and it would uh -huh. take different times for different vegetables, right. we'll just but just like for like sake of time, it. you know, vegetables yeah. are actually frozen after they're blanched, uh -huh. okay. so they're all part cooked and it'll cook evenly and perfectly. Mm. So, okay. here's our filling, right? We're gonna let that thicken and be beautiful. Here we are now. We I have waited, so we let this come to room temp after it thickened, okay. because that's just a safer way to do it. We okay. put it in the fridge, yep. up to three days. Okay. And now oh, we so this part's already done. And yeah. done. Yep, it's already done. We're gonna scoop it in as our turkey is resting. We oh, have my. our oven preheated right. to whatever the pastry instructions will say. Okay. Al, why don't you help me out here? Okay. So we're gonna get a lovely square puff pastry. Right. Just plop it on. Oh, Feel free to stretch it out. This is thawed out, mm. thawed the night before. That's mm. a really important thing to do. And we then like you've got an egg wash? Cooked, yup. And we're going to slit it. Oh, my God. You can slit it first or egg wash first. This might be my new favorite thing. Yes, I love that for Wait, you, Wait, I can Chanel. be vegetarian if I can yeah. do this. And then this goes in the <laughs> oven for how long? So this goes in. Oh it God. depends on your puff pastry. This would probably be 25 minutes. Oh, see, you know. You've pulled out all the stops. Listen. I'm just going to slit yours for ventilation. We don't want it to get soggy. It's That's a very right. important step. I need Let the, the yes. steam Ow. escape. Are you I the new salt bay? Pardon? Your salt bag. Get a little salt bag. Listen, whoever <laughs> at home, if you like, and that's the thing, you don't even have to be a vegetarian to love this. This no, is exactly. amazing. In fact, you Thank could put you. a little, little, little uh, rotisserie chicken in oh there. Rotisserie, so that's the other thing. What you can okay, use Thanksgiving on. leftovers. And, and then vegetable, salad. I mean, uh, a dessert time. Exactly. Ooh. All right, you, we're all building them today. So you say mm -hmm. you have leftover puff pastry. Mm -hmm. This is a fun little thing. We're gonna, Come on, Chanel. Oh, now, let's I'm get so in here. Eating. We're going to layer some pear slices. Pear and cheese, or yep. you doing so two, two different things? Two different. No, we're doing pear and cheese. They actually oh, complement each other really sweet and well. savory. Okay. Exactly. It's like the idea of a little apple and cheese. Yeah. That's such a great idea. And I love a good pear, so we're using Bartlett pears I think I and mine. some creamy brie. You can use camembert. See how cute looks? So, oh. no, wait, question. <laughs> Before we run out of time, so then the you questions. just do this and then just bake it. It's that simple. That, it is that simple. We're gonna add a little honey and a little sea salt. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Honey bay and My salt bay is, is Al Roker right here. Look yeah. at that. Oh, uh, this is nice. Oh yeah. So you get the sweet, the <laughs> salty. <laughs> the salt. Ooh, wow, try it. Skylar, this is fantastic. Yeah, and Ready? if you want to jazz it up, you can add some prosciutto as well. Oh my god. Oh my you god. You like it? Are you kidding me? No, is I'm it, gonna hear you. It's like having your meal and dessert at the same time. Yeah, and this is a great starter or a great dessert, so you can do either which way.
excited. We're going to take a big bite out of our favorite fall fruits with the one, the only, the returning Martha Stewart. Hi. Hi. Oh, so it's great to be here. 99th. I can't Book, believe it. Martha Stewart's fruit desserts. And we are so and excited the, to have you here in person. The recipes are so good in this book, and I've been baking every single one of them, and they're delicious. But I want to show you how to make apple pot pies. So the apples, you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're using Granny Smith's and Rome's. Uh, peel them, cut them into like six pieces, mm -hmm. add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor, oh, okay. a third of a cup of sugar, mm -hmm. and a little bit of salt. Just mm -hmm. kosher quarter, salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon, and allspice, which okay. adds a very nice flavor, half a teaspoon. You can stir that up, Samantha. Right. And then you saute half of them in a pan, add two tablespoons of flour. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, wow. Yeah, well, you, a little bit more won't hurt. And you cook that up until it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. really and then add good. this. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah. yeah, it's a little too. So you want it to knows. get it like a thickened up sauce well, kind it'll, of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up in yeah. the oven. Will it absorb too. that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can I and stop then, Okay. <laughs> off. Mm -hmm. And then these stir all together. Ooh, yum. Oh my God. Spoon them into... <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> he just added more. Spoon, Spoon those into a <laughs> pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. See this kid? And this okay. is no, one serving, so... Uh, you didn't put the pastry under, I noticed. Uh, no, no, no. Pot pies always have the pastry on <laughs> oh, top. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know? So here's a square of puff pastry, just like that. Can you pre-buy that or? It's store oh, yeah, yeah. It's a store bought. You can buy it. They, there's very good home uh, frozen frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top or two, mm -hmm. and put easy. that like that, and then egg wash. Mm -hmm. Just a uh, wow, softly eggs. beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs. Really, really great. Why do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. You don't want to do, because you want this to to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. OK, yum. And so delicious, a really cute uh, single serving dessert. Oh, that's now, easier than it, Martha, actually. Oh my gosh. I would never These would make are that. awesome, by this the way. This is my happy place oh, right here. Oh my God, very impressive. You can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what it's that is? Granny Smith apple? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A I'm afraid to, an apple? This is a quince. But it's oh. kind of a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, okay. But oh, it's yeah. not edible it's uncooked. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go, half yeah. uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. And about a quart of water. Watch Carson try to put bourbon in. A that. vanilla bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean and scrape it. You want to get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see the Never seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean oh, seeds, see? And you leave the thing in there. But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look at the color they. Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you no, put no them seeds. in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I need. Yeah. Oh okay. no, because that's the flavor. Oh, okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid, mm -hmm. and is that the one the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down, yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices. So you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is going to love you. That's a good bourbon too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know. Yeah. My people. Okay. So now this goes right into your baking dish. Okay. Those dishes. All that will thicken up. And this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal, and you can just. Oh, I love that. This it's just a crumble. Yeah, it's oh. sort of a crumble. Mm -hmm. All over the top like this. Yeah. Had a quince in your this life? You know, taste it. Oh, You're going to love it. This is fantastic. Yeah, Have you tasted it? What do you think, guys? Do you love it? So good. Yeah. Someday yeah. my quince Have will come. This is a quince <laughs> crumble. I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, no, it is so good. We're having our first good. quince. Have you had a quince before? I, I grew. Oh, no, you oh, I grew yeah. quinces. I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year, too. Really beautiful. Really good. Put this all over the top. And 
sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds, on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go. This morning on Today Food, there is nothing like a comforting meal to get us through the cold winter days like these. David Venable from QVC's In the Kitchen with David is here to show the ultimate winter comfort food shortcuts. David, at six foot six, nice to see you, brother. Yeah, look at you. I wish he eyed eye on things. <laughs> I was going to say, we were a big dude with some good food options for us today. So we've got a couple things. You're going to start with the pot sticker soup. Yeah, right? pot stickers are my go-to. I keep them in my freezer all the time, and I usually saute them and serve them over rice. So I thought, why not make a winter soup? With pot stickers, but do it from prep to table in 30 minutes. So you got so yeah, it's a ton of ingredients. Not that many ingredients, Actually, but all easy to do. Only 10 ingredients here. Yep. So you're talking about some some beef stock that you buy in a carton, a little uh, cooking oil, soy sauce, some fresh vegetables that you're going to prep ahead of time if you don't have a lot of time to do it right at the start, and then some frozen pot stickers. What we're going to do first is we've already heated some oil in this stock pot, and I've got all that same vegetable already cooked up. Now I'll give you a little tip. Yeah. When you're doing some Asian cooking, make sure that all of your vegetables are cut small and the same size so they cook more evenly. Okay. So we're going to get these into the pot. You'll hear them start to sizzle. And all this goes oh, in. Good, this huh? only have to season or soften about five minutes. Chanel didn't wait. She's already enjoying yeah, it. Right. Well, <laughs> Chanel's a good eater, I understand. I am. Yeah, Chanel and I know each other from way back. She's a good eater. But you know what? This is fantastic because what you're going to do is just let these saute for about five minutes because, again, you're going to spend more time cutting vegetables than you are making the soup. Yeah, no That's doubt. what makes it so so great and perfect for a weeknight, right? Your, your book is called Comfort Food Shortcuts, right? I mean, a lot of these are good kid options. Your kids, who, what kid wouldn't love a little Well, I understand you have two girls, right? I've got two girls, yeah. That's why I'm playing the co Playing, paying close attention exactly. to what you do. Exactly, <laughs> because you know what? This becomes kid-friendly. All the recipes in the book are 10 ingredients or less. They're all kid and family friendly. So they're really simple. I'm going to add in some beef broth, and to that then some soy sauce, and then finally a little black pepper. But here's the magic. Go to your freezer, grab your frozen pot stickers. So that's the takeaway. A lot of people see the frozen food aisle and they're like, ah, I don't know about this. You sort of turn that into the delicacy here. Well, here's the thing. Um, Prepackaged food is a better quality now than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. 25 years ago, you couldn't find pesto in the supermarket worth eating, right? Yeah. If it was pre-jarred or pre-sauced, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So this is going to be something that is easy to find in the market, super, super great quality, and now it's really gourmet. Let this simmer for five to seven minutes and you've got soup finished up. Isn't that crazy? You don't it's even so have to good. Frost. You don't even have to No, because the, the frozen pot stickers actually will warm in the, in the broth. Right, right, right. Fantastic. That's why we brought David Venable. And <laughs> yeah. because they are not pre-crisped, they're going to be really tender so you can get your spoon through them. Really good. Ah. Yeah. Let's talk chicken pot pies, can we? Can we oh, do that of course we well? can. We'll start, garnish I'm, that. I'm going to eat. Do you oh, also, please. I'll you do that. You while you do so this. this is a biscuit top chicken pot pies, yeah. classic comfort food. But the big problem with traditional pot pies, you have to make crust and you have to make the filling and do all that kind of thing. We're going to really shorthand this. First thing we're to do is buy rotisserie chicken, five dollars in the supermarket. Easy enough. Shred that bad boy up and get it right into the pot. Okay. Then from there, we're going to add in frozen mixed vegetables, mm -hmm. some chicken stock, and cream of chicken soup. Chicken so, soup. Peter, why don't you give me a hand there? Just pop that um, bowl of frozen vegetables. Right in. Just mixed natural. vegetables. This is really good. Look, Look at that. <laughs> But Nicely the, I mean, done. The truth is, this is easy. It just is. go down the freezer aisle. You buy literally. It's one supermarket run, and you're done. Yeah, these are full of supermarket shortcuts. The book is full of supermarket shortcuts, really helping you get things done in record time. Pop in that soup. Okay. Then we're going to add in some chicken stock. Okay. And then Peter, if you want to just give me a couple twists of the pepper mill. 
Yeah, so sorry, good. here's the pepper mill. And so simple. Now, here's a little tip I'm gonna tell you. If you heat the filling first and then put it in the casserole dish, your biscuits won't burn in the oven. What we found when we tested the recipe is if we put in the filling cold and put raw biscuits on top, the biscuits would burn before the filling got warm. Okay? Ah. So you warm it first, then you put on uh, the biscuits. Now, we've already warmed the filling here, and we're going to use what I call wampum biscuits. You peel off the paper top and you wamp it on the counter. <laughs> exactly. You wamp it here, and then and what we're going to do here, Peter, is just layer these right on top. So you just Perfect. grab those out. You Your girls can help oh, with this. Oh, we've got friends. We've got Oh, we door? do. Who is it? Who's at the door? <gasps> Chef oh, Garner! Oh, my goodness! Wow! Hey. We have celebrities in the kitchen. Celebrity chefs from Sesame Street. I love it. I love it. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Come on in. Are you guys hungry? That's well, a I yes. know. So I think that's a yes. Right. Say, of All right. course. Well, I tell you what. This is 30 minutes in the oven. Can't beat it. And then you got a kid-friendly, family-friendly... Wonderful comfort. And so the cost is, is is near nothing. Is it well, it's so easy. And these are all ingredients you have on hand or you buy in the market. Thank you for being here. Chef Garner, thank you, Cookie Monster. Thank you thank for you. joining us. Have you some guys pot keep pie, guys. Right. Joining us now, author, founder of Fit Cook Meals, Kevin Curry is here. Always good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. What are we making this morning? We're cooking up something special for Mama. This is a budget. Oh, and just go ahead and tell the people. It's it's amazing. Tell the people. It's it delicious. Amazing. There's no meat in it. And 